The I am activity represents the original, permanent, and highest source of the Ascended Master's instruction on the great laws of life, as first offered to the Western world by the Ascended Master Saint Germain, through his accredited messengers, Mr. and Mrs. Guy W. Ballard. In the early 1930s the Ballards established Saint Germain Foundation and Saint Germain Press Incorporated, which under Saint Germain's guidance, have expanded into worldwide organizations that offer to mankind the true Ascended Master teachings on the great cosmic word, I am. Saint Germain Foundation strives to keep the, I am, Ascended Master instruction in its pure, unadulterated form, free from any human interpretation, personal monetary gain, or proselytizing. As it is a gift from the great Ascended Masters and cosmic beings to bring illumination and perfection to mankind. Hundreds of I am temples and sanctuaries exist throughout the world where the teachings are applied in I am decree groups. The books of the Saint German series are available in many libraries, bookstores, or directly from Saint German Press. It is our great joy and privilege to dedicate Volume 10, the I Am Discourses by Beloved David Lloyd, to our beloved Saint Germain and Jesus, our beloved Mr. and Mrs. Ballard, and our beloved David Lloyd and the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta. May all the great ones who have given us their assistance to come this far in the light, be held within our love, and may our service to life prove our gratitude to them for all we have received. Shasta. Oh, Mount Shasta. What secrets do you hide, what dwells within that heart of yours, what light does there abide? Beneath your snowy peaks so bright what blessings do you hold, what knowledge do you guard so well from those who seek too bold? I think I hear you speak to me from your pure heights above. I feel and hear your answer now. There's just one way through love. To him who knows that presence well and lives it, too, beside, my secrets are an open book, from him I've naught to hide. Learn well that golden key of life, it opens every lock, with it, you may fling wide my door for love ne'er needs to knock. Oh, sons of earth, who seek more light, learn first love's great command. Pour out its healing golden streams and in my heart you'll stand. Chanera. A why our heart's love and gratitude go forth today to our beloved Mr. G. W. Ballard and our beloved David Lloyd whose experiences are contained within this book, the I Am Discourses. May we pour to them our deepest love for these discourses, and this explanation of the victory of the Ascension. Beloved mighty I Am Presence Beloved David Lloyd, and the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta, bring an individual crystal cup of liquid light into our hands and use, and as we drink it, compel the annihilation of everything human. Draw forth and make visible, and manifest in, to, through, and around us all the victory of all that is divine, and hold thy dominion in the fulfillment of the divine plan in all we ever do forever. Mrs. G. W. Ballard. David Lloyd. Because of my long years of search, and my intense desire to fulfill the call of my heart, this mountain is charged with the apex of my feeling, and the momentum that I had built of craving the ascension. Therefore, you who turn your attention to me and are treading upon the ground upon which I walked. 7. And upon which the messenger walked, you can very easily be charged with that same momentum, of not only demanding the ascension, and the enfolding radiance that enfolded the beloved Godfrey, but with that fierce determination you have had to scale the heights. You have no idea in what a short time all of you could outpicture, through your radiation alone a power of light that would heal all you contact, and it would anchor within them my feeling and craving for the ascension. That is what mankind needs. They need to be charged with the feeling to desire the ascension. Then on this mountain particularly, because my desire had been of such years standing, when that desire is fulfilled, it is joy unspeakable, indescribable in physical words. Since I was the one who felt that, then I can charge that not only into the mountain, but into the atmosphere around it. Since the beloved Godfrey was the one, when the light came into his body, and came out to me to force the assistance to me to the completion of my ascension, then he can charge his feeling, and as sure as you feel that, will you release the power from your own mighty I am presence. Because it is like a magnet. When we flood our feeling around you, it automatically draws down from your trescence that same feeling, and that is yours permanently. It is. Like a needle attracted to a magnet. 
Therefore, when I clothe you in my feeling and desire for the ascension, and the enjoyment of its attainment, and the beloved God for clothes you in his feeling of that light coming into him, and then out to me, as surely as we make you feel our feeling. Will your trescent unite with that and anchor that feeling into the physical self? We glory in your determination. Go forward like happy children, and don't accept anything but the most amazing victory to your every call. Be determined when you send forth a call, that the answer shall come like a streak of lightning, and relieve you of your problems, and leave in your worlds, the blessings that will delight you forever. Then make you a being of power and victory to assist all mankind whom you contact to look up and get some understanding of the ascension, and charge people with the desire to call for their ascension. Go on and demand with your increased determination, and we will grant your requests according to the light. When you think of me, remember my feeling awaits to surge into your world and do this which I have offered, and which I know will bring you happiness which is eternal, and victory which is boundless I I thank you. God for a Ray King Lotus Ray King. Our beloved messenger, Mr. G. W. Ballard, with fellow High Kais at the Rest House, on the side of Mount Shasta, California, August 193. He year. 1980 commemorated the 50th anniversary of our beloved David Lloyd's meeting with our beloved Mr. Ballard on the side of Mount Shasta. The picture on the opposite page was taken during August 1930, at the rest house where Mr. Ballard had spent the night, during the time of his meetings with beloved Saint Germain, which are recorded in Unveiled Mysteries and the Magic Presence. One day while hiking high on this mountain, beloved David Lloyd met Mr. Ballard and the experiences related in this book are beloved David Lloyd's own words as dictated through Mr. and Mrs. G. W. Ballard, our beloved accredited messengers. The discourses presented in part 1 are the original manuscripts as transcribed by beloved Mrs. Betty O. Monday. No changes were made in editing. The discourses contained in part 2 are verbatim from the original dictation recordings. It is with our greatest joy and gratitude that we present this book, the I Am Discourses, Volume X, which gives the full explanation of beloved David Lloyd's victory of the ascension without passing through the change called death. The Editor I drink of God's cup of white fire, I hold it now in my hand, I am a son of God's presence, God's great honor flame, I am. I am God's cup of white fire that blesses all I behold, I give of its mighty essence, God's blessings of love untold. I carry God's cup of white fire, that all may behold its flame, I raise it high to my presence, and command in God's great name. I stand with God's cup of white fire, and give of its love to all, I am its victory and power, its miracles, I am, and call. I heal with God's cup of white fire, its presence with all remains, its essence flows without limit. Its fire us all sustains. 12. God's music, God's cup of white fire, enfolds the earth in God's love, purifies all by its presence, which all now behold above. God's bells, God's cup of white fire, ring mankind forever free, and as I hear them resounding, their great God flame pours through me. I offer God's cup of white fire, all see its great honor flame, my world, a son of its presence, the source from whence we all camel. My heart is God's cup of white fire, my life is God's essence here, my hands, God's flame in action, protecting all we hold dear. I pour from God's cup of white fire, God's wonders all must behold, God's gifts shall bless without limit, as all their powers enfold. I give God's cup of white fire, to all who accept its truth, its great eternal God presence, the mighty I am, is proof. God's peace, God's cup of white fire, I am, to all here below, God's health, God's strength and God's courage, on all it does now bestow. God's secrets, God's cup of white fire, reveal God's powers to man, my all I give to my presence, in its own heart, I am. I see God's cup of white fire, I hold it here in my hand, I give and give without limit, I speak God's name, God's command. It's real, God's cup of white fire, as real as eternity, I am all its victory blazing, all God's full authority. Chanira. Part 1. In. I am, Discourses. By. Beloved David Lloyd the following discourses were dictated. Through. The beloved messenger Mr. G. W. Ballard. D-I-S-C-O-U. 
April 18, 1937 Bridgeport, C. Beloved students of America, the culmination of the ages is at hand. I was in the physical body similar to yours, searching, searching, searching as you are, as many of you have been, possibly for a longer period than I searched, and yet, as the victory came to me, so shall it come to you. If you could imagine, try just for a few moments, my position in having been told in India when I was there with my father, who was on government business, that on a great mountain in North America I would find a man with a crystal cup who would assist me to the ascension. Imagine, one starting out to find this place in a great country like America, where there are great ranges of mountains. Think of it, and then to find that mountain, not even knowing the state it was in. After my father passed on and I began that search, I came to your city of New York, transferring from the Bank of England a part of my account, and that. 1. Search began. Dear ones, can you imagine what it means to go forth in, shall I say, a strange world, for I had not been in America before. You know the Englishmen, sometimes they do not care to travel, and it had not been my privilege to travel much, but I went forth on that great mission. Think of it, precious ones, T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T-E-S-T -E 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 mission on T-H-E face O-F T-H-E-E-A-R-T-H, Y-O-U are ascension. After long years, when this good messenger went out to meet beloved Saint Germain on the side of Mount Shasta, and I had finally come closer and closer each month to that focus where my freedom was to come. And that day when I suddenly came upon him and in his kindness he offered me a drink of water, in his hand came the crystal cup. Can you imagine the feeling that surged through my being? Now dear hearts, there are those in the world who have thought that this experience of the ascension upon Mount Shasta was a figment of his imagination. Let me tell you, it was M-I-G-H-T-Y real, and I was there in the physical body like yours. Then the great law of his presence was released, until these arms were a blazing light you could not look into, and he took my hands. As I ascended and let go of his hands which grasped mine, then as my feet were perhaps fifteen feet above his head, that transformation from the human into the divine took place. Within my body. Do you think I did not know every detail which took place, and how I marvel at the almost viciousness of many of mankind that have refused to believe that experience was real and true? I stand here tonight in your midst, declaring with the power and authority of an ascended being, which I have become, the truth of that, for your blessing and benefit, and let no one in the world stand before me and tell me that that experience was not true. Which I experienced in gaining my freedom from the human limitations and into that ascended body in which I shall always remain. Dear hearts, for once, in the name of God, your mighty IAM presence, put out of your feeling world all doubts of the power of your mighty presence, to do this identical thing for you, not only to set you free from human limitations, but also give you your freedom in the fullness of your ascension, which is as practical as anything in the world. That is why, precious ones, Saint Germain has asked me to come to you and convey to you, if possible, my feeling which I experienced in that great achievement, the ascension, and I want you to know, dear hearts, that everything I did, you can do. Mark you, dear hearts, when I contacted this beloved messenger on the side of Mount Shasta, so far as I know, my light was no more expanded than many of yours today. Will you not feel that, dear hearts, and realize that your mighty I am presence, the power of the universe, the wisdom of the universe, may be able to do identically the same thing for you today which it did for me then? In the experience of Mr. Rayborn, who made his ascension afterwards, do you not see, precious ones, that the evidence is before you of that which beloved Jesus told the world two thousand years ago and left the example for mankind, but because the reality of his achievement was clothed with misunderstanding of mankind. Most of mankind did not even credit it as ever having taken place. Today, owing to the great cosmic light coming forth, beloved ones, and this beloved Saint Germain, it has made it possible for mankind to have this transcendent, simple understanding of the mighty I am presence, which even children can apply and receive results. Then you, precious ones, will you not take hold of this understanding of the mighty I am presence? Do not look for results, but call the mighty I am presence forth into action until every vestige of your human limitations is dissolved and consumed, and you are set free. Believe me, dear hearts, when I tell you that only as mankind willingly and joyously call the presence into action to use that violet-consuming flame, too. 
pass from their feet up through them, from underneath their chairs, if they be sitting down, or their bed, if they be lying down, call the presence, to pass that violet consuming flame through them and dissolve every discordant thing from them, then they will be free. But unless they are willing to do that, there is no chance for them to be free, because, precious ones, every one of mankind have drawn about them through every embodiment through which they have lived, much discordant accumulation which is held about them. And as you see the radiance about the presence in the chart, which is the good accumulated around them through the centuries, so around the human form are the discordant qualities, which the human must dissolve before it can make the ascension. Now dear ones, today you have that infinite power in your call, not only in the use of the violet consuming flame to clear your world of all discordant qualities, but to take command of your mind and body, and through its mighty outpouring of radiance, set you free. Even to the accomplishment of your ascension. So I want you to know dear hearts, if you will, as I flash these words before this good messenger, that I am speaking to you tonight as one of you, dear hearts, one who so recently stood in a form like yours. Today I stand in the ascended body. Wholly free from earth and its limitations. Dear hearts, as the great divine director has said in his dictations, there are hundreds in America today who, if they could accept the F-E-E-L-I-N-G which I am pouring forth to you tonight of my achievement. C O U L D A C C O M P L I S H T H I S same A C H I E V E M E N T N T H I S E M B O D I M E N T. Beloved dear hearts, whether you have been accustomed to it or not, you have lived in hundreds and perhaps thousands of embodiments the same as this. We, who have attained this freedom, know this to be true, and dear ones, if you can accept your mighty IAM presence. As the giver of all life and intelligence and call it in and through you, there is only one result that can follow, your freedom and perfection. Unless you can make that call and continue it until every vestige of your limitations is dissolved, you cannot make your ascension, and you will go on, embodiment after embodiment. Until you buckle down and use the violet consuming flame and call this mighty energy into action, you will never be free. It is within the reach of every one of you, precious ones, and can you imagine my great love, my great desire to give you that assistance, when I know how long my search was. Not only that, but since my freedom, I have seen, that in other embodiments, I had searched and searched, and that is why it had to come in this one, my freedom. Now today I say to you, every one here, who of you know what your, mighty I am presence, could do for you at any given moment? Tell me, any of you. Who of you know what that great and mighty presence could do for you? I tell you, there are those sitting in this room, who, if they will so decree it and stand by it, will make the ascension in this embodiment, and I mean it. So precious ones, my humble effort is to convey to you the feeling of the truth. I say to you, precious hearts, those precious books, unveiled mysteries, the magic presence, and the I am discourses, study them as you never did anything in your life. They are living L-I-G-H-T, they are L-I-V-I-N-G-T-I-U-T-H, and words that will carry that quality into your feeling world, and cause it to act there unto your complete freedom from every human thing. There is not anything in the world today that will carry you, precious ones, so powerfully, because those words not only carry the quality which they convey, but the power of Saint Germain's radiance. It is unparalleled with anything that has ever gone forth in the world up to date. These are mighty truths which I am conveying to you, precious ones. Do not let your human conditions and affairs cause you to withdraw from the great light that this understanding of the presence conveys to you. If you do, the fault is yours, precious ones. No one is coerced. No one is dragged by the hair to accept this, but it is offered with a power of life unparalleled in the history of mankind. Those who can accept it, apply this great energy, and practice the power of the presence, will have not only the freedom from all problems and limitations, but their eternal freedom, their ascension. This is the second time that it has been my great privilege to speak to the students, and words fail utterly to convey my joy. For within you, within your light, many of you, I see that full power of acceptance and that mighty truth that has gone into action in your world, and will act there and produce mighty results for you. Will you not accept it with my love to act there in your feeling world and produce those mighty results for you?
Remember, precious ones, in all this knowledge of the I am, the mighty I am presence which Saint Germain has brought forth, no one is urged. Everyone is left wholly free, but we, knowing that joy and freedom which it brings to mankind, do you wonder that we plead and plead and plead with you as the messengers have for more than two years, that you may accept this great and mighty truth and apply it in your world and have your freedom? It is quite up to you. No one can apply it for you, dear hearts. You can be given great assistance, there is no question about that, but to gain your mighty victory, you must take the reins in your own hands, call your presence into action, and have that freedom which it brings to you alone through your own application. Of course, mankind has received immeasurable assistance, but your victory can only come through your own application of the mighty I am presence. Now notice, precious hearts, every step you gain in the acknowledgement of your own mighty I am presence, every victory that you win, never has to be redone. It is there forever. You cannot recede from a single thing accomplished in the understanding of your mighty I am presence. Is that not far different than that which we have understood and applied before, and have had temporary results? So today, as we apply it and gain one victory after another, you will find those things never return again, but you go on and on from one victory to another, and finally, the ascension and freedom from all limitations. In this busy western world of mankind today, has come this wondrous, wondrous mighty victory. Think of it, precious ones. When that great master from Venus at the Royal Teton, as described to you, said that no longer should the Western world have to look to the East for the wisdom, for right in your own heart's midst, the radiance of God, the mighty I am presence, through the beloved Saint Germain, has come to you. The most wonderful thing ever has been brought to mankind, and to the degree that the beloved ones of America can accept it, and call their mighty I am presence into action with great determination, so shall they too stand where I stand today in the freedom forever. Precious ones, I wish there were words by which I could illustrate to you what the feeling is going on within you, even as I speak to you, and this mighty energy is charged into your feeling world, so am I able to see the activity which is going on there. Dear hearts, the joy, the marvel of its accomplishment and that which I know you can accomplish, and I say it as one heart to another, apply. Apply, apply T-H-I-S-K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E of the mighty I am presence, dear hearts, and allow me, if you will, to assist you. I have returned to serve with this good brother in the ascended body which I now have. I seem invisible to you, but I am very tangible here, I assure you. There is this point I want to cover in detail with you. Mankind throughout the ages have believed anything they do not see to be intangible, to be unreal. That is a mistake. If you will observe and follow me for a moment. In the things that are most powerful in your use today, are the things that are invisible to you, are they not, your radio, your electricity, the power that acts to produce the results in your world, the most power. Full is invisible. While I stand invisible to most of you, I am nonetheless tangible, as one day you will find out. Now the ascended masters, dear hearts, as they did with this good messenger, they can when they choose, come forth in the visible tangible body, just as tangible and visible as yours in the physical body, a body just as tangible, wholly perfect and beautiful. So today I say to you, dear hearts, ere many years are over your head, you will see one or more or perhaps several of the ascended masters standing before you in tangible bodies, as tangible as yours. Then the world will come to understand the great truth and the pleading which the messengers have given forth to mankind, that they may understand and have the glory of freedom from human limitations and be free forever. It is one thing, dear hearts, to solve your problems, and as you solve one, ten more appear, but when you, in the acknowledgement of your presence, raise into the octave where there are no problems, isn't it a far more desirable activity? So today, mankind are in a position where they can, in the acknowledgement of their presence, by calling it into action, have these miracles manifest in their lives, in their world of activity. So I say to you, dear ones, if you will earnestly apply, call your mighty presence into action with determination, I will be able to give you every assistance the law of your being permits, for as I just said to you, you w i l l f i n d o n e day I am very t a n g i b l e. After this great victory having been won, can you imagine, I want to get back into action, and to everyone who will call to me, 
I will give every assistance that is possible, because in the ascended state, no one is limited in any respect. I want you to feel that. I want you to know and understand that no longer shall mankind remain in the limitations of their own creations. I want to say to you, dear hearts, don't fail to call your presence into action to use the violet consuming flame. W I T H O U T I T U C A N N O T gain T H E victory, and why? Because every human being has accumulated about them these discordant qualities which have to be consumed out of their world. You cannot produce that violet consuming flame by your physical effort, and there have been those in the East that have spread the idea that it was dangerous to use that. Don't be deceived. Dear hearts, you could use the violet consuming flame on an unborn infant with perfect safety, because your mighty I am presence has to produce that, for you cannot do it with the human, therefore, that is perfection, and consumes only that which needs to be consumed, and cannot and does not consume anything but the imperfection. As you will use that, dear hearts, then you will feel the results in the lightness of your body, the freedom from the pressure you feel today, and go forth victorious in the freedom of your mighty I am presence. Beloved ones, remember, mankind has sought for centuries for this understanding, and only now has it been released to the mass of mankind for the first time, and the messengers went forth a little more than two years ago, think of it. You, today, who have the privilege of practicing your presence, the greatest privilege ever in any age, and that how by your earnest determined call, you can dissolve every discordant thing about you, not only in this embodiment, dear hearts, but all that which has been accumulated through the centuries. Think of it. If it were just in this embodiment, it would be a wonderful achievement, but think, in the power of your presence and the use of the violet-consuming flame, you can dissolve every discordant thing you have ever drawn about you. Notice, because you have not known that, that accumulation of the centuries hovers about you, your human creation, and no one can free themselves from it until they understand and call the presence into action, and use the violet-consuming flame. Therefore, dear hearts, will you not use this with all sincerity, and for the happiness, blessing, and freedom which comes from it? I wonder, precious ones, do you know that there was a mighty reason for the messenger coming into your midst tonight? Oh, you precious hearts, do you realize that these things don't just happen? I wish the law of your being permitted me to tell you just all about it, but I may not say more about that, but there is a mighty reason. Oh, precious ones, will you not make yourselves, each one of you in the call to your mighty I am presence, a pillar of light moving everywhere you go in your environment? Let the radiance of your presence pour forth in and through your mind, body and world in the atmosphere about you, and see how quickly people will begin to feel and say, how wonderful you have become, what has brought this great change. Then is your opportunity to say, if you care to listen, my acknowledgement of my own. God presence, that mighty I am, whose radiance pours through me, is the reason for the harmony which you feel. It is so precious, so wonderful, dear hearts, it is so very clear, it is your life, just your life, it is transcendent, true from your present human standpoint. But dear hearts, it is all so practical, it is just your life, there is really nothing unusual about it. Your life. Just think of it, your life that can produce all perfection for you. Notice, beloved ones, until this current touches the top of your head, it is wholly pure and perfect, then what changes it? The feeling which is held in your feeling world is that which clothes that wondrous pure energy as it comes forth, in and through your body and out into your world, which would, of its own volition, produce perfection, harmony and happiness for you. But because of long qualification of discord through your feelings, you clothed that energy to produce in harmony in your body, to produce in harmony in your world, therefore, you have unsatisfactory results. Today you can change it all quickly. Oh, believe it, precious ones. How quickly you can change it if you will stop instantly every human feeling, and say to that human self, as this good messenger did to his in Los Angeles, stop, you human self, you have no more power to cause in harmony in my world. Be silent. Mighty I am present, take command of this mind and body, produce your perfection and hold your dominion. Pour your mighty light through this body, out into my world and activity, fill it with your mighty harmony, your mighty directing intelligence, and hold it there forever as you do. That, oh, 
precious ones, so quickly you will find that all discord dissolves from you and your world, and you stand forth a joyous, happy, confident being. Oh, beloved ones, so few years ago this good messenger before you was so timid and fearful, and today does he look like it? The same victory is there for you, if you will. Will you believe me when I say, I feel quite well acquainted with you, even though we never met in the physical bodies? It is heart and heart that speaks, after all, and when we learn that, oh, precious ones, heart to heart, we speak. Your higher mental body, knowing your requirements, is ready to release from the presence, at your call, its beauty and perfection, its harmony, its confidence, its courage, its strength, its mighty energy to go forth in your world and perform any given service. Will you not accept it and allow it to go forth and produce that perfection for you? In the fullness of your mighty I am presence, I call on the law of forgiveness for all human mistakes that have ever been made by you here or all mankind. Then I call your mighty I am presence into action to flood you in your world with that mighty ascended master substance, to fill your mind, your body, your world, your activity with its mighty presence and governing intelligence, that it may act there. For you to produce its harmony and release from the presence its mighty power of divine love, to flow out and harmonize your world, which holds that harmony sustained long enough that the power of the presence goes forth qualified with any feeling, therefore, producing its perfection. Perfect ease, naturalness and grace. There is nothing unnatural about the activity of the presence. It is the most natural thing in the world. Just become acquainted with your presence, then you will see how natural it is. With the eye picture which the chart produces for you, there is no excuse for anyone again that has ever once contacted that chart, to forget their presence or its power to act for them. Won't you, with all the love of your being, accept the power of your presence and stand by that, until all walls of human resistance have gone down, and accept the happiness and perfection which your presence holds for you, and is hourly waiting to pour forth to you. I thank you. May 7, 1937 Boston, Massachusetts Beloved students of the light, I congratulate you on your light which you are expanding. As the beloved messenger has told you, I am David Lloyd, the Englishman who made the ascension on the side of Mount Shasta, and who so many years ago, was told in India by one of the masters, that on a great mountain in North America I would find a man with a crystal cup. And when I find that man, I would have found the one who could assist me to the ascension. That was all the information given, and I ask you, is there anyone in this room who would have had the courage to follow out that slight information and start on the search for that man? I did not know it then, but the light within me was strong enough to take command, and when this great master told me this, I believed every word of it. When my father was shortly after shot and killed, as we use the outer terminology, then we found that the grubstake which my father had given a man in a South African diamond mine had produced results and a considerable fortune was left me and my mother. The master came again as the representative. 18. From South Africa, and brought the money which was ours. We took it to London after my father passed, and then four years later my mother passed on. I then began that search. I am saying this to you tonight, dear hearts, you have read it, but beloved Saint Germain asked me to come and talk to you tonight that you might have the feeling which I know is the reality of my own actual experience. Will you be kind enough to allow me to give you the assistance by letting your feeling world feel the full true reality of my own experience, which I am telling you? I then transferred part of the money to New York and began the search. If any of you can imagine those years, when searching month after month went on with no results, and time and again I would think it was no use. But always no sooner would that human feeling think it no use from within me would arise that strong power that so far transcended the human feeling that said there was no use, that I would go on again. Believe it or not, dear ones, in all those years, that energy and strength within me increased, and as I think of it today, it was a marvellous thing. Then that day when I was directed to Mount Shasta, just by my feeling, not in any other way, and when this good brother had come out, as he thought, to meet Saint Germain, and was sitting there on a log. Waiting for him, I came up to him. He turned and saw M. E. When he offered me a drink of water and offered me the cup, in his hand came the crystal cup, the first precipitation he had had himself. When I saw that cup in his hand, after all those many years of searching, 
Can you imagine just for a moment the feeling that took possession of me, when the master had said, when you find that man with the crystal cup, you will have found the one who will assist you to make the ascension. Notice. All this gathered momentum of expectation all through those years, suddenly released and rushed forward like a mighty avalanche. When I explained to this good brother what had taken place, he said, what am I supposed to do? Then that power surged in me again, and I said to him, ask the God in you who does know. And with that, his whole human self just dissolved out of the way and the light from his, mighty I am presence, came down, until his arms were a blazing light and his hands reached out and took mine, and in a few moments my feet left the earth. Then as I continued as far as his hands would reach, he let go, and I continued until my feet were fifteen or twenty feet above his head, then I realized my glory was at hand. Can you for a moment feel the victory, the power? the strength, the courage which were mine in that great achievement? Then as I stood there in the upper air, looking down at him, such gratitude filling my heart, I suddenly became aware that all age and its appearance had left my body. Then the ordinary suit of clothes I was wearing dissolved into those garments of the higher octave, and instead of a man of the world, a physical being, I stood there clothed in garments of dazzling light, a youth of twenty summers. Then the great ray of light from the presence descended, and from this good brother I disappeared into that ray of light, but not as he thought, for to him I disappeared, but to me I saw through that light and still was aware of his presence. Even when I was absorbed into the electronic body of my own, mighty I am presence. Now at this point I want to explain to you what actually takes place and the difference between the presence, as you see it indicated there on the chart of an unascended being and that which actually took place in my own experience in the achievement of the ascension. The mighty I am presence, as it stands there with the unascended being, knows nothing about your limitations and distress down here in the physical world. Now notice this, but your higher mental body does know both, knows the perfection above it and the imperfection and your struggles down here. And waits and waits and waits for you to begin to give attention to your presence so that it can release the intelligence and the energy you require into your world of action, to produce the results you require. Now this is a point I wish you, if you will, to hold firmly in mind. When I ascended, the great light which was released and the sudden quick purifying of my physical body, released it from the attraction of the earth. After I had ascended, I was absorbed into the higher mental body. Then the fullness of this release came, and the glory of its achievement is indescribable. I carried with me the qualities of the human, the purified qualities, and the discriminating selective activity of the intelligence of the higher mental body, into the electronic body of the, mighty I am presence. That is how the ascended master knows both perfection and imperfection about you, and sees what your requirement is, while your, presence, does not see and know the imperfections in the unascended being. If once you get that clear in your consciousness, it will be a tremendous thing and help for you because your own, God presence, is doing its work at cosmic levels, releasing its energy through the higher mental body to you, according to the attention which you give to it. Now it is the law of your being that that energy must pour forth, but unless you give attention to your, presence, it only pours forth in a fragmentary manner. Therefore, when you continue to give your attention to the, presence, in all earnestness and sincerity, then you will gain such a volume such an intensity of the release of your, presence, that naturally. The dissolving process of not only in the use of the violet consuming flame of your accumulation, but the density of the structure of your physical body, will be dissolved and release you back into the life from which you came forth. Now all of this is the most natural, practical thing that mankind can experience, and that is why beloved Jesus said to mankind, all of these things that I have done, ye shall do. He meant every word of it. But afterwards, two hundred years after his ascension, the human concept so clothed the great truth which he had given forth and made him a special being, that none of mankind believed that they could do the very things that his words told them they should do. I ask you, precious ones, to observe the experience of these good messengers. The transcendent healings of every description that have taken place in the class and otherwise, are the fulfilling of the law. If they did not understand this, presence, how could these things be done? You, yourselves, many of you, have had transcendent, marvelous experiences in healing and solving of problems and conditions which were terrifying to you before. I say to you, precious ones, as you will give Aten. 
Tie on to your presence and call it into action. Every vestige and all human sense of limitations will disappear from you in your life. It has to do it. It is the law of life, it is the law of your being, and as you continue you will have that result, because it is the law of life. And not only that, but once you understand first the harmonizing of your feeling and holding it so, then with firm command, now notice, with firm command, to all human limitations or disturbing appearances say, you have no power. If you saw from the inner standpoint the very activity of the law that takes place, you would be joyful indeed, for it is just like you threw a ball of light before you and that forms a wall of light, which no discordant thing can penetrate when you say to those appearances, you have no power. That is why, beloved ones, you can have these results without limit. You can call your mighty I am presence to take command of you in your world, produce its perfection and hold its dominion there, and direct you by its mighty intelligence so powerfully, that naturally you will have the perfect requirements of the moment in your activity of the outer world. Now these are simple things that we need to understand, dear ones, in the life of physical experience because mankind alone is responsible for the limitations which they are in, because they are their own. Creation. Just because we have made mistakes, dear ones, is no reason we have to continue in them. Now then, the only solution for anything, individual, state, city, national or international, is sufficient call of enough of mankind into action, that will release into the feeling and mental world of mankind these mighty qualities of perfection of the presence to go forth and produce that requirement and make it permanent. There is no other means in the universe of ever bringing a permanent solution of anything. Now it applies in your individual life just the same as it does in your city, state or nation, and the problems of the nations today cannot be solved permanently until enough of mankind will call the mighty I am presence into action. That will cause such a volume of this perfection of the presence to come forth in the mental and feeling world that hundreds of thousands of people will feel the impulse within their feeling world to do the perfect thing, give justice, perform the service of justice and kindliness, and pour forth the power of divine love to every other person, which is the key to all things of achievement. Then as that goes on in a sufficient volume, suddenly all mankind will come into the one desire, to bless each other and call forth the power of the presence to produce perfection in the world of mankind. That is the thing which is taking place today, and will expand with the speed of lightning from this time on. Because as the radioactivity of the messengers goes forth and more are reached through the power of the radio, enough people will come to understand this great law and begin to call their presence into action. Because we have watched the activity of the beloved messengers work over the radio to see that it does produce the results. Out of the hundreds who heard her over the radio, there are but three people that are not producing results through the decrees which they heard. I tell you, dear hearts, it is a tremendous thing. I trust the various avenues of truth and various organizations who have, for no reason, begun to oppose this work, I trust they won't do that anymore, for their own sake. They cannot hurt the messengers or this work, but they will destroy their own organizations, precious hearts, unless they stop it because it is the law of life. If they are sending vicious thoughts out, they will reap it in their midst. Therefore, I say to you, precious ones, don't do this, whether it is in organizations or whether it is in your individual life. The law of life is harmony, and to the degree that people maintain it, they will be successful, whether it is individuals, organizations or whoever they are. Now we are not criticizing the various avenues of truth, but we are trying to tell them the truth that they may save the great good that has been accomplished through those channels, and not destroy it. That is the only reason we are telling them the law of life, and if they listen, it will save them. They do not understand that this is the light and activity of the ascended masters. There is no human being on the face of the earth, or group of them, that has power to interfere with this work. This is what we are trying earnestly to have the people understand, because it is the law of life. Notice this, when the light moves into action it knows no resistance nor interference, it simply goes forth and produces the result, and what is not like it disappears before it. That is the law, it is not the messengers. It is the law of light and love and life which is acting through this understanding of the mighty I am presence. 
I tell you, dear hearts, think of it for a moment, that ray of energy and light that you see going from the heart of the presence, into the human form, that light is self-luminous intelligent substance. Divine love is self-luminous intelligent substance. Therefore, when that is called forth into action, it knows only its own power. It does not think or admit or feel resistance or interference for a single second, but it just simply moves forward and performs its service. Now follow me, if you will, for a few moments. We admit the great cosmic light is sweeping into the earth in such a great volume at this time. On the 7th of April a great release of the cosmic light swept into the earth, on the 7th of July, again will come another great release. Now beloved ones, this is not just someone's expression or my expression, but when a cosmic release of light comes into the earth. Remind yourself of what I have just said, that that light is self-luminous intelligent substance. Remember that in Washington's vision in the last episode, which the Ascended Masters are trying to prevent coming into America, where that great being who gave him the vision said, that INTHE final struggle. THAT light as of a thousand suns shall descend into THE earth and dissolve all human selfishness from THE planet. That will occur in the final activity of the release of mankind into their freedom and eternal victory which belongs to them. The great Arcturus said in his dictation again, if necessary, THAT light as of a thousand suns shall descend into THE earth and remove all selfishness and distress from THE planet. Those are utterances of mighty beings which will be fulfilled, beloved ones, and there is no question about it. Now then, the beloved, blessed mankind, oh, precious ones, do not think for a moment that we from the ascended state ever criticize any one of God's children. We only try to draw to them the understanding of the law of life, that they may cooperate with us in the assistance which we want to give to set mankind free forever from their limitations. There is no other reason, dear hearts. We are free from all the earth. There could be no desire upon our part except that you be free that we come forth and sustain the messengers and protect them with that mighty invincible protection, that they may carry this forth to mankind until enough of mankind come to understand it. That they too can make the call and release a sufficient call, and cooperate with the great cosmic light in producing this great perfection, which the great cosmic light now admits on the earth. Notice. Precious ones, it is not a matter of human desire, but the great cosmic light has come to a point of its activity in the universe. When it says to the earth, you mu stxpandmorelight, and what causes the light of the earth to expand, will you tell me? The expansion of the light within human beings. Y-E-R-T-H-E-L-I-G-H-T of T-H-E-W-O-R-L-D, those words mean more than is just apparent. Precious ones, T-O-T-H-E da. G R E et H A T I O L I G H Texpans W I T H I N I A E A R T F R O M I A M I G H T Y I M P R E S E N C E D O U B E C O M E T H E L I G H T O F T H E W O R L D. It is magnificent, it is transcendent, the privilege which is before mankind in the understanding of their mighty I am presence, because you cannot give recognition and attention to your mighty I am presence, without expanding this light that beats your heart. Dear ones, there is not one of you, precious ones, sitting in this room, that if you would deliberately set about it in your attention to your presence, that could not expand the light in your heart in one year so it would show through your clothing to the physical sight. I tell you, because I know. That is your privilege, if you will be determined enough to have it. That is why we urge you, precious hearts, give your whole attention to your presence, call it into action, then say to all appearances, you have N-O-P-O-W-E-R-K-E-E-P-O-U-T-O-F-M-Y-W-O-R-L-D. Then as you do that, you will no longer feed your energy to those appearances to harm you longer, because no appearance can harm you unless you feed your energy into it. Won't you remember that? The moment you refuse to give your life into any disturbing limiting appearance, then it is finished, so far as you are concerned. Then as you call it into AC. Tie on you have greater volume, greater power, and can and do produce results that will satisfy any human being on the face of the earth of the victory of their achievement. So today, the glory is yours, dear ones, and we see it so clearly. Think of it, 
beloved ones, only so few years ago I stood in exactly the same position you stand today. Now you might say to me, how was it that I was so suddenly released in that purified activity by the presence? Oh, that is easily answered. Think of it. For all those many years I lived in the one expectancy of the ascension when I found the man with the crystal cup. I know in that, the intellect momentarily caused me to question and doubt, then in my feelings that was satisfied, and it never wavered, I know now, I did not then. I know my feeling never wavered from the moment that blessed one in India told me I would go forth and find the man with the crystal cup. I accepted it and went into action. All through those long years of search and expectation, the purification of my own body went on. Why? Because my attention was on the thought and feeling of the ascension, dear hearts. Do you not see that? If you will give your attention, beloved ones, to your mighty I am presence, as I did to the thought and feeling of the ascension, which I had been told could take place, then do you not see you can produce even greater results, and many times quicker than I was able to do, through the feeling of expectation and attention upon the ascension. Now mark you, I did not know the presence, as you do today, but my devotion and feeling of the truth of the words of that beloved one in India, was the mighty vivifying sustaining power which carried me on and on and on to the achievement. Won't you feel that, precious, beloved ones? Won't you feel that in your application, in your desire for your freedom from limitation? Don't you see that earnest desire is God, the mighty I am presence in action, that will produce that result for you, and nothing in the world can stop it? Won't you feel that, beloved ones? When we have gained this freedom and know it is possible, quickly, for so many of you, won't you let us hold your hand until you too have gained the strength, courage and the fearlessness of your mighty I am presence? That you go forward quickly into that great achievement and freedom forever from human creation and limitations. That is what we want you to do, and with so great a love and kindness we pour forth this mighty radiance to you. That gives you the strength and courage to go on and on and on, until that day when you feel your sacred victory within your grasp, and know that nothing can stay it from you. Beloved ones, no greater loveth any man than he who would give his life for another. You have heard that many times. What do you think is the true meaning of that? Do you realize, oh, my brothers and sisters, that while these words are being voiced to you tonight, I am giving you my life for your courage, strength and victory? Now remember, it is not the messenger that is speaking to you, but David Lloyd who made the ascension on Mount Shasta. The messenger is but voicing these words, my life, my energy, my strength, my courage and my acceptance of the great achievement through the actual experience, is being anchored within your feeling world to give you that true feeling of your victory. Achievement and accomplishment that is now ready for you to be attained, and it cannot fail. That is why, precious ones, we take this opportunity, because it was very opportune at this time. That is why the messenger was brought to you here tonight and why you, precious hearts, responded so wonderfully to it. M-I-G-H-T-Y-I am presence, I-D-E-C-R-E-E-T-O-N-I-G-H-T-T-H-A-T every precious O-N-E-N-T-H-I-S-R-O-O-M shall G-O-F-O. A W A R D W I T H T H S T R E N G T H T H Eckridge T H E P O W E R O F T H E I R M I G H T Y I am pres N C E in F U L L action T H A T N E V E R again W I L L T H E I R F E E L I N G B A B L T O a C C E P T A R N Y T H I N G B U T T H F U L L P O W E R A N D P E R F E C T I O N O F T H E P R E S N C E S W E E P I N G N A N D T H R O U G H T H A T P R O D U C E It's P E R F E C T I O N F O R T H E M a N D F I L L T H E I R W O R L D W I T H T H E H A R M O N Y A N D P E R F E C T I O N W H I C H T H E P R E S E N C E is. That is my love, that is my decree which I leave with you tonight. Remember, precious ones, that only so recently I was in a human form similar to yours. 
Who of you could say to me tonight that in two, four, or five years, you two may not stand where I am today, in the freedom of the ascension? Dear hearts, do not any longer, I plead with you, allow the human intellect to say these things cannot be, or to accept any longer that only what the human sees is possible of achievement. If it were, it would be a travesty on life. Everything of power and blessing that comes to you, dear hearts, even in your physical world of activity, is power invincible. Why not give the power to your presence to do all these wonderful things for you? It is not limited. It would not accept your human limitations or conditions. You give all power to it to take command of your mind and body, keep you harmonized, and allow its mighty currents to cleanse and purify the human form, and by the expansion of the light in the cells of your body. Dissolve, throw off and consume all the density which is there. Then the earth cannot longer hold you here, and you, in the purified physical body, will ascend into the higher mental body, then into the mighty electronic presence, where you become wholly free, forever free, from all the limitations and distress of the earth, not only once, but forever. It is the only means in the universe of freeing yourself from the wheel of birth and rebirth. One more thing in closing I want to say to you. Beloved ones, think of all the accumulation of centuries, and yet today, in the understanding of this wondrous, mighty presence, in the use of the violet consuming flame, you can enable the presence to dissolve for you in a few weeks or a few months the accumulation of centuries. Was there ever anything so mighty, so powerful, brought to mankind for their blessing and use? Surely not, surely there is no such wonderful thing ever brought to earth as this freedom and understanding, which can be and is the cooperation of the individual in physical embodiment with the great presence. As the law of divine love takes place, they will find this experience through them, your great and eternal perfection. I thank you. November 23, 1937 WEST PALM Beach, Florida Beloved students and friends of Florida, I have longed for this opportunity to become acquainted with you, for I trust my words tonight may help us to become acquainted. Little did I dream many, many years ago, after I had come to New York and established myself, and then began my search in America for that great mountain, one season I became so weary of the search that I accepted the invitation of a wealthy friend in New York. And I was on your waters of Florida in a wonderful yacht. Little did I dream then, that at this time, I would be speaking to you in this manner. I do not wonder that sometimes it is a little difficult for individuals to realize quickly, the full import of these vast truths of life which are not being revealed to mankind. I do not wonder. I do not feel impatient, but in order to give you a little strength and encouragement, remember the years of my search. Dear ones, do you really realize what it means today to follow a direction so fragmentary as was given me? Think of it. In India, as you have read in the books, I was told that on a great mountain in 36. North America I would find the man with the crystal cup, and when I did, I had found that one who could assist me to my ascension. I knew nothing about these laws to speak of, but today, I know that the light within me was that which the master saw, which drew him to me to give me these fragmentary directions, that if I, now notice, if I was strong enough to follow, I would win the victory. Little did I dream then how great was the power of my own, God presence, that when I came to a point where I could begin to allow it to do the work and do the searching, then my search was soon over. Think of all the years of experience that it took to teach me, to, as I thought then, turn it over to God and let God do the searching. You today, beloved ones, are in a far more advantageous state than I was. You have had brought to you this magnificent understanding and application. Oh, how I wish I had that when I was told in India to make that search. Now you may talk about, and you have read about, the old occult methods and tests which individuals go through in the occult schools, for and through initiation. Well, I venture that no one of them was put to a greater test than I was in that search. That is why I want to tell you today, beloved people of Florida and America, that you are the most privileged of people. In all of the earlier centuries mankind had to go through such stress and every privation imaginable, to see whether the strength of the light within them was strong enough to continue, and for no other reason. It was not that someone was being deprived of something, but just to see if the light within the individual was strong enough to carry him forward, and that is so with you today. 
For instance, as I was standing here, oh yes, I was, when the messenger was talking to you a few minutes ago, and heard what he said, and I thought of all the things that he had endured to carry this message forward. I felt that my search for the crystal cup was not nearly so important as it had been before, I mean from my standpoint of strength in going forth. For let me tell you, dear ones, I had only my own human creation to contend with, the beloved messengers have the human creations of nearly 400,000 people to contend with. Did you ever think of that? Do you realize what that means, dear ones? I am saying this for your blessing and benefit, dear ones, that you may feel how, let us call it just plain what it is, how nonsensical it is to allow human conditions or your own creations to longer interfere with your progress and advancement. You see, I thought when I finally found him, and when he would have given me a drink of water, to see the crystal cup appear in his hand, you can never know what passed through my physical body. Now many of you feel the currents from the presence today and are rejoiced, but could you know that current which went through my body that day, when I suddenly saw that crystal cup in his hand, it was like the forces of eternity passed through my body right then. And it's so released, now this is a point I trust every one of you will get and hold fast to, in that release from my own presence. As I know now, when I saw that cup in his hand, it enabled M.E. to say to him the words written there with such power, when he said, What am I supposed to do? And I said to him, Ask the God in you who does know. I have often heard him say that I said that with such power, that his own human self just dissolved and receded out of the way. Well, that was true, but what do you suppose I was experiencing about that time? I want you to know both of those activities, because dear people, there is not one of you that cannot experience the same thing today. Look. Think of it, I had not the training that you have, think of that. You have had three years training, many of you, but I did not. Therefore, will you believe me when I say to you tonight, that there are many in this room whose light is stronger and brighter than. Mine was, by far, at that achievement. Now I want you to get this, if you will. I am telling you the truth, and I want you to feel the strength of your own light. Dear people, because you have not had some gigantic manifestation at your call, oh, do not make the mistake or think you have not been making steady and sure progress. How I would like to pick every one of you up and show you for a moment, the progress you have made, and you would not ever feel again that you had not made the progress, because you had not seen some astonishing manifestation of your powers of the presence called into action. Oh, dear people, do not make that mistake. It has not anything in the world to do with it, but your steadfastness, your loyalty to the light and to your own God presence, is the thing that counts. Then as sure as you breath a breath, sooner or later will come forth that infinite power of light, as it came forth with this good brother that day when my ascension took place. That power of the release of the light, that as he has often said to you, knows no resistance nor interference, everything of the human creation dissolves and disappears. Dear people, you, in your call to the mighty IAM presence and in your call to release the power from the presence, which is self-luminous intelligent substance, which is life, that sweeps in, through and out into your world and harmonizes. By this harmony, the power reaches out its hand, as it were, from your presence to the person, place and conditions, and solves and does the things which are required for your happiness and your victory. That is what I want you to understand tonight, beloved ones, that all the world might read those words in that book, Unveiled Mysteries, and feel the glory and the power which is there for their freedom. Every W-O-R-D-T-H-E-R-E is T-R-U-E, and these poor imbeciles, a few of them in America, who have tried to show discrepancies in those books, why, they are not fit to be called human beings, because they are spreading nothing but destruction and trying to draw people away from this light. They should be ashamed to be called human beings, and I say that because I mean every word. Those unfortunate creatures, what do you suppose will be their penalty in trying to draw people from this light that every human being on earth must seek and find some day, not only because it is the source of their life, but because the great cosmic light is compelling it today. People had better awaken and at least stop criticizing and condemning this work and the messengers if they want to survive because I tell you, dear people, they are facing the great law, the greatest in the universe, the law of their own God presence. I trust that before many months have passed, the 
ever-increasing cosmic light in the mental and feeling world of mankind will draw such numbers into this, that their mighty decrees for the rest of mankind will do its quick and perfect work in the mental and feeling world of mankind. As you are sitting here tonight, beloved ones, you are listening to my words, but dear people, in the mental and feeling world is the P-O-W-E-R of Act I-O-N that is important. You may believe my words, I trust you do, but that is only the smallest part of it. The vibratory action created by those words and that which is released, aside from those words into the room, into your mental and feeling world, is the thing that is doing the great work for you, and that is why mankind will come to understand that their F-E-E-L-I-N-G is the important thing. Oh, you thought that what you have been taught was important, it is really not important in comparison with the intensity of the power with which your feeling acts. That is why Saint Germain should be blessed forever for bringing forth to the attention of mankind, the importance of mankind's feeling world, for there is where all creation takes place, where all generation of discord takes place. Then mankind comes to know it through the mental world. But I say to you, G-O-V-E-R and your feeling. Keep it harmonious, and the gates of heaven, the mighty I am presence, will open and flood you and your world with every good thing there is for the use of mankind. I wish I could speak those words into the feeling world of every human being in the world for action, and the messengers have so long stressed that to the people and the students. Mankind will one day find that it is the all I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T thing. Once their feeling is controlled and harmonious, the very gates of their own being will open wide, and from their treasure house will come the release of everything anyone requires for use in action, in the world of physical action. You, beloved ones, in the human octave today, are there because you placed yourselves there, just as I did. How unfortunate that we did not know where we were going. You know, in your homes you think it is a little easier to go downstairs than it is to go up. I think most of you feel that it takes a little less energy to go downstairs than it does to go up. Well, if you only knew it, it takes much less to go up than it does to go down, for when you go up you have the powers of infinite light at your assistance. When you go down, you have just human creation. You know it is quite an apropos illustration of mankind's activity. Mankind are in their present limitations, because they have gone downstairs. Now let us go up so much faster than we came down, we won't be able to keep track of it. That is what we have to do. When I found myself completely released from that body, which had really served me so well, then I saw it. I saw how remarkable that body of mine had served me, and when with one dynamic sweep, and mark you now, I'll let you rest a few moments on those words. That it might take hold in your feeling world before I come back to it to draw your attention to it again. Now remember, not only that which occurred with this messenger, but that which occurred with me when that gigantic release of energy swept through my mind and body and my feeling world, at seeing that crystal cup, it did release in one mighty sweep that purifying activity to my physical body. Do you see that? Now then, look at the difference. Mr. Rayborn went through several months of preparation for the ascension. In my experience, it came in one gigantic sweep. Dear blessed people, who of you here tonight, or of all the students in America today, who of you shall say that same thing may not be done for you within the hour? That is what I want you to feel, if you will. Do not limit yourselves to what the powers of your presence can do in, through and for you. I want you to feel definitely that your presence, even though the appearance world, still to some degree, holds your attention, still may that not interfere with what your presence might do for you at a given moment. Oh, I want you to feel that so much, if you will tonight. It will bring such release to you, dear people. Now, if you can believe what the messenger has recorded in Unveiled Mysteries, and the magic presentia and if you will believe my words as the one having experienced it, can any human being be so filled with their own human creations as to think that any person but myself, David Lloyd, who made the ascension, would attempt to, or be permitted to speak these words to you? Now dear people, we are not speaking to hear ourselves talk, but we are speaking for your blessing, freedom and benefit. If your human accumulation will not allow you to accept the truths which I give and voice in my own words, my own actual experience, then there would not be much help for you, for every word is my own experience and rejoicing at my victory. 
If you can allow to act in your feeling world those qualities which I am sending forth here tonight for action, you will know and feel and hold within your feeling world, within your grasp, that very feeling with which I gained that victory. Why do you suppose we come and talk to you? Dear ones, in this manner? To convey into your feeling world that true feeling of our own experience which will enable you to win the same victory, and for no other reason in the world. Why do you suppose that beloved Saint Germain permitted these magnificent dictations that have come forth? Because every one who dictates carries that true feeling with which they won the victory, into your feeling world for action. One day, when you know more about your feeling, and what it is to you or for you, then you will understand more fully what this means. Everything that finds expression in your outer world of experience must act through your feeling world in order to find expression and freedom of action out here for your physical use. Everything. You think you go to the store and buy a garment, materials, and all that. Oh, my dear people, is it possible you do not see that everything has come through your feeling and mental world before you ever found it there in the stores? Why do you go to a certain store for certain things when you did not intend to go there? The mighty intelligence acting through your feeling world impels you to certain persons, places, and conditions where you find the exact thing you require. Oh, dear ones, won't you pay attention to these various things, because they are acting all the time. You look upon them as just happening. Well, it did. Not just happen. It happened because a great intelligence was acting. That is what you should feel. And for every little thing that occurs in your life, of any prompting, you should give praise and gratitude right then from the depths of your being, for the smallest one will come to be the greatest of all achievement, if you will do that. It is because mankind has ignored so long the constant promptings from every direction. Look on your life stream, dear people, and see the times of your protection and your blessing and your assistance. There are blessed ones in this room that only a few days ago would have been out of their bodies, if their attention had not been on the ascended masters at the moment. That is why, beloved ones, mankind is constantly receiving the blessings and protection. Now the IAM students are coming to understand something about it, but only yet a small part, even with the most earnest ones, because every hour of the day the greatest power and intelligence of your presence is acting through you, or trying to. That is why I say to you tonight, beloved ones, do not weary at your application. Go on and on and on making it with firm determination, and then, one day, you will begin to see the outpicturing of it so strong and powerful, that you will be sure that you have touched the source of all life, your own, God presence, as is shown you here on the chart. My gratitude is so great that Saint Germain brought forth this chart, for I know what it means for mankind to have an eye picture, and this is quite different from looking at anything else as created in the picture form. This chart represents to you, dear people, the great reality of life. That is why the messenger has repeated so many times, no human being can look upon that chart and ever forget it, for the very reason, that it is your reality, and anchored in your own physical heart is that light, the all-knowing, presence of God. Once mankind understand that they have a higher mental body which the, presence, their individualized, God presence has provided to govern the release of the energy at the call of the human form, think of it, every means possible, or required, has been provided for mankind. Even all through their centuries of mistakes. That is why today this which is being brought to your attention is the eternal freedom of all mankind, and you will one day see that in its fullness. But just now, if individual students or otherwise will make the application, the results will follow as the sunrise follows the night. You will be interested in this. We have been watching the effect upon individuals of the broadcasts alone, and we have seen any number of people, some of the younger people, in a half joke say, well, very well, if. That is what can be done, then let's try it out. We always watch the opportunity to answer those calls to give them the encouragement and strength. Today, every means is being used to get the attention of mankind to this presence for it is the most important thing in heaven or earth today, and we utilize that at every opportunity. Only yesterday in New York a gentleman who heard one of the classes, one lecture of the class, and heard all the broadcasts that were there, said to himself, now, I think it is time I tried this out, as a matter of very much importance to him was confronting him. So he went by himself, and in a very cautious manner finally raised his arms to the presence, and said, mighty I am presence. 
Take command of this situation. Perform your mighty miracle in it. Then he said, Bring perfection out of it. That was the thing that saved the day for him, when he said, Bring perfection out of it, then he gave the release that was necessary. The following day his call was answered, to his utter amazement. Well, he will remain anchored. There are many people today whom we are watching that are having similar effects. This is the reason, dear ones, and I want you in Florida here, to feel the full import of this, for I do not feel that you quite do yet. Your decrees which you are issuing, blessed. Ones, with that great earnestness and intense feeling, are the most important thing in the activity of your life today. You do not see its action, but these mighty decrees go forth, amplified by the great host of ascended masters and the legions of light in the mental and feeling world, doing a perfect service that you could not in the human imagine. It is a far-reaching power. That is why I say, rejoice in your ability to issue these decrees, to be a part of them, for there is not anything so important. People who do not understand, sometimes think, well, that sounds or looks foolish, but dear people, let me tell you there is not anything so important as the meetings today where you gather in numbers and issue these decrees which must bring your own individual assistance as well. If, for instance, in your groups here in Florida, if one in your midst was needing assistance and every student would issue the decree for that assistance to their presence, what do you think would be done? My dear people, a service indescribable would be rendered immediately. Instead of criticizing or condemning someone for having made a mistake, if you would all join in issuing a decree with happiness and kindly feeling to that individual, for whatever was the requirement. Why, do you not see how magnificent it would be? With that you would feel a joy, happiness and goodwill. Oh, that is so necessary for your own success and progress. Oh, do you not see, blessed ones, that without that kindly feeling, that love and blessing poured out, you constantly shut the door in your own face to the very things you are calling for. Then you, with that full release and outpouring of blessings and forgiveness of all human mistakes, then you have opened wide your door for the outpouring of your presence, because there is no requalified discordant activity there to keep qualifying this released energy as it goes out. For that is the only reason you have not perfection today, because mankind is constantly qualifying this energy as it goes forth, clothing it, as it were, with their own feeling of discord. Whatever the cause is, does not matter. If it is discordant or destructive, then you are compelled to experience that as it returns to you, and these days it does not get far away. It soon comes back to look you right in the eye and say, here I am. You created me, now what are we going to do about it? Oh, I tell you, dear ones, faster and faster is coming that return of all destructive or vicious thoughts and feelings that are sent out. They come right back and say, here I am. So dear ones, do not misunderstand me, I do not mean the great I am, but that creation comes back there and says, you are my creator, what are we going to do about it? Then is the time that something must be done about it, and the quickest thing in the world is to say, very well, I call on the law of forgiveness. Mighty I am presence. Use the violet consuming flame, dissolve cause and effect of that. Dear ones, do you for a moment consider what it means when you, with earnest intensity, call on the law of forgiveness for all mistakes, your own included? It is one of the most magnificent things, as we watch from the inner standpoint, going forth from mankind, because that is the release of the feeling of mankind. Once you can release your feeling into the full hands of the presence, then you will find your victory rapidly approaching. But as long as mankind hold their own feelings right here, then the presence is compelled to wait until they release everything into the hands of their presence. Then the help can be given, then the release can come. Tonight, dear ones, it is so beautiful, so wonderful, all that has taken place within your feeling worlds tonight. R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R, -E -E your feeling W-O-R-L-D is your P-O-W-E-R-H-O-U-S-E. And although your intellect might question, your feeling is accepting in the fullness of its joy and gratitude, and that is the thing that counts. Once your feeling accepts a thing, it will come into action in your life and world. Even your thought will not prevent your feeling accepting and acting, sometimes it retards its outpicturing, but it cannot prevent the acceptance in the feelings of that which the heart knows to be true. So today, 
and as you enter into this class, beginning on Friday, dear ones, will you not begin now to call your mighty I am presence into action to make your feeling world become so still, so at peace, and your comprehension. Remember your comprehension is in your higher mental body. It is your discriminating selective intelligence, and when you call for that comprehension to be clear, alert and active, then you will get the great blessing out of this class, and a greater one than you could possibly imagine. For this is the reality of life, your life, beloved ones, and will bring into action in your outer world of activity, the fullness of that power of life which knows its dominion through the human form, but must have your call, your willingness and harmony of your feelings. To let that presence of life transmute, transform all that has been in your world, and bring it into its perfection. Observe the chart a moment, and see that stream of life and energy coming in there and anchoring within your physical heart. That stream of life contains all intelligence, all power, all substance, all life. But when that comes into your body and goes out into your world of action, it is compelled to be clothed with whatever feeling is in your feeling world. If that feeling is ugly, unkind, destructive, then that must carry that destructive quality into your world. Because the law of you, as a free being compels that light to take on that quality. You cannot penetrate that light with the quality, but you do clothe it with that which is in your feeling. That carries out into your world of action, and you must meet whatever was in your feeling as that comes forth. That is why once the feeling is held harmonious long enough, then that requalification will discontinue. That great and mighty energy from your presence will flow forth and produce its perfecting activity in your world of action, and do it with the speed of lightning, as you come to understand and call it forth, and qualify it by your conscious application with that great speed of accomplishment. That is what is needed today. Mankind has the opportunity. You have the understanding of the law. If you will not apply it, then you can but blame yourself, or see yourself as the only cause of your continued limitations. Now, it is quite true that not all the students today have had the full results of their application. Only recently are they beginning to understand the imperative need of their feeling following their attention. If you have two activities divided, you cannot have the full results, but once your feeling will follow your attention, you will have certain results every time. Not once will you ever fail to have the answer to your call. That is the only reason you have not. So tonight, beloved ones, in the full glory of that life into which I have entered, my own ascended presence, remember, as the messenger has described to you, that current of energy that swept through my body when I saw the crystal cup, did the purifying service and activity required. Then that purified body ascended into the higher mental body where the transformation took place. All human qualities disappeared, and then, as that great ray of light and energy from my own God presence, as is shown there on the chart, descended, my own purified physical body was absorbed into the higher mental body, and entered into the great electronic presence. Then I became the ascended being I am today, free, forever free from the wheel of birth and rebirth, free forever from all human limitations. Yet today, I can make my body as tangible and visible in the physical octave as my body was before the ascension. Now do you suppose, dear ones, for one second, that all of the unbelief of mankind could ever alter that great and mighty truth, just because some in the western world say that could not be? Do you suppose that that alters the truth, when I am telling you right here from my own experience, that I am the one that accomplished the victory, then think all human beings on earth could change that truth for one second? Awaken, O mankind, and let the experience of we, who with so great a love pour forth our experience to mankind, awaken and feel the full power of the quality we pour forth into the feeling world, that they too may have that same glory and victory and freedom. That is why I come to you tonight, beloved ones who have stood so staunch in the light. I want you to, if you will, feel with me my victory, your victory in the light. I thank you. February 15, 1938 Kansas C.I.T.Y., Missouri. My rejoicing is very great, beloved students of Kansas City and elsewhere, perhaps I am a little optimistic, but in seeing the need, the requirement of the students since my ascension or my return and association in this work, beloved ones, my rejoicing knows no bounds. Of course, don't say this to beloved Saint Germain, but I have not had many opportunities to talk to you, nevertheless. I will take advantage of this one and if I get enthusiastic don't mind it. 
for knowing as I do the joy of that freedom from everything that surrounded and held and bound me through those many long years, and up to the time that with my father in India, when he was shot, I had no thought of these great ideals. Of the great possibilities that were before mankind, now notice, before mankind, right here in their physical embodiments. Think of it, my dear people, think. Only so few years ago I stood here in a limited body as yours is today, now I am free as the birds, I can go anywhere in the universe I choose, and no one to say, you stay here. Is it not wonderful? To think that mankind today, living in bodies of limitations, with the, prayers, ends of God, feeding life into their bodies, could have forgotten that source as we all did. Will you ever find words or feelings within your being, to thank Saint Germain for this magnificent understanding and explanation of the, mighty I am presence? He is the only being on E-A-R-T-H-T-H-A-T has ever B-R-O-U-G-H-T-I-T-F-O-R-T-H, and no one has ever touched the magnificent clear definite powerful understanding of this mighty God presence, the, M-I-G-H-T-Y-I-A-M, which he has brought forth. The words, I am, have been through all languages that have been throughout the ages, but in the past many thousands of years, the words have not had anything but the bare repetition. Saint Germain thought enough of this, great presence of all life, to dictate thirty-two discourses or more, in fact, they are all concerning the, I am, but those especially are in explanation of it, where it is, what it is, what it meant, and what it will do for you. He has given the clearness of the understanding the clearness of the application and explanation of the law of what takes place when you give certain activity in your application, in the calling forth of this power. It does not matter, one of you here in this audience, so anchored in your presence, that you would refuse acceptance of anything of human creation in your world, can stand in the midst of a seething vortex and attain your freedom. This is what we want you to realize and feel within your feeling world, that there is no person, place, condition or any number of people that can prevent your advancement in the light, but yourself. It is impossible. To do this, one must be firm enough to shut out all human discord, close your world to every discordant voice, and then in the acknowledgement, and standing within the power and light of your presence, feel the fullness of it, the commanding presence of you and your world. That is how mankind has come to know, that in all the seething vortex of limitations, discordant conditions of mankind, Still it cannot affect the individual who will determine that it shall not do so. That is how everyone that ever has attained their freedom has come to it. You will remember how often the messengers have urged the people to refuse acceptance of everything less than the perfection of the presence, the mightiest thing you can do, and yet it is within the province of everyone to refuse acceptance any longer of the limitations of the human world. The Physical Optive the day when you find that you can do that, what magnificent activities will take place within you and your feeling world. I, like you, thought at intervals I was very happy. Oh, my dear ones, I didn't know what happiness meant, and pardon me if I say it, I am sure you don't either. How can you, beloved ones, until you have once tasted and felt that freedom? How could you possibly? The human intellect cannot comprehend it and we don't expect one to comprehend the fullness of that perfection which is your joy and your power, only when you have reached that attainment, and in the gaining of that goal, for on the pathway of light, how great today is the blessing of mankind. Let us take something so practical tonight, that the human feeling accepts it with the power of its full strength of its being, and that is, you, the physical body here, is the projection of light. Remember that the light pattern of this flesh structure of every one of these bodies sitting here, is the power of that, presence, upon which the atomic structure, called flesh, is held in connection and uniformity of action. What do you think holds your flesh together? Take your arm, take your hand. What do you think holds that flesh together? That power of light, which is the light pattern of these human forms. In technical terminology, you would call it the force field, the electrical repulsion and retraction and all that kind of thing. I say to you in the simplest manner possible, that which holds your flesh in form, is that light pattern in your body. For in every cell of your body is the light, connecting all the light and power from your presence, and at the base of your brain is the distributing point which feeds that light into every atom of the body. Therefore, 
Dear people, let us get such a practical hold on this tonight, that you take hold of this feeling and presence of light and let it charge, charge, charge your being with its mighty presence and power. Blessed people, you do not need to remain in a single limitation longer, knowing as we do, the exact operation. Having gone through the identical thing that you are doing, then why cannot we help you? Why can we not advise you and give you our experience that will bring you to the victory in your feelings, which is your powerhouse of light? Then you might say to me, if your feeling is the powerhouse of light, how is it that it becomes discordant? That hasn't anything to do with the light. That discord is your power of qualification, because if it were not for your power of qualification that light from your presence would produce purity, harmony and perfection in every cell of your body, and would have always produced a perfect body. But your qualification of discord acting upon that, clothes that light with the quality of your feeling of discord, and compels it to carry that limitation and discord out into your world and into the flesh of your body, which has made the so-called density of the flesh form today. Yet look, beloved ones, you who think of your body as dense today, it is not nearly so dense as you think, for you can hold your hand before the light and see the light through the flesh, anyone can. Then if that flesh was so dense as it seems to be, how could you see the light through it? Then let us go one step further, you can put a strong light in front and back of you and see through your body. Your x-ray shows the action of the organs, and in San Diego is a machine which you can look in the mirror before you and see the activity of the organs within your own body, your own heart, its size, and action. Is the body so dense then? Look, beloved ones, see again the power of qualification of the individual. We decree a thing through the feeling, even without a spoken word, and then that thing acts. Precious people, if you could just sweep your hand like that, and sweep out of your feeling world every thought that registers there, all human quality, in 24 hours your body would take on the perfection of this light from your presence. Few could do that in one sweep, but who of you shall say to M.E. tonight how many are sitting in this room who might not do it? That is the point. If you will reverse all your power of qualification and say T-O your P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E colon M-I-G-H-T-Y-I-M-P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E I-A-C-C-E-P-T your F-U-L-L-P-E-R-F-E-C-T-I-O-N in M-Y-M-I-N-D body M-Y-W-O-R-L-D-O-F-A-T-I-O-N-T-H-E-R-E-F-O-R-E-C-H-A-R-G-E-I-T-W-I-T-H your M-I-G-H-T-Y-P-E-R-F-E-T-I-O-N, your P-U-R-I-T-Y-A-N-D your C-O-N-S-U-M-I-N-G-P-O-W-E-R of A-C-T-I-O-N-T-H-A-T dissolves A-N, D-C-O-N-S-U-M-E-S every D-I-S-C-O-R-D-A-N-T-T-H-I-N-G-T-H-A-T has B-E-E-N-D, R-A-W-N-A-B-O-U-T me. With the full power of that feeling there is not one single thing that you could not do in transforming your body, your affairs, and the activity of your affairs in the world, into the perfection which that light is and carries forth. You see, beloved ones, because the human has become so accustomed to accepting the appearance world almost involuntarily, the individual does it without thinking anything about it. There is where the necessity of standing guard over your feeling world is. Now, how do you do that? Not by your human feeling, precious ones, but by calling your presence to stand guard through your feeling, then you have the power set into action that will do it. And when you, in the outer world, are off guard, still, through your higher mental body, will that guard stand and hold its dominion once you have charged it with, notice, feeling to take action and command. Do you not see that here above you, between you and your electronic body, is your higher mental body, which is the discriminating, selective intelligence? it answers your every call. And do you think if you ask it to stand guard, it would ever, for one mo? Meant, day or night, be off guard? It does not require sleep and rest, but it is all-powerful, a body of blazing light. Tonight is one of those times when I long to release your true inner vision and let you behold your higher mental bodies, why dear ones, a form so magnificent, so powerful, so beautiful. Oh, think that the human is so far from expressing that beauty and perfection that is there. In the giver of all life, which but for our re-qualification, we would have a body so beautiful and perfect as one's fondest dream could scarcely imagine. 
Yet we, the individual, yourself and myself, before the achievement, alone were responsible for our appearance, for our condition, for our world, because there is no other power, no other authority in all the world but you in your world. Think of it, beloved ones, you think of the physical world as a great expanse of distance, do you not? Yet the only place that you can live is in your own feeling world. You may travel the earth over, but the only place that you live is within your own feeling world. Oh, think of it, dear hearts, that is from as far as your hands extend, around like that, to perhaps fifty or more feet, according to the earnestness, to the reaching out to the light, does that radiance extend, I mean in its fullness. You today, who have come to know this, great presence of all life, can with harmony maintained. In your feelings, call its mighty perfection into action without any limit. We know you can do it. We know thousands of the students are doing it, and we know from your own achievement here in this city, that every one of you can do it. Therefore, beloved ones, won't you let me plead with you to put away forever all concern or thought or feeling concerning another individual or what they do? You cannot help what someone else does, except to call their presence into action to produce its perfection there, and that is all you should be concerned with, no other person's world or any place or condition. If you do, you will keep requalifying discord in your world by feeling someone else has made a mistake, and you are making a greater mistake by taking notice of it. Do you notice that, dear ones, we say, oh, so and so made a mistake, so and so is not doing the right thing, then what are we doing? We are seeing that in the other person. We are opening our own feeling world to the identical condition, building it by our own added force. You see? Therefore, beloved ones, until mankind sees and takes command, has self-control, and has no opinion about another person, place or condition, they will go on in their limitations and we cannot prevent it. But I want you to remember through the achievement here, I want you to know how magnificent is the opportunity now before you. Remember on the seventh day of the Shrine class. The cosmic light came to a certain point of intensity in America, where the free will of vicious individuals could be set aside. And that has made it possible for work to be done in America and the world, never known in the history of the earth. Now we see and know that it is not a matter of human opinions, but we know and see the action of the law which is acting and producing this result. Therefore, if you will give attention to this mighty fact, this mighty truth, and let its power of action give you the assistance that you require, the fullness of that power which is your presence, will find its action through your world. Therefore, in bringing about the preparation for this coming class, continuing in the great achievement thus far, if you will enter into that class with the complete forgetfulness of persons, places or conditions, I assure you, that you will come out of that class a free being. For the powers are gathering with tremendous energy for this class, and in all due respect to San Francisco, we hope to transcend the activity there. Now you blessed folks of Kansas City, please do not get puffed up over that, because the next class may transcend yours. There is a mighty reason for this, beloved ones. Do you not see, that never in the history of the world has such assistance been given mankind? With all that I might say to you tonight, still you only comprehend a small part of what is actually taking place from the octave of light for the blessing and perfection of every one of you who is earnest and sincere, I could not in words convey to you all the magnificent activity which is taking place in the mental and feeling world of mankind. Will you feel with me for a few moments your responsibility, not too much, but just enough? Remember, there is one substance, there is one intelligence, one activity. The mental world of all mankind is one. Now, if you have not contemplated this, it may sound startling to you, but please follow me through. The mental world of all mankind is one, separate from the feeling world of mankind. The mental activity of the world is here, the feeling world is here. Just as these are definite and separate, so is the mental and feeling world of mankind separate, like two distinct octaves. Now then, if mankind is discordant or allows discord, disturbance, criticism, condemnation, hatred, anger or any of those qualities to register in their feeling world, it is not only your immediate feeling of that. But you are opening yourselves to the entire octave of the creation of mankind of the discord that is there. It is the law of life. You enter into that creation of all mankind in that particular feeling. If it is criticism, if you maintain it to a certain degree, you 
will enter into the entire criticism of mankind. If it is hatred, and maintained for a certain period, you will enter into all that, or in other words, open yourself to the inflow of all that. That is why tragedies suddenly occur, because mankind unknowingly do this, accumulation floods in on them and they cannot control it, and they are impelled shall I say, rather than compelled, to act under its direction. Therefore, that becomes ungoverned force. And what is force, as you know it in the outer world today? Ungoverned energy. Your scientific world looks upon it slightly different. But I say to you, so far as your human activity is concerned, force is ungoverned feeling, ungoverned energy. Therefore, when you know that the fullness of that power governed, will go to an objective in the power, purity and perfection of your presence and accomplish anything unto which it is directed, then you will know that no longer are you subject to circumstances or conditions. Follow me again, will you please? When you call this power of the presence forth into action, it is the full power and energy of the universe. Now that energy will act through your human form, according to the feeling within your feeling world. It has to do it, it is the law of life. You cannot change it, except through your feeling. Now then, if you want perfection, your feeling must contain perfection, which is harmony. Then that great power called forth will flow untouched by your human qualification and produce perfection in your world and abundance of every good thing. Let us follow this point with a very startling thing to the average individual. Now, don't let this scare you in your application. When you begin calling this power and energy of your presence forth into action, you must know, and I am sure there is not any of you that has not experienced it to some degree, a greater power and charge of that energy flows forth. Now then, as you continue to call this mighty power of your presence, forth and begin to gain a momentum of that great and mighty energy flowing in and through your body, and then, you let rush in upon you, discord, criticism, condemnation or any of those things. You charge that greater volume of energy with that same quality, and that power of destruction in your world is ten times or twenty times greater than it was before. Now you are responsible for that. You know the law. You know that if you have discord in your feeling, it affects and charges your world with that quality, whatever it is. Now then, when you call forth this greater power, knowing very well that it would increase that discord, if you continue to allow the discord to govern it, then individuals wonder why they do not have results from their application. Because they have allowed that greater energy they call forth to be charged with discord in the feelings, and of course, you cannot have results. Now beloved ones, I am endeavouring to give this from my actual knowledge with such a power of love and blessing to you, that you will grasp it, and it means every one of you dear hearts, every one of you, for the law acts the same through every human being. Therefore, beloved ones, determine to let us help you, and with that great powerful determination, never let any kind of discord register in your feeling again, for any provocation or cause whatever. And then see how quickly this great power called forth from your presence will begin to produce its perfection in you and your world, in your physical body, in the greater health, strength, power, confidence and then out into your world. And it being the great presence of all life, will draw to itself all that great perfection which it is. It cannot draw anything else. When life comes forth in its great purity and perfection, it cannot draw anything else to you but just what it is. Therefore, your world, your activity, will be charged and filled with that perfection which all life contains, and O oh beloved ones, then how easily and quickly comes that joy and freedom which is boundless beyond all words to describe. Don't misunderstand me, I am not referring to any personalities, I am referring to the law of life that governs every human being on earth and everywhere else. If you do not understand that law of life and give obedience to it, and it is the only thing in the world that mankind is asked to give obedience to, it is the law of their own life, which demands harmony in the feeling world of the human octave, that its power may flow forth untouched, unadulterated by the human qualities which clothe it and carry it forth into the activity and the world of the individual. That is why, precious ones, we plead with you, with so great a love. Don't let a person, place or condition cause you to feel irritation or disturbance in your feelings for any reason whatsoever. We see and know the results that come to those who are able to shut that off. And you are, every one of you, precious hearts, able to do it. I expect it from every one of you.
You have the strength, courage and power to refuse now, this hour, any further acceptance of discord in your world, and you stand the victory of light over your mind, body and activity, and let the power of your presence flow forth like a mighty avalanche into your world and cause its perfect glory and activity to draw to you every good thing that exists in the world. That is why I want you to feel that with all the power of your being, your divine being, in the understanding of your presence. You are not a human being any longer. One who will give attention to their presence, and has that understanding, becomes a divine being, as quick as they feel the need or necessity of shutting out of their world all discord. That is why, beloved ones, we long so much to, with our assistance, help you quickly to that freedom which every one of your precious hearts knows is real. Oh, we are not concerned with what your intellect does, but we are concerned with the power of what is acting within your heart. Your intellect, once it is understood, is but the accretion of the outer world, and this heart is the anchorage of the light of eternity, and the power of your presence acting in the human form. Then see the vast difference between the intellect and the heart. T-H-E-H-E-A-R-T is T-H-E-K-N-O-W-E-R-O-F-T-H-E universe and N-E-V-E-R. N-E-V-E-R makes a mistake, but the intellect that has gathered its accumulation from the appearance world is not founded upon reality, is not founded upon truth, because it is, but human opinions. That is why the messengers in the beginning found such opposition when they referred to this point. The intellect is not the knower. It becomes very wise in some things, so far as outer mechanical activity and things are required. But look now, this is not. Speaking unkindly of the great achievement of today in the outer mechanical world of mankind, but when mankind allows the attention to remain in the appearance world or the world of activity of mankind, they have forgotten their source. And sooner or later they will find that the energy has ceased to supply them. That is the point that every human being reaches. That is the reason for so-called death, because mankind has been so imbued with the attention upon the appearance world, that they have forgotten the source of all energy, and therefore, it ceases to act within the human form. That is why, beloved ones, there are innumerable ways by which you waste your energy, through all these qualities of discord, gossip, condemnation, anger, hatred, sex and all of these qualities, which are less than the perfection of your presence, and a waste of your energy. Think of it, every one of you have experienced it. I did. I used to get very angry, then wondered what was the matter with me afterwards, but dear ones, you can, in 10 minutes of intense anger, release enough energy to have lasted you for 30 days. That is the actual fact from the definite statistics which we have. You think that you keep records of all your activities out here. Well, so do we, and we don't mind it, but we are keeping your records too, every one of. You. Do you think we are intruding? I am sorry if you think so, because we shall have to continue. Oh, dear ones, do you know what it means to love one's freedom? Do you know what is flowing through my being now to you, my love for your freedom, my determination that is unyielding in the power of that light that beats your heart, that your freedom shall be yours and quickly? That is the power that is flowing through my being to each one of you, and how? By a direct ray of light to you, each one of you, and that is my loving service which I offer to you. And you will pardon me, if I have not asked your permission for it, but yet I offer it. Oh, dear ones, the day that you stand free as I did, will you know what I mean tonight? Can you imagine with me, for just a few minutes, my love for this good messenger? You probably think you love him and beloved Lotus, but I want to tell you, my love for him surpasses anything that I have yet conceived because he gave me my freedom. Can you wonder that I love to move heaven and earth, that the whole pathway before him and Lotus remain a joyous, happy, magnificent manifestation of life, that they may serve in this marvelous manner, and be the release of all blessed mankind who care to listen? I presume Mr. Ballard will take me to task for this, but I cannot refrain from saying it, beloved ones. If you saw as I do, this service that they have rendered thus far to mankind, then really, would your love release? You think it is now, but it is only a small part of what would release then, when you saw truly the magnificent service which is being rendered. No matter what mankind does or says, their love pours forth like a mighty river, for they have come to know that it is the only means of reaching and blessing mankind. 
for remember, in all the universe anywhere, there is no barrier to the presence and power of divine love. Either in the human octave or beyond, there is no barrier to the power of divine love. Beloved ones, that is why the attitude of the individual, in gratitude to the outpouring of love and blessings to mankind, produces such magnificent results. Let me assure you of this one point. The messengers have tried it out individually, to find the action of the law upon mankind, and at times, when human calls were pressing severely, shall we say, and they began to discuss the human qualities, because of the need for the understanding of the students, and they would spend one evening on the discussion of the human qualities, they would see and feel the vibratory action of the room lower, as long as they continued to hold the attention of mankind in the class upon the human qualities. Then in the next class, they would reverse it and hold the attention upon the magnificent powers of the presence, and the vibratory action would lift in the room, just as steadily and surely as you raise your hand. That is the true activity of the law. W H E R E U R A T T E N T I O N is T H E R E U R W H A T I T is upon you become. Never was a truer statement in all the vocabulary of mankind made than that. T H E R E F O R E T H E P O W E R O F U R A T T E N T I O N is P A R A M O U N T in your W O R L D. Notice, many have found difficulty in governing their feelings. Why? Because they would not change their attention from one point to the other. You have a friend, oh excuse me, you have a person whom you dislike, and one you love very much. I ask you at any time to test this out. Put your attention upon the one you think has injured you or that irritates you, and notice the feeling. Then put it upon the one you love very dearly, and see the delightful, quite magnificent expansion that you feel. Oh, do you not see, beloved ones, how easy it is to determine these things that are acting? Do you not see there is no excuse in the world for one understanding this presence to remain in limitation? Oh, it just cannot be done. I won't let it be done. You blessed. People, whom we love so much, who are standing for the light, if you will let us, we won't let you stay in those limitations. Isn't that a fair proposition? but we cannot take you by the hair and say, you come out of there now. That isn't permissible. But by the power of our love and raising of your vibratory action by our outpouring of love to you, we can help you in a manner that reason doesn't describe. The power of the feeling and the outpouring of gratitude and blessing is beyond human appearance in its activity. That is why I make no attempt to describe that to you, except you feel it. Therefore, in your activity remember always, T H A T U A L O N E R T H E D E C R E E R of your W O R L D. You have to be. This physical body is given into your custody. What are you going to do with the energy that flows through it? That is your decision. Every one of you precious ones, that is where you come in, otherwise, there would be no imperfection in the world today. U mu s t choose h o w t h i s e n e r g y is g o i n g t o act t h a t passes t h r o u g h your m i n d body a n d f e e l i n g w o r l d. It is so easy to determine once you know the only thing that stands between you and the perfection which we are today is your feeling. Does not that sound simple? Does it sound unimportant to think that all that stands be? Between you in your limitations today and the perfection which we experience, is your feeling. Nothing else. Now you might say to me, what about our thought? Oh, blessed ones. O N C E U cont R O L U F E E L I N G U T H O U G H T W I L L B O B E D I E N T forever, because your feeling acts first. That is why in the past, mankind have been taught that they should control their thought, but they had no power to do it, because their feeling was the powerhouse and would overrule the thought every time. That is where the great blessing is to mankind today in this magnificent understanding which Saint Germain has brought forth, because it has taken you to your powerhouse, the place where conditions were governing your world of which you did not dream. Now today, having come to know that you can say to your presence, acting through your higher mental body, S-T-O-P-T-H-I-S nonsense F-O-R-E-V-E Rinmi world. 
stopped H-I-S-H-U-M-A-N action. R-E-M-O-V-E-T-H-E-S-E-H-U-M-A-N-Q-U-A-L-I-T-I-E-S, A-N-D-C-T-H-A-T-T-H-E-Y never A-C-T again. Then keep it up until you find that every human quality ceases to act. T-H-E messengers have done it they are no different than you. You might say, well, the messengers have had the direct presence, the direct training of Saint Germain and the Ascended Masters. Why wouldn't they have more power than we? That is. Not the case, I beg your pardon. Shall I explain to you why? You see, when the messengers were here before, this particular activity had not yet begun, and that is the reason why I am explaining it to you tonight, so you may have the blessing and benefit of it during the class. Since the messengers came east the other time and began the class in Boston, from that time forth the great divine director has gathered a radiance and power of activity similar to that in the cave of light in India, where he had done his tremendous work, and where the service was rendered Bob, Rex. Nada and Pearl. Now then, can you, will you try to comprehend for a few moments how that, in the presence and power of a great being like the great divine director, who has infinite power to gather the forces of life, holds them in a definite action. Take yourselves for illustration, you who are here in the room, shall I say to you, describe to you what is being done. While I am talking to you, holding your attention, the great divine director has gathered you within this globe of light, whose radiance is very similar to the cave of light in India, except less powerful, according to that which you can assimilate. Blessed ones, it is the greatest service that can be rendered mankind on the face of this earth, that which he is doing tonight for you and will tomorrow night. Now then, beloved ones, in that radiance is the charged force called consciousness of the ascended masters, which is the power acting within that light, to cleanse, purify, and now watch, for everyone that it is possible, every part possible of their human creation is being dissolved and consumed. Now to what extent that will occur during the evening, I shall not say at this time, but that is one of the activities. Another is, that in that dissolving, consuming process is the release of individuals from time and space. Now this activity will go on throughout this class with its ever-increasing intensifying activity. You have probably heard of the service rendered in the San Francisco class. If not, you will. That is real, dear people, very very real, because the energy, the activity, the substance from the octave of light is that which is real. The human octave is not real, because it is constantly changing. You see it is not. Anyone, even without the understanding, can see how that is absolutely true. The human about you is constantly under change every moment, but this great light which he has enfolded you in tonight is changeless, perfect forever, containing within it the purity, power, and perfection. Not only just of the principle of life, now notice, this is not only with just the principle of life but it is charged with the power and activity of the ascended masters who know what every single one of your requirements is. That is how they are able to render this service, beloved people, through this magnificent radiation gathered in this class. Therefore tonight, if you walked with me into the cave of light in India where Bob, Rex, Nada and Pearl received their freedom, it would be but an intensified activity of this which is your experience tonight. If once you realize that the Ascendec Masters, all wise, all powerful, can gather from, zero one draw, for instance, now that you may possibly more clearly understand this, this power which the great divine director has drawn and gathered you into, tonight, is drawn from the Cave of Light in India. Does that seem strange or unreal to you? I do not see why it should. To the great beings of all power there is no time or space. They have transcended that, therefore, that which they draw to them is present, they but fix their attention upon it, upon the cave of light in India, and its powers and activity are present here. Do you not see the vastness of it and yet the simplicity, yet its majestic power? That is why unless these great laws of life are put in the simplicity of understanding to mankind, they struggle and struggle and struggle to understand without results. That is why the great victory in issuing that decree for the earth, made it a decree, made it a commanding law that these books and this information go forth and be held in the simple purity and power by which mankind would have results. Now I say to you tonight, beloved ones, and I plead with you so earnestly, do not ever, for one second, give way to the thought or feeling that you cannot make your application as strong as anybody else, 
or that you are not having results from your application. Don't let that human feeling which qualifies the energy, longer act in your world. When you make your application, stand by it and keep right on, then all of a sudden you will see go down before you. Every human quality that obstructed the way, for that is all within your feeling world, it cannot be anywhere else to affect you. Therefore, those who have come to know this great presence are the victory of light. Therefore, you who are staunch, firm, honest and sincere to the light, your presence, your life, are rendering a service, beloved ones, which will stand in the eternal record of life. You have heard the messenger say that in the royal Titan is this great audience chamber, where the records of every civilization are written on thin sheets of gold, the Akashic records of eternal light of the service of every sincere, IAM, student in America and the world. That is an eternal record, and that service is unparalleled by anything. Any of mankind can do in this world. There is not one service that amounts to but a fragment of what this service does, that the great ones have asked you to render, in your issuing of your mighty decrees for the protection of America and mankind. That is why, beloved ones, if you have ever in this life at least, or any other, wished to render a service, never was so great an opportunity, never was so great a release, from that service rendered as now, and the very little required in holding the balance between light and darkness. Won't you join me in the release of all the feeling of your being that that be finished here? Wouldn't that be a record for Kansas City? Dear ones, I am speaking straight into your hearts, and I am with you. You know I was an Englishman, but I am a full-fledged American now. Still I am English, because in the great presence of all life there is no nationality, but let me remind you, this glorious flag of your nation, beloved people, hear me, is more than a flag. That is why the messengers love it so tremendously, because it not only represents your America, but freedom to the whole world. Oh, beloved ones, all nations of the world shall one day kiss that flag in adoration for its service to mankind, for it represents the land of freedom, where the cup of light to the world had to come, because there was no other place left on earth for it to come. That is no fault of the earth, but it is the fault of mankind through their great accumulation of discord. Europe, bless her people. Bless our blessed England. Bless our blessed France. And all the nations of Europe and the Orient. It is not the nations that are to blame, but the people that are in them. One day, mankind will all come to know that no nation on earth is to blame for anything but the activity of its people, the feeling world of its people. Therefore, we say to you beloved ones, see H-E-R-I-S-H-T-H-I-S flag O-F America in your H-E-A-R-T-S as N-E-V-E-R-U-D-I-D-A-N-Y-T-H-I-N, G-L-S in T-H-E-W-O-R-L-D. Do you know what would happen, if all mankind was to suddenly understand what that blessed flag means? Every human being would wear a silk flag of the United States of America across his heart. That is how much your flag means to life, because life brought it forth. It is representative of the freedom of mankind. Think of it, if blessed Europe had listened to Saint Germain 400 years ago, Europe would have had the privilege of carrying the C-U-P-O-F-L-I-G-H-T for the future. Those nations would have become the United States of Europe, but the one whom Saint Germain depended upon most, failed him. That is why I say to you tonight, beloved people, you have seen it manifest before you everywhere. When the human self of an individual will not give obedience to life, not even the ascended masters can depend upon him. You see how imperative it is? Saint Germain has gathered a great family together, nearly 400,000 people. Are his family going to fail him now, when he has brought them to the gate, the open doorway of freedom? You are there at this point now. I say this to all the beloved, earnest, sincere students of America and the world, U-S-T-A-N-D-N-T-H-E-O-P-E-N doorway O-F-U-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-R-E-E-D-O-M. All T-H-A-T is necessario for T-H-E-K-R-A-G-E-N-D-S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H-T-O-S-T-E-P-T-O-S-T-E-P-T-O-S-T-E-P-T-O-S-T-E-P-T-O-S-T-E-P-T-O-
Oh, it is so vastly different from anything which has taken place in the outer world before. That was temporary achievement of all descriptions, but today, you in your application, in every step you gain today, are entering into eternal freedom forever, which will bring you into your eternal light body, the electronic body of your mighty presence. When you become the ascended being, master of all substance and conditions forever. In all the spheres of the universe, you become the master as the ascended ones are of all substance and energy and can produce at will anything they require. I must not keep you too late, but dear ones, can you imagine my joy, my boyish happiness when I found that I had entered into a state, a condition where I could produce at will anything in the world that I wished? Hold out my hand and there it was. Oh, beloved ones, oh, let me help you to remember the great being you once were and really still are today. Oh, just think of these human forms and then think of your higher mental body, a body of blazing light, beauty and perfection, which stands there waiting, waiting, waiting for a sufficient power of your attention, when it will release its perfection, its beauty and all its power into the physical octave for action, which will cleanse, purify and lift the purified physical body into that majestic presence, then into this presence of all light. Think of it. Is it not worth any effort that the human is required to make, any so-called sacrifice? Of course, there is no sacrifice really in your attention to the light, because you are gaining everything and just losing your limitations. Isn't it a wonderful thing to think that through the power of your attention is the reverse of all currents of energy? I can look at this stand, I can look at that light. I have but changed my attention there to observe the light. I. Look at the piano in which there is no light and I look there where the light is. You look away from your human limitations into the powers of the presence, which is all light, intelligence and power, and the presence floods your being and world with all that it is. That being light substance, all human limitations and darkness just dissolves and disappears before its radiance, no battle, no struggle. When that blessed one who came to me as a lad in India and said to me those brief simple words, as I thought then, my son, on a great mountain in North America you will find a man with a crystal cup, and when you have found that one, you will have found the one who will assist you to your ascension. I did not even know what the ascension was at that time, and yet those words stirred within me a feeling and understanding of something that took such hold of me, that it never relaxed for an instant. It held such command from within me somewhere, that I never lost it for a moment. That grew and grew and grew within me, and I thought many times, when I would contemplate that great mountain in America, and I thought for a moment, good heavens, how am I supposed to find a mountain like that? There are great mountain ranges in America, and yet I am supposed to go to that mountain and find this man? You know how the human will talk to you. Well, that kept up at quite long intervals for about three years, and one day when that started to revolve, and the human began to talk back to me, mark you, I did not understand these laws that you do today, but yet from within me, suddenly as that began to start again, something so calm, so firm and so positive, I heard it say as distinctly as if verbal words, stop that. I did not quite know what it meant, but it was like a thunderbolt when these words came forth, and beloved ones, not once again did my human ever offer a suggestion as to that. I say that to you because, somewhat like this good messenger when he silenced his human forever, I understand now a very similar thing occurred, the presence within me silenced that human, which was a very gratifying thing as I understand it today. Now that is what every blessed one of you will experience, as the messenger did on the street in Los Angeles. You too will experience that moment when you say to all human creation and all human qualities and activities, STOP forever. And then it will obey. Beloved people, you are no longer subject to these limitations and conditions, although you are its creator. You can turn on that this hour and say to that thing, stop. B S I L E N T forever, and it must be still. Then its powers of qualification will cease. Then the great light of the presence, called forth, will come forth and do its perfect work in your world of activity, for there will be no longer any obstruction, and the only obstruction that there can be is in your own feeling world, so far as your world is concerned. Won't you let me help you tonight in clinching within your feeling world that mighty conviction, that mighty truth, your mastery over yourself and your feeling world? 
say to that feeling at the least attempt at feeling any disturbance, stop. Silence. O B E D I E N C E T O T H E P R E S E N C E of all life. Then see how quickly, beloved ones, will come that stillness in which the power of the presence will flow forth in its purity and perfection, producing that very perfection in your world of action. So tonight, beloved ones, in the glory of that infinite light that is enfolding you, I speak to the higher mental body of each one. C H A R G E. Glorify every H U M A N F O R M N T H I S R O O M W I T H T H A T E T E R N A L. L is sustained P O W E R A N D A C T I O N O F T H I S L I G H T in W H I C H T H E R A E L D T O N I G H T. C H A R G E I T W I T H T H E power. T H E energy, T H E consciousness O foot H E A S C E N D E D masters T O A C T W I T H I N T H E F E E L I N G W O R L D O F H I N D I V I D U A L T O P R O D U C E its P E R F E C T I O N H O L D 90 The I Am Discourses it's D O M I N I O N T H E R E, and each day E X P A N D, it's P E R F E C T I O N, U N T I L T H E O U T E, consciousness of A N K I N D, grasp, U N D E R S T A N, Danfield H E, fullness of T H E, activity of H E I N N E R, powers of light. G R E A T L I G H T. G R E A T, cosmic light. T A K E C O M M A N D and D O P E R F E C T work W I T H I N T H E M I N D body and F E E L I N G W O R L D and activity of each one. Stand guard over I T W I T H A sword of blue flame and C U T every O N E F R E E F R O M every L I M I T I N G T H I N G F R O M every discordant T H I N G an H O L D T H A T O B E D I E N C E of T H E feeling A N D speech T H A T N O words may be spoken E X C E P T of praise and gratitude D E T O life an L E T T H E fullness of T H Y powers take C O M M A N D of each M I N D and body and glorify I T W I T H T H E everlasting victory of light. I thank you. March 20, 1938 Cleveland, OHIO Ascension DAY. Beloved Saint Germain. I know how anxious many are to know of the further progress made toward the victory of the light, and I am quite sure that you will rejoice with me that 12% more has been accomplished. In addition, you will observe how great, how very transcendent, is the added activity of the release to the entire earth of the victory of these ascensions. Tonight, from Arabia comes the most magnificent power. Some of you are not acquainted with the fact, it is at that point upon earth where the most powerful training in the world is given the students in the use of the light rays. It is a very ancient focus of this great power. Tonight, as David Lloyd brings to you the direct radiance from that retreat in Arabia, from that glory of life, will you accept the power? Notice carefully these words, accept the power of your own higher mental body to utilize these light rays, until such time as you become outwardly conscious of how to call them forth into direct activity, as you receive. 91. The conscious direction from your higher mental body. If you will so charge your higher mental body to do the many things required, and hold the sustaining power about you as you progress, in other words, as your own light expands within, you will find great blessings and benefit. I utilize this moment to speak to you, because I do not wish to interrupt after Mrs. Ballard reads and plays for you. I do not wish to interrupt the radiation as it comes forth from the retreat in Arabia, because during her music it will begin its direct outpouring to you and into your feeling world, and this tonight will not only act in your feeling world in further assistance to the activity of the ascension but will also act through your higher mental body in the greater power and use of the projection of the light rays. 
I shall now charge the higher mental body of every sincere, honest IAM student to carry forth whatever activity is required for the outer form, to most quickly produce its mighty perfection. I so charge the higher mental body to perform this service. Do you realize, beloved ones, I stand in this particular instance, O-N-E with your mighty I am presence, in calling this forth for you. In the consciousness which is mine in the achievement over human limitations, it is my privilege to call this forth for you to act through your higher mental body, and to the degree that each one of you accepts this, and I assure you it is no imaginary thing, then you will have the ever-increasing activity of it in your world of action. While I realize some are not comprehending the full import of this, there are many who are, to a large degree, however, in the great demand, the great need of today, I offer this service to all. It is the most unfortunate thing, beloved ones, for any human being on earth today to attempt to ridicule the expansion of this light, the messengers, or their work. I say this for a very definite reason. Unfortunately, mankind are constantly building for themselves, conditions over which they have no control. That is what has been the matter with mankind during the centuries. Therefore, may I try to help you to avoid all things of that kind in the future? If you do not agree with a thing, please have no opinion about it. That will prevent anything acting in your feeling world that causes a reaction upon you. We have pled with the beloved students everywhere throughout America, to positively refuse to have opinions about each other, criticism, condemnation or judgment, so won't you please, for your own blessing, avoid all of this in the future? You are dealing now with a powerful law, beloved ones, and the one who does not believe that is quite unfortunate, but you are, and there is no human being on earth that avoids it. I offer this prompting, that one takes firm command with themselves, their world, and avoid setting up any further conditions which bring you distress. At the slightest impulse to express those feelings or conditions, instantly remind yourselves that it is not permissible under the law of your life. Therefore, if you will do this, I can assure you that before five years have passed over your head, you will see such manifestations of the cosmic activities in your individual lives, as will satisfy the most skeptical of human beings. Our beloved brother, your ascended master Jesus, has one whom he has loved very greatly, since the time of his ascension, who is in great danger of passing into the activity of the sinister force. Again, I say to you, if only we could depend upon the human of individuals. If you could believe our humble, honest, sincere efforts, having passed through all that you will ever have to go through, we know the way, we know the requirements, and if you would allow us to prompt you and help you, how many pitfalls would you sail over? as it were. But we can only be patient and wait. Won't you allow me tonight in this humble prompting, to give you the strength and courage of self-control in all things, that your light may expand into the fullness of its eternal glory and your freedom. Today, I-R-E-P-E-A-T again, is T-H-E greatest day in T-H-E history O-F T-H-E-E-A-R-T-H. Since it h eclosio foot h esicon g o l d e n a g p o n t h i s earth. While our precious Jesus left the example of one ascension, today there are ten ascensions. Do you know what it meant this afternoon, with your great love pouring out to those blessed ones who are free forever? While your services are going on here, they are being freed. Tonight, five more, while this service is going on, and the love is poured out to them, will be set free forever from human limitation. Oh, do not let your own human or anyone else's cause you for one instant to feel there is anything imaginary about this. It is only too real and too true. Oh, that the vast world of humanity might understand that and feel that truth tonight. It is true, and those who can accept it in their feeling, will find themselves entering into a charmed world of the glory of the light. May I use this opportunity to thank you, myself, for your great kindness to the messengers, your great receptivity to the light and all the blessings which are yours from their presence here, and may the fullness of that light continue to expand in its ever-increasing intensity, until you are fully conscious of your freedom from all human limitations. Beloved David Lloyd Beloved students of the light, in bringing to you this radiance of an accomplishment which is the decree of life for every human being that has ever entered a human form. Today, the final victory of earth has started, the great eternal victory of life. As this intensification increases, 
bringing to the attention of the outer world that which most of mankind have thought was incredible and impossible, although before them for two thousand years, has been the example to the world, yet, the human element of mankind is so filled with doubts, fears, and skepticism, that the wonder is really that mankind could possibly have given the response they have to the powers of light, and only by centuries of preparation, could this today have been possible. You, beloved students, and the other students in America, are those who have been in touch with Saint Germain many times before. Now you are being offered your eternal freedom, many hundreds of the students could have had that freedom 70,000 years ago. Frankly, the most incredible thing that is before mankind today, is the unwillingness to give obedience to life. The natural desire of mankind should be to give obedience to the intelligence, the power that moves the human form about, but such is not the case. The intellect, being able and having the capacity to draw conclusions of its own, is not always willing to give obedience. Thinking its authority comes from that which has been gathered from without, it deceives itself. Often, too late, the intellect realizes its great, great mistake. As your blessed one has said to you so many times, in the failures before, let us not make the mistake again. You might not believe that, but I, too, was in that ancient civilization with you, but because the light within me compelled certain obedience. And by the simple suggestion given me while I was still in my father's care in India, now notice, it started the mighty vibratory action that carried me forward to the final goal. Think how little it takes to direct the currents of energy, to direct your attention to the power or the goal, in fact, both, whereby you may attain your eternal glory and freedom. I ask you, with the fragmentary information that was given me, would you have had the courage to forsake all things in the outer world, and if necessary, use all the money you had to try to reach the goal that had been indicated to me? I take no credit to the outer self, which was then the outer self, but to the light and I know that definitely was the power that carried M. E. forward continuously, when the human would have been discouraged and stopped, still, that light pushed on, and the human was compelled to follow. You stand in the same position today. Your light is surging, 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 for dominion, and there are hundreds of thousands of people in America today, and I mean by that, those who have not yet touched this stream of light consciously, that that light is surging to find expression and dominion through the human form. In the cave of symbols this afternoon, the beginning of the great spectacle started. Three gentlemen and two ladies ascended from there. Tonight, while the service is going on, even at this moment that I am speaking to you, those five individuals have entered into their higher mental bodies. They are standing there, receiving the transformation at this very instant. Try to feel yourselves in their places. Use your imagining faculties and charge that this be engraved upon your memory. Then, every time you have a few moments during the day from your outer activities, return in consciousness to this moment. Those ascending in Arabia are three women and two gentlemen. Notice how this carries to you the vastness of all that stands before you in your beloved America, our beloved America. In Arabia, those came from five different points in the world for this achievement. At the Cave of Symbols, five of your own American people achieved the victory this afternoon. That is because of the service which America must render the world. Notice this illustration very carefully. If you took hold of the center of this white covering and lifted it to this height, you would draw all the remainder of this with you, would you not? Just so in the substance of Earth. So it is with those who ascended today in America. It is like the great cosmic light reaches out, and from that point, is drawing all the substance of Earth, including the human forms of mankind, into its ascending vibratory action and radiance. So it is for the other parts of the Earth. From the retreat in Arabia and from the other places from which they came, there is the same gathering activity, drawing the substance into perfection once again. Now, this is a very real, powerful thing for the Earth. Could all Europe and the Orient understand this for one moment, everything would stop instantly and give way before that great light and presence, they may be compelled to. I cannot speak with authority to you tonight, but who shall say what this great cosmic light shall do? Mankind, who has rebelled so long, has found its master, and that master of all conditions is the cosmic light. Therefore, it has said to the earth, Awaken. Arise. A-N-D-S-O-I-T-S-H-A-L-L-B. 
you would no doubt be interested to know the difference between the activity in the Cave of Symbols and the retreat in Arabia. Those who are making the ascension there in Arabia ascend under the five rays of the Moha Chohan, because they will be wielders of the powerful light rays for the protection of the earth. They are carrying with that protection, certain qualities, which I may not explain to you. It gives them a direct all-powerful connection with the earth, until this service is completed. Their service is somewhat similar to the activity of Bob, Rex, Nada, and Pearl. While I have suggested it, still only a few have comprehended what is meant in the closing chapter of the magic presence. Keep on trying. All of a sudden the true meaning in that chapter will be revealed to you. It belongs to you as it did to them. Therefore, in this activity in Arabia, those blessed ones, most fortunate of beings, will enter into their great eternal service. I have hesitated to bring this before you, but I shall preface it by saying, do not in any way allow this to have a discouraging sense to you, because it has enough. In to do with your activity. One in Arabia, of those who ascended, and one in the cave of symbols, have retained their bodies fifteen hundred years. Several times the ascension was offered them, but in the service they were rendering, they asked permission to continue in the service of the earth. They were granted that permission, and today they are free. I congratulate you, beloved ones, for the comprehension which is acting within your feeling world today. It is a magnificent thing. I am aware you are not fully conscious of that, but even that does not matter, so long as the activity is taking place. As you continue to give your attention to the presence, clearer and clearer and more definite will come into the outer consciousness the fullness of this. Therefore, do not ever allow yourself to be dismayed or discouraged by any appearance that confronts you, but just in the steady, calm radiance of your presence, be sure that that great intelligence can regulate, correct and remedy any condition which confronts you in your life stream. Most surely. Do not for an instant allow yourself to accept that there is anything difficult in your pathway. Your presence, called forth into action, which is the power of light knowing no opposite, will flood forth, provided you keep yourself in the proper attitude of harmony and assurance, it will do the work. I wish to offer one suggestion. You do not all need this, but some of you will get tremendous assistance and blessing from it. While many of you have not seen them, yet in hydraulic work, when breaking down the formation of earth, the great hose with the nozzle governing the outpouring of water, containing tremendous power and force, breaks down all before it. If it will help you, feel going out from your heart area this mighty ray of light, always remembering that it is from your presence. By that mighty power, it sweeps every discordant thing out of your pathway. Then, following that, the power and activity of your presence is bringing divine order in every requirement of your life. Some of you will get tremendous activity out of that. Therefore, whenever we see a suggestion that will help, we offer it to you. Now, in contemplation in the future of the activity of this day, compel your intellect to accept the same enthusiasm which you have felt today, in the acknowledgement of this great achievement. I prompt you now, when you go out from this great transcendent radiance which has been gathered, and touch the outer world, stand firm and unyielding and hold this radiance with you. It can be done, and if you will determine while you are in this radiance, and charge your higher mental body to qualify and hold that for you, then it will be done. There is no need to let down. For one instant out of this radiation. You can hold it if you will, and let it continue to increase and expand in your world. When you see, hear or feel anything before you in your life stream that is less than perfection, stop instantly. Call your presence into action to dissolve cause, effect and record of it, and replace it by the power of light from your presence. Then you will reverse everything that would come in to cause you disturbance. If you will do that, regardless of the requirement, every morning before you leave your room, even before your breakfast, call forth this activity of your presence, and you will see how you can place the guard which will ward off many unpleasant things for you. Nearly every IAM student in America has had word of this activity today. Now what has this done, aside from the great freedom and blessing to those individuals, what has it done for you? Remember, where your attention is, your life is pouring. Your life is pouring to the ascension in the cave of symbols, and tonight, in Arabia. Therefore, your life stream is connected with the power of the ascension and the full complete achievement of those individuals.
as you remind yourself at least once each day of this achievement, then the power of your life which made contact there, will continue to act in your feeling world. It will give you the assistance of the power there, and bring to your aid through your conscious effort, additional assistance which is beyond your fondest imagination. You should see by that how great was the wisdom of Saint Germain in calling to your attention this activity of today, and giving all an opportunity by their attention, to connect their life streams with that magnificent achievement, in its eternal activity. It will act within your feeling world, as long as you keep yourself reminded and qualify it to be sustained, to give you the assistance outside of your own effort, for your own achievement. That is the power of life. That is the power of connecting your life stream with a mighty power of freedom. Then observe how unfortunate would be the opposite, when you connect your life stream to destructive, limiting, pulling down, tearing to pieces activities. If you connect your life with it, then you have the exact opposite. Energy does not discriminate in itself, but it goes where the attention directs it. Therefore, if you want to be free, you will hold your attention where the only freedom in the universe comes from, your own, mighty I am presence, and there is your freedom in every conceivable manner that the human can imagine, your financial free. Dom, your freedom of health, your freedom of peace of mind, the eternally sustained harmony, and the glory of all that means for your own financial victory, and all that it stands for. Now, when you have once determined that you are going to serve the light, remember your human is never sure. When I am speaking now, I am referring to your inner determination, not your intellect, and the danger of one today who has had such great help and assistance, is proof again of Saint Germain's great wisdom. He has always said, the human cannot be depended upon. Therefore, if you understand this and what it means to you, you will not allow your human to govern you or accept these destructive thoughts and feelings from anywhere else. Into your feeling can creep a subtle destructive feeling that you are wholly unaware of until it gains a momentum into the outer expression, then, unless one is very strong, it will, temporarily, hold its dominion there. Therefore, you are having the promptings, beloved ones, to guard your own world, to guard your feelings, to guard yourselves against your own human that would willingly or unwillingly connect your life stream with some destructive quality or activity. If you will charge yourself on retiring, with the peace and power of your presence, and on awakening, charge it with mighty directing intelligence and AC. Activity of your presence, you could not drop into human mistakes. Now these are the promptings which are being offered to you if you care to use them. Now then, for a few moments, will you come with me in all the glory, all that happiness, and that feeling which was mine in the great victory of life. After those long years of searching, try to feel what this beloved messenger means to me. I know you love these messengers, but how can you know, how can you understand to love them as we do? When suddenly I came upon him on that great mountain in America, and by that inner power of light, was taken to him at the opportune moment, and then he, wholly unknowing of what was planned to be, in his very great kindness, offered to quench my thirst and then to my glory, and I shall remember it forever, in his hand came the crystal cup. That was my signal which I had sought those many years, knowing, as he did not, what it meant. Then, can you feel with me for a moment, my victory, my glory, for I knew then the rest would follow, after explaining to him my years of weary searching, and how the light in its dominion within my breast, always carried me on and on and on. Can you imagine, not knowing what mountain was meant, not knowing what locality in your America? Not knowing anything except that on a great mountain in North America would I find this man. This I am saying for your encouragement and strength. Your light can carry you forward to any victory if you let it. Fortunately, I was completely harmonious within myself, and that is the only means in the world by which I ever succeeded. I would never in the world have found him, but for that. Today I know that. Then, when I explained to him and he said, what am I supposed to do, and with that power which he still feels that came through my voice, and with long pent-up energy, I said to him, ask the God in yourself, who does know? That was the release, and his human self disappeared. In its place came the great light of his presence, until these arms and this chest, to this far on the body, was a blazing light that you could not look into, and as those hands, which are before you, came out and took mine almost simultaneously with the touch. My feet left the earth. Then as I continued, it was no volition, no effort upon my part. 
The light within me drew me up, and when I ascended as far as his hands could reach and he let go, I continued on. And as I stood there in that atmosphere above him, as those blessed ones stood today, can you feel with me that feeling? Then above, the ray of light descended from my own presence to complete the victory. I shall never forget. He will never forget my gratitude which poured out to him, and can you imagine, even in my perfected state, my feeling today when human beings are so unfortunate as to criticize and condemn one whom they are not fit to lace his shoes. Just because he seems to be natural and so kindly, which he is, don't forget that service his presence of light rendered to me. And I am THAT living E T E R now W I T N E S S to that great great blessing. To all of you, he has rendered a service in every class that is drawn together. Do not forget it. And when puny human gossip touches your ears, remember my words. I am THE living P-R-O-O-F of his words. When humanity can render the service he has already rendered mankind, they will be ashamed to have a single thought of criticism toward him. I am determined to melt that thing from mankind forever. When I know the humble, gentle kindliness with which he releases this immeasurable power to every class, and then puny intellects come in to make fun, can you imagine sometimes, it takes all my strength to withhold the power that I could turn upon them, and some day when it is necessary. It shall be done. When viciousness has become wholly vicious, then even the human form is not of consideration, because the releasing of life from that form which has become wholly vicious, would be the greatest kindness in the world. I say to all destructive individuals toward these two beloved ones, be careful what you do. You do not in the ignorance of the human mind know the power and force of light. If necessary, I shall wield this power in Washington D.C. Those destructive forces have attempted to gather a vortex there, and they shall find it of no avail. Therefore, beloved ones, the power of light stands back of these two humble precious ones and their blessed son. Beloved ones, your great love, your great call for their protection, is a mighty power which we can use. Always call for the infinite almighty protection of these classes, so mankind may have the harmonious opportunity to have the blessing of eternal light which is always here. The final battle of light and darkness is on. The light always wins, because the light does not battle. The darkness is the only thing that tries to battle, for when the light appears, the darkness disappears. Try to feel that in your individual lives. In the fullness of the power which is yours in all of your activity, I say to these beloved messengers, have no concern. Apply the law, and the great law of life will take care of them, and your great love will intensify ten thousandfold. We thank you, beloved ones, for your great love and gratitude poured out to the messengers, who are so humble, so gentle, so kindly, asking nothing from mankind but obedience to their own life, that they may be free. Therefore, beloved ones, allow me to thank you, to bless you with my love and all the assistance I am capable of giving, to help you quickly on your way to victory, and remember, I stand at attention. I stand ready to serve every sincere honest, IAM, student in the world, and my powers are not limited, even though, so recently, they were. Beloved ones, in closing, may I say just a word. When I found myself wholly free, and all the pent-up desires I found then of many lifetimes began to assert themselves, I sought for the instruction of all the powers of my being, and with speed incredible. I have been given credit in the octave of the ascended masters for having the tenacity, and power and speed of achievement that is tremendous, therefore, I wanted this for use now. After a while, it would not be needed in the human octave, but now I want this power to go forth and bless this beloved one who has set me free. And I shall ever be present to stand guard over him and his beloved ones. Therefore, beloved ones, go forth in the full joy of your limitless power and freedom in your presence, call forth, have, express, and feel the full power of the infinite light and joy of your presence, its courage and strength, its mighty directing intelligence. You can call forth without limit to charge your world with its limitless energy, health and strength, to go on and on quickly into the victory of your freedom in the light. I congratulate you. I thank you for your comprehension, for the power that is yours, already expanding within your chest, within your heart, 
and may that intensify with the glory of your ever-intensifying feeling of the desire for your victory and freedom. Such is yours now, beloved ones. Claim it, be it, and feel the fulfilling of the power of your, infinite presence of light, to take you forward into freedom. I thank you. April 3, 1938 WASHINGTONDC Beloved brothers and sisters of the light, in endeavoring to convey into your feeling world tonight that which has meant everything in the world to me, and is my freedom today, will you feel with me during this hour that you may have entered into your world? That you may have charged into your world the blessings, the full feeling of the powers and freedom which are mine. That is my mission in coming to talk to you tonight. Remember, only a few short years ago I stood in a limited physical body as yours is today, and spent all those many years of searching for that fellow with the crystal cup. Now I want you to feel what this means, for in your search for light it has been similar. Although you did not have a given objective upon which to focus your attention, you will notice, until you came to know of your presence. Therefore, in all those years in my endeavor to fulfill the fragmentary words of the master who came to me in India, many times, oh, that weariness which came in that search, yet always there was that joy, that buoyancy and enthusiasm which never waned. 112. Not once, no matter how weary I became in the physical form. And yet the energy, the life acting within me never grew old. There was not a sense of growing old, although my hair and face showed some appearance of age, but there was no feeling of age within me, the same as there is with many of you today. Even though you may have grey hair and the appearance of age, yet the spirit of life within you is youthful, buoyant, and so it can be, beloved ones. That life as you observe here, anchored within your human heart, never grows weary, never grows old. It just pours forth itself, and but for your qualification, now notice, beloved ones, that is an invisible thing. You don't see that act, but your power of qualification is a powerful faculty of your being, which is constantly qualifying this wondrous energy that flows into your body, then out through the power of radiation of self-luminous, intelligent substance into your world of action. That is real. That is the producer. And if you blessed ones knew, for it is within you, the power this hour to release the powers of this presence, and let it flow forth from you through its mighty power of radiation, that would harmonize everything that touched your world, and bring to you. As the students often decree, ascended master friends everywhere to give you the assistance required, no matter what it was. That is the power of life, your mighty I am presence, acting through you, by its mighty currents of energy. You do not see the energy pass through the wires or the energy pass in your radio from the transmitter to the receiver, but yet there are those currents of energy. You do not hear the music in this room right now, but it is there, it is invisible, unknown, but you place a radio here and you will find the music is there. So in all your activities of life, the power that is the producer of everything in light is invisible to the human sight. And that is where mankind have deceived themselves, in allowing the intellect to accept the appearance world as the only reality, when it is but the shell. All that exists in the human world today is of human creation, and you would say to me, what about the energy that produces it? Oh yes, sure enough, that is the energy of your presence, but acting according to your qualification. It hasn't done so much, has it, when the energy, if left alone, free of your power of qualification, would have produced eternal youth and perfection in your body, produced harmony and success in your world of limitations, achievement in whatever your attention might have been focused upon. Precious ones, there is not one of you in this room, and I am not concerned what your years are, that. If you would obey a few simple laws, fix your attention upon a goal, a given objective, and hold your attention there, refuse acceptance of the appearance world, hold harmony in your feelings, and call the powers of your presence to take command of that produce its perfection and hold its dominion and charge its power of achievement in that, make successful anything your hearts desire, and from tomorrow morning, you could start in and build anything, have any constructive activity that your precious hearts would desire. Your constructive desire is God, the mighty I am presence, in action. You cannot have a desire without the energy, the intelligence and power of the presence, and if that desire be destructive, 
Would you say to me, that is my presence? Oh no you could not say that, although mankind has in the past. They have believed that that was God acting. Oh yes, it is God's energy acting, but your power of qualification compelled that quality to act upon that energy. Oh, beloved ones, do you not see how mankind alone are responsible for the limiting conditions which they experience today, and how they could set themselves free so quickly if they would? The matter of strength of the human form has nothing to do with your achievement or the powers of your presence in its achievement. It only means a calm steadfast determination and call to the presence, keeping yourselves harmonious over a sufficient period until this energy from the presence begins to flow, unqualified by any discord. Then you will begin to see take place in your world, transformation after transformation. People who have hated you will suddenly begin to love you. Conditions that have seemed terrifying will melt as the mist before the morning sun. Then will you begin to know that the light, the energy, the intelligence that beats your heart and moves you about, is the simple commanding presence of life and the authority in your world, and the only authority there is. No human being in this world has any authority over another. All should be loving cooperation. Then the power of harmony and divine love would be enabled to act through human beings, and all treachery, deceit and deception would vanish from the earth. Let me help you to enjoy with me tonight that eternal rejoicing that we have entered into, that rapid erasing of deceit and treachery from the feeling world of mankind forever. Oh that day when it ceases to be. When one individual will love another and want them to have the same joy, happiness, success and blessing that they have, then what a world of ascended master blessings and activity will be on earth. If we were to accept the appearance world today, we would see no hope for mankind, but knowing the great law of life its power and dominion that is coming into the earth with such speed and power. And remembering that magnificent truth uttered at the close of Washington's vision and the utterances of the mighty Arcturus, almost the identical same words, that, if necessary, that lighters of a thousand suns will descend into the earth and remove. Dissolve and consume all human selfishness and discord from the earth, is that not something wonderful, magnificent to look forward to? I say to you, if you were to take the appearances of the world today for authority, you could not believe my words were true, could you? That is the point. Saint Germain has told you from the beginning of this wondrous instruction he has brought forth, you may no longer accept the appearance world as authority or power against the light which beats your heart. If you do, you will remain in your limitations. If you do not accept it, say to that appearance. You have N O P O W E R so far as M Y W O R L D is conk E R N E D. M I G H T Y I am presence, take C O M M A N D O F T H I S M I N D A N D body, T H I S is yours. P R O D U C E your perfect I O N H O L D your D O M I N I O N T H E R E. Release your M I G H T Y C U R R E N T S of E N. Ergy into my world, cleanse and purify it, sweep out of my pathway every destructive thing, replace it by the ascended master's self-luminous intelligent substance, which is light. Let THAT light go forth and hold its dominion before me. Then you will have become a being in the world of light and perfection, untouched by all the conditions that you might meet around you. That is the need of you precious ones today. I plead with you, do not longer accept the appearance world as real. It has an appearance, that is true. Your bodies have an appearance, but the life that is animating your bodies, you do not see, therefore, it is invisible power, but very tangible. We, as ascended beings are very powerful, but still we are invisible to the physical sight for a very good reason, not anything unusual. Why are we ordinarily invisible to you? Because our rate of vibratory action is so much more rapid than yours, that we have raised out of your sight, just the same as your electric fan, you see it when it is standing still, but when you turn it on full speed, you do not see it. Well, it is there, but the speed of the vibratory action has made it so rapid you do not see it with the physical sight. The same with us. I am just as tangible. I am standing right here. Why don't you see me? because I have not lowered my vibratory rate enough for your physical sight to cognize it, but that does not make me any the less tangible. 
You know I am sorely tempted sometimes, would you like to play ball sometime? I mean that literally. Well, we will see about it. I am anxiously waiting for that time. Sometimes when you think I am not tangible, because I am still invisible, I will send you a ball of light that will let you know definitely I am tangible. Oh no, I would not harm you for the world, but you will know that it is me. I just feel like that tonight, just like I would like to begin to send them forth, that you might know I was very real. Therefore, beloved ones, then imagine my joy when after all those years, and I had followed the old statement, young man, go west, but not as those who had previously gone west, I was in search of a very different goal. But that prompting was so powerful that I followed it, and to make a very long story short, I found myself this day, high up on the side of Mount Shasta in Northern California. As I was going along, I suddenly came into this small clearing, and there I saw this man sitting on a log, this body that is right here before you was sitting there on the log. As I came up, he turned and spoke to me, and after exchanging a few words he started to offer me a drink of water. When his hand reached out, in it came pre. Sipitated the crystal cup that I had searched for all those long, long years, and you will never know just how long those years were. Every year seemed an age. Then all the powers of my being rushed into action, and when this good brother, after I gave the explanation, said, well, what am I supposed to do, I often rejoice when I hear him mention it since. When I said to him, ask the God in you who does know, and with that the whole power of his human receded out of the way, and the powers of light of his presence came down as far as the heart in this body that stands before you. These arms and the head and shoulders were such a blazing light that you could scarcely look into it. As these arms and hands came forth and took mine, no words could ever explain what went through my body. When I saw the crystal cup in his hand, which filled with this wondrous liquid, I just knew that it was for me, and without fear, drank it. I have always thought that my hair stood straight up, maybe it did not, sometime I shall ask this good brother whether it did or not, but the current, the charge of energy that filled every cell of my being like lightning, was indescribable. I could not attempt to describe it. My feet left the earth as far as his hands would reach, then my hands let go of his, and I continued on. Again, can you imagine for just a few moments what my feeling could be? Even after years of searching for a goal, to find it suddenly attained and find that the earth, because of that charge of energy that discharged from his being into mine, released me from the bondage of earth. The earth could no longer hold my body to it, therefore it ascended, a perfectly natural thing, not a thing unnatural. Please feel this. Then as I stood there, I saw the change in the expression on his face, and in that powerful current of energy I was not conscious of the various changes that took place with me, within and without. But when I saw the change of expression on his face, then I looked down at myself, and saw that in place of the form with the appearance of age, I was as eternal youth. My garments had changed into those of the higher octave and I stood there in the atmosphere clothed in beautiful raiment that as a lad in my daydreams I had often hoped I might wear. You know, boys and girls often have those natural daydreams in which they contemplate the possibility of the seeming impossible, and yet they are actually living in the glory of reality then. How many the messenger has met among the students, who, up until they were sixteen years old or so, had experienced the reality of many of these things, but because there was no one about them that understood them, they had to shut that within, and then later come to believe that it must have been their imagination working over time. O oh, beloved ones, if mankind only understood and had the courage, the strength to stand by the promptings of their own heart, how different the lives of thousands and thousands in America and the world today would have been. Look at Madame Blavatsky, who as a girl in Russia was sent forth by the great masters. Her people opposed and ridiculed it and everything, yet the child, without money, went forth, and the money was provided. She went as a young girl to South America into the jungles of Brazil, where she met that great family of ascended beings, who are there today, and since my ascension, I have visited them, so I know they are there. Yet from that same country came the opposition, the communistic element that tried to spread its destruction through Brazil, but it shall not do it. It shall fail utterly. Therefore, look at the individuals the world over who have been led forth, lifted as it were, above the turmoils of earth and taken forth and given all the law of life permitted to be given at that time. 
Let me describe to you tonight this wondrous work and radiation which is poured forth. No opportunity is ever lost since the last shrine class to do definite work for the students and individuals who come. Beginning at that time, one whom you have come to know as the great divine director, to those great beings time and space does not exist, you perhaps can hardly comprehend that yet, but still it is true, he draws about these classrooms when the messengers are here, that great focus of light from the cave of light in India. You tonight are caught and held within the radiance of that, just a little less powerful than if you entered the cave of light in India just now. You cannot conceive in the outer, I quite understand, what that means to you just now. It means that all the perfecting qualities that act within that mighty intensification of light, to a lesser degree, are acting within your feeling world while you are in this room. For this room is enclosed in that power of light, and also your feeling worlds. Every one of you is absorbing it just as a sponge absorbs water. That quality, that substance which is self-luminous, intelligent substance of light, will continue to act in your feeling world to bless you, if you can believe it, accept it, and ask it to be charged and held active for you to do the work which is intended for you. If you say this is all nonsense, then you will not have the blessing. Dear ones, may I offer a suggestion to you tonight, if you are here for the first time. Mankind needs the blessing of light. The one who scoffs at it or believes we are just talking comfortable things to hear, will of course, not have the blessing. No one is going to intrude this blessing upon anyone. All are quite free, wholly free when they come into these classrooms. Not one ounce of energy is ever used to influence anyone. Everyone is and must be left free to make their own choice, therefore, beloved ones, this is the only time in the world that such a thing was ever done. All kinds of activities have called to gain and hold students. The messengers have never given it a moment's consideration. If people love to come, then they are welcome, if not, they are quite free. In fact, they always invite those who do not feel harmonious to them and the work, to please not come, but still they do come anyhow. Therefore, I want you to know that this is one activity in the world that leaves every being quite free to formulate their own decisions, whether they want to be interested in it or not. Of course, the presence of life is beating your heart whether you are interested in this explanation of it or not. You may not be aware of that, but until you are, you will go but a short way on your pathway to freedom. One of the things today, and of course, it has been spread over America broadcast, I do not mean over the radio, but by mail, that the messengers were hypnotizing people and that this was a work of black magicians, and all that silly crazy thing, but when you see anybody in the world today that pours forth the kindness, the power of divine love and blessing that these two messengers do, then show them to me. Therefore, by their works ye shall know them. But if mankind listen to foolish human gossip and fail to utilize the opportunity, then they have missed their opportunity, but the messengers are not concerned about that. Their part is to go forth and do the work, and leave mankind free to come or not, and that is true, absolutely, and has been from the beginning and will always be so. Show me any activity in the world today that never asks a human being for a dime. The messengers have never asked a human being for a dime and never will. Mankind must be left free to give or not, and the success of that shows that the heart of mankind is right, is good, if left alone to its own decision. Then when an individual comes and feels that they are free, then the powers of their own life can direct them to do whatever is the right thing for them to do. That is the most magnificent thing before the world today. That is why, after a little more time, the cities will offer the beloved messengers their best auditoriums in the city, to have them there. They will know that that city will have received a blessing a thousandfold greater than the cost of their auditoriums, and will bless their auditoriums and make them successful in the future, so long as constructive activities go on there. These are some of the simple things that mankind are coming to know, for this is the power of light going forth and blessing mankind. It has not a thing to do with the messengers, but they are carrying the great law of truth which Saint Germain has brought forth. The power of light, which is the power of your life and every human being's life, is that with which everyone should be concerned. That is why not a thing in the world that has ever come forth, can possibly touch the blessings which this gives to mankind. I am talking to you now as one wholly free, seeing the effect of their work in America and the world, and beloved ones, 
in every part of the world, it is finding its anchorage. Can you believe, beloved ones, that a book carrying the full truth of life can be so charged that it finds its way among mankind like a living thing? That is the truth. These books, Unveiled Mysteries The Magic Presence, the I Am Discourses, the Ascended Master Discourses, and the next one that is coming out, are books of that quality, that power, and they will go into the hands of individuals where they belong. There is nothing in the world could stop it, because it is the power of light in action. That has nothing to do because the messenger happened to be the observer of those experiences, but it is. Because it is the power of light which is explaining itself to mankind, the power of your own life explained to you. That is why its authority, that is why, its power will carry it forward to bless mankind everywhere. As the radio transcription work expands, and more of mankind begin to see the great blessing, the great need of issuing these mighty decrees in great groups together, as well as individually, then they will know that power going forth into the mental and feeling world of mankind is doing a work through the power of radiation that is unparalleled in the history of the earth in any age. Because all life is vibration and substance directed by intelligence, and mankind, once they come to know, as you observe this chart and the power of the stream of light from that presence anchored within your own physical heart, then you know you are a part of that great life and cannot be separated from it, never in eternity. You never were. It does not make any difference how many times you changed bodies, still you are connected with that presence of all life. You are that presence of all life, the real you. This garment you are wearing has not anything to do about it, unless it gives sufficient obedience, then the perfection that is in that stream of light has its dominion. Now tonight, in preparation for the coming class, I want to draw this illustration before you. The Miz. Senger has often done it, but it means so much, it is a conclusion that no honest sincere individual in the world can possibly deny. If a human form lay here lifeless before you, that one hour ago was in the fullness and activity of life, and there was intelligence and power, authority, courage, happiness and all those qualities acting through that form, then where has it gone? Answer that. Where has that gone, all of those qualities and powers that were acting through that human form? The organs are all there, the brain is there, but it is helpless. Now then, observe that ray of light and energy from the presence. Everything that acted through that human form came through that stream of life, light and energy from its own presence. There is no human being on earth who can deny that. Therefore, then all that your heart desires tonight or ever has, ever can, or ever will, is held within that stream of light and life energy and intelligence from your own presence, which is anchored within your own physical heart. Therefore, if your experiences have been limited, then you must first know that you alone are the cause for that limitation, by your three faculties which you are using every moment, but without understanding what they were producing. Your attention, the greatest faculty in human experience, what your attention is on you become, where? Your attention is, there you are. Let us hold that briefly now. Your physical sight, your eyes are looking out here upon the world and accepting all these limitations and distress as reality, and causes you again to outpicture that same quality in your own world, because you cannot help it as long as you do that. Then your invisible power, which is your power of qualification, beloved ones, do you not see that all that is ever used through that human form came through this stream of light and energy? It came through these qualities, ideas, power, an intelligence by which it causes the outer manifestation to be gathered, the forces of energy gather and produce the form or condition. This building which you are in, came through that stream of light and energy through an individual, first as an idea, then put on blueprint paper, the outer substance gathered, and the building took form. Just so with your human forms. The point of light in every cell of your body is the light pattern upon which the human form is built, or there would be no flesh structure there. What do you suppose holds your flesh together? The points of light do, in every cell of your body, or you would not be able to hold your flesh together for a single instant. What happens when disintegration sets in? The light has withdrawn and there is nothing to hold the flesh together. Oh, let us know and see and feel, beloved people of America, the truth of life, and then set it into action to illumine and bring us the full power of action and life with which we are connected.
My dear people, you do not have to remain in limitations and distress because you might have been the cause of generating it. Oh, call on the law of forgiveness tonight as you never did before, and determine to stop all qualification that will bring about distress in your world. Then as you call the powers of your presence forth, it will flow in and through your body and produce health and perfection, and out into your world to produce harmony that will cause all to love you, and want to serve you for all that is required in your life for action. My dear people, there is not one in your city tonight, whether they have understood this work or not, if they would just follow these simple words, this does not require faith. If they were earnest and sincere and honestly stand, after looking at this chart, and hold their hands to this presence, to their life, call its mighty energy to charge their being, their body with perfect health and harmony, charge it with the mighty directing intelligence of the presence and enfold it in the full power and invincible tube of light that admits no destructive suggestion into their world, they could then move forward in the world in the power and victory of that. Presence, which is light that knows no opposition. You are beings of light, for that light of God, the master of the universe, is attached at your physical heart and gives life and action to your world. You are a part of that light, and you can call forth a greater intensification of action into your world, and let it do its harmonizing work. If you do not do it, you cannot have it mean business, dear hearts. Why, the calling of your presence into action to produce harmony, health and perfection in your being, to go forth in your world and make your business a success, is the most wonderful business in the world. No business in the outer world will further succeed without the powers of the presence set into action to produce it. Every human being and every man of wealth in America today, have given certain obedience to that law, or they could not have had it. It would be impossible. You follow the life of men of success, and you will find every one of them have their private offices that no human being in the world enters, but themselves, not even their private secretaries, and those individuals have boundless success. While they would not admit it, not for the world, they go in there and call to God, the power of life, to help them achieve. Sometimes, in future life they turn and misuse that power. That is no fault of the power of life, but the fault of their wrong qualification. That is where everyone stands today. Think of it. Beloved ones. In all the vast information and explanations that have been given, never in the history of life has this identical explanation of the law of life been given, until Saint Germain gave it. Individuals who follow the messengers around deceitfully claiming to give this understanding of the mighty IAM presence, what a pitiful thing. My God, do they not know that in that deception they are their own failure, and one day, too late, will they see it. I tell you, dear people, today no longer shall deception reign in the feeling world of mankind and deceive mankind. That power of light shall go forth to reveal to mankind the truth. It is a comparatively short time until television will be in full power of action. Why do you suppose it is not out yet? Why do you suppose television is held back like that? Because the world of mankind knows that when that comes forth into use, they have got to give obedience, and they are going to keep it out as long as they can. But they will not do it much longer, because the power of light is taking its dominion, and will force mankind to let go of their selfish purposes to hold mankind in bondage. I decree this tonight, God, that mighty I am presence, release your power of light, release this television to the world. Release these discoveries to the world, and let mankind have the blessing and use of them, and be free from the bondage and dom. A nation of industries and anything else that holds mankind from the simplicity of light, which they may have. Powers of light. Bring forth television in every home, that no longer may deception be practiced in the privacy of the offices of big industries, then shall mankind once again come to know the freedom of life, the joy of life, the happiness, the use of what they require. So tonight, beloved ones, in the fullness of your own life, try to call it into action. Refuse any longer to give power to the appearance world, then as you call to your presence. In the great love and blessing of your feeling world poured out, it will carry that love and blessing everywhere. Then coming back to you from everywhere, will come the return of that love and blessing, amplified a thousandfold to bless you and your life in its activity. Such is your privilege today, and there is not one that cannot apply this law to their complete freedom. I say to you, beloved ones, do not give way any longer to the appearance world. 
So far as the conditions of the outer world, the great privilege of the students is to know that those appearances of human creation have no power. As these mighty decrees have gone forth with that powerful statement of truth, so is it acting in the mental and feeling world of mankind. Believe it or not, in the world of destructive individuals today, is coming more and more confusion, and less and less trust in each other. You know when you get a pack of wolves fighting each other, they forget to prey upon innocent individuals, and it is so with mankind today. Those who have sought to limit and deprive mankind, will be in battle among themselves, and then mankind will be forgotten long enough to get free. Beloved ones, I cannot refrain from trying to convey to you tonight the power, the imperative need of the use of the violet consuming flame represented there, and that tube of light. Dear people, if you would only believe and call your presence into action to establish that tube of light about you, making it invincible to every discordant thing, and then abide by it, realizing you are the authority that has called it into action, therefore, you must maintain harmony in your feelings in order to allow that tube of light to remain invincible about you. When you call the presence to do something, it does it, but if you, the next hour or day, say, oh, I do not believe the presence, did that yet, well then, you have annulled the very thing that you have called forth into action, because you are the authority. If you only understood that when you call the presence into action, accept it, and do not let your human intellect say once again, I do not know whether it did or did not do it. Your presence never failed you in kingdom come, and never will, but you fail yourself by unbelief and your lack of application. You know I cannot help but smile, now this is not speaking unkindly about the students, but when I have seen instances where the students would be applying so earnestly, and all of a sudden the feeling would rush in, I don't think I am making it. Away would go a letter or telegram to the messengers, I think I need help, when beating your own heart is the greatest power in the universe. O oh, beloved ones, I do not blame you, but I do say to you, straighten up your spine, take your authority. Feel definitely and all-powerfully when you call your presence into action, it is just as powerful as anybody else's call. Abide in it and you will find your world will come into order in so short a time, and you won't have that wobbly feeling here, you know, uncertainty. Say, do you know it would be almost better to make a mistake than to get all wobbly here? Really? You know how many times you have felt an elephant stand on your solar plexus? Where do you suppose that elephant was? That fellow was your own creation, because it is the only fellow that could stand there. It is as true as you live, yet all have had the experience. You know how all of a sudden you are all gone, and you are shaky and quivery, or something has frightened you, this old appearance world out here, it has gotten your goat. It's your goat and you want to keep it. So dear ones, don't be frightened ever again at anything. You are the presence of life, every one of you, its full power in action, if you but know it. Now with this understanding before you, if you will study and apply, and oh precious ones, won't you study, read and read and apply the instructions given forth in the books and magazines, until you have it at your tongue's end at any moment. Then you can answer the questions of people and not let them feel you are a little shaky and uncertain about the great law. Oh, it is so important at this time. Every one of you blessed students should be so sure of yourself, so sure of these instructions, that when someone asks you a question, you can answer like lightning and with a power that carries conviction that you know what you are talking about. Then everybody will respect you and say, well, that fellow has got something that I would like to have, because he knows what he is talking about. Can you imagine, dear people, this messenger, who was such a timid lad up until Saint Germain sent him forth, he and blessed Mrs. Ballard, to carry this work on, how quickly he came into that courage, strength and power that is dauntless. Every one of you can do the same thing, because what is the mat? To with mankind? Why are they in limitations today? Because underneath, may be unknown, is some activity or sense of fear, either of health, money, supply or ability, or something is acting in the cunning sense of human fear. But with the knowledge of your presence, you can say, M I G H T Y I am presence, T A K E O U T O F M Y F E E L I N G W O R L D all fear, R E P L A C E I T W I T H your courage, S T R E N G T H A N D P O W E R O F A C T I O N. 
how quickly you would be transformed into beings of the activity and power of light, instead of cringing before someone that has a little more money than you do. Think of it. Think of it, dear people. It is not what you have been, but what you are today that counts. The Ascended Masters never condemn or judge, your presence of life never condemns or judges. It just waits until you are ready and willing to give sufficient obedience, that allows its powers to flow forth unqualified by any human quality. Then the very power and perfection of its purity, light and energy, would fill your body with health and your world with harmony, which would bring the blessings of perfection to you. It is so magnificent, so practical, so real and there is not a thing in the world today so practical as this understanding of your life, of everyone's life, for that is what it is. Won't you feel from this hour, this moment, that in the future there is not a single thing impossible for any one of you? Why, beloved ones, do you really still think that these garments of flesh are the power? Surely not. You cannot possibly think that these bodies, these garments of flesh, are the power. Why impossible, the power is here. Only 10% is within your body. Sometimes foolish people, in attempting to oppose this light, say, Oh, God is within you, God is not above. Well, if God was all within you, you would not be here, you would be perfect beings, ascended long, long ago. Therefore, 90% of God is above you, and its stream of light and energy beats your heart. That is why you have limitations, why you have ill health, why you have distress in your world. Once you know that that presence is the authority and power acting through these human forms, you will have no more pain, you will have no more illness, you will have no more limitations, you will have no more distress, because this power knows no opposite of itself. You are the only opposite it knows, because you won't stop your qualification. Think of it. Haven't we been naughty children? Think of it. This is not child's play I am talking about, but dear people, it is your very life and freedom. We have been naughty children because we insisted, and still do unfortunately, on clothing this energy with discord. Well, I might wait a little while, but I hope I won't have to wait long to grasp your hand in the octave of light, and say, well done, my brother and sister, you are free. Dear ones, please think with me for a moment again. Only so few years ago, I was in a limited body like yours, but today, I am free forever in the power of the ascension. Won't you believe it and let that power act in your world, to set its same quality of action there and hold it sustained? You must call it to be sustained that you have that same action there for you. Do you not see, dear hearts, unless you accept that which we offer, you cannot have it? Oh no, we don't want to intrude anything upon you, dear hearts, not for the world, but we are free. We know the process that produced it, and you have it before you. Every ascended master will tell you the identical words, there are thousands in the octave of light, and not one of them will vary one iota. Oh yes, the messenger has had a good many people come and tell him that they were in communication with the ascended masters, but when the evidence came forth, it was very clear they were not, and afterwards proved they were not. One who contacts this great stream of life today needs invincible protection about them. If they will call the presence to give them the invincible protection by the power of this tube of light and keep themselves harmonious, then they will have the invincible protection everyone requires, because it is the presence that does it. You cannot produce it by the physical. Look, dear hearts, there is not one solitary thing you can do by your physical alone. If you do not use the power of your presence, you cannot move your hands, you cannot speak a word, then it is the power of your presence, acting, isn't it? At so-called death, you still have all these faculties and organs there, but they do not talk, they do not go, therefore, the power was in this stream of light and energy. Please keep that before you. That gives you the full power of conviction that it is your presence acting, because it is all-powerful. Then when you ask it to do something, if you remain still, firm and determined in its power of action, it will do whatever is required to produce harmony, happiness and supply in your world. Since my release into this great freedom, I have seen thousands of times, as I move among the students, now this might sound comical, but it is not meant to be so, this might sound mathematical, still it is true, because I have the record of it, among the students today. 
there are over 80,000 whose treasure house stands ready, waiting to open its doors to them. If those students will continue to stand firm and unyielding with the power of their presence, as being the treasure house that now releases the limitless supply of money and all else required, how quickly they will find their world and activity being flooded in ways and means that you could not possibly imagine in the outer. The outer knows so little about what the powers of the presence can do, even as yet, but if you will just let the presence have a chance, it will soon show you that it has the authority and power to produce for you everything you require. I am thankful and grateful for this privilege tonight, for you cannot imagine the joy that it is to me to be of some service after so many years, and shall I make a little confession? You know in those years of my search, and of course, now I know it was forces trying to intrude the suggestion into my world, that don't you think you are being a little bit lazy in seeking your own freedom instead of serving mankind? And that was the thing that came the nearest to making me fail of anything that contacted my world. That was the subtle cunning force of the sinister activity that saw what was coming, and wanted in that cunning way to prevent it, but thank the presence of light it did not do it. Beloved ones, can you imagine for one moment, my feeling of gratitude and love to this beloved messenger for that service rendered me? My dear people, if I could shout this into the ear of every human being on earth, how great would be my joy. It might sound very well, my talking about it, but it is a very different thing when you experience it, which was my joy, and I contend this, that there is not a human being living on the face of this earth that can stand before me, as you have stood tonight, and not know in your heart that I have spoken the truth. That human being does not exist who can stand or sit before me and hear these words, and know I am not telling the truth, or feel it that is the power of light. I don't care what their intellect says, but I am knowing what their heart is saying. That is the thing that counts, dear people. Your intellect has led you into all this maze of limitations and distress, your heart will lift you out, because the presence of life is anchored there to fill you with its glory, when you will give it attention and harmonize yourselves. In the full charge of the powers of your presence, I charge, charge, charge into your feeling world tonight, freedom from the goddess of liberty, victory from the great ascended master victory. That gives you the courage and strength and the confidence to make such dynamic application that you cannot fail in a single thing. Tonight, great powers of light, enfold each one of these beloved ones in that invincible tube of light, then stand guard over the feeling world of those indie. Vigils, that not once again do they ever requalify it with any discordant thing. Stand guard, O oh great life, over these children. Set into action the violet consuming flame underneath their feet, pass it through their feeling world, mental world and physical bodies like a blow torch, dissolving and consuming cause, effect and record of every discord that has ever registered in their feeling body or their physical world. Remove cause, effect and record of everything that is limiting within the consciousness of the individuals. Set them free in the service of the light, and whether they are working in industries, whether they are working in the government, or wherever they are working, great presence of light, hold them invincibly protected by your tube of light. By the action of the violet consuming flame, dissolve and consume forever, every vestige of their human creation and accumulation that has been drawn about them through the centuries. Set them free in the power of their own presence of life, this hour. Make everyone accept the glory, the power of this decree issued for their blessing, that it may act in their feeling world with that power with which it is sent, to quickly achieve that freedom for each one, and may they stand glorified, a perfect representative of the light. That all the world turns, and in looking at them, wants to be like them. I thank you. May 77, 1938 D-E-T-R-O-I-T-M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N I-A-M Ascended M-A-S-T-E-R-Y-O-U-T-H Beloved friends of the light, in having this opportunity to pour forth my feeling to you tonight, I have asked the higher mental body of each one of you to enable you to receive my feeling of that which I shall describe. Kindly remember that only a few short years ago, I lived and moved in a physical body similar to yours, and yet today, I stand in the eternal freedom, an ascended being, free forever from the limitations and discord of earth. Having carried with me my perfected physical body into this great presence of life, the mighty I am, which and by whose power my freedom took place. 
Before I go on, will each one of you be kind enough to feel that in every breath you breathe, every heartbeat you experience, every movement, every achievement, it is your own, mighty I am presence, the source of life. That is doing whatever is required to be done in the human octave or through your physical activity. 144. Now if you misqualify that energy which the powers of the presence release to you and through you, then the mistake is yours. The presence of light and life never does or creates one discordant thing. The human requalification of this mighty energy is what is causing the limitations of mankind, the discord and distress. Now returning to my own experience, you today, and I have seen it acting in the feeling world among a great many of the students, and tonight Saint Germain asked me to try and clear this up, you, who are here from other parts of the country can convey that, as the opportunity affords. In recording my own ascension, and that of Mr. Rayborn, many of the students throughout the world have wondered why they could not have a similar service rendered for them. Only your presence of life knows that. We, I consider, were most fortunate, as were Bob, Rex, Nada, and Pearl. Now you will remember there are six of us who so recently moved about in limited bodies similar to yours. Now then, T H E P O I N T I W A N T U T O grasp is T H A T your P R E S E N C E O F life, your H I G H E R M E N T A L body. Is T-H-E-D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-I-N-G factor in W-H-A-T takes place in your L-I-F-E-A-N. D-W-H-A-T can be D-O-N-E for you. T-H-E-R-E is N-O. O-T-H-E-R-A-U-T-H-O-R-I-T-Y. Now then, your higher mental body receives that authority from the presence. Now follow this closely. Your higher mental body, now remember your higher mental body is a form of blazing light, holy perfect, your higher mental body goes to the presence. Notice, as your higher mental body rests in between your human form and the presence, when it wishes to have directions, authority for you in the human octave, the higher mental body ascends to the presence. Stands and talks to the presence, the same as I would stand and talk with you, or the messengers would talk with you. Therefore, try to see how practical all of this is. This point has never been explained in the work, but if you will understand this and realize your higher mental body is the spokesman, or is the releaser of power and energy to you, but it never acts of its own self. It acts through the direction of the presence, ascending into the octave of the presence. That is why this presence never knows one single thing about what is to be done down here, about your troubles and all the conditions because the higher mental body never refers to the presence any discord down here, but it says to the presence. Now what can be done for these conditions that are required? It is a condition of the activity of energy government. Earned by the vibratory action set up, but it neither refers to your personality or to the existing conditions which it wishes to have remedied. It is a marvelous activity of life which for the first time, as far as I know, has ever been attempted to be explained. As you understand that, you will see how the authority of your higher mental body always comes from the presence of life, and in all requirements in the human octave, it knows exactly what is to be done and from the presence, takes the authority for what takes place. Now in the cleansing and purifying of the physical body, this is the continuation of this point I want you to grasp, if you will. Mankind have said, those individuals have been reached, why cannot we? That question has troubled many many students. Again I say to you, your presence is the only authority. Now when your higher mental body sends a call for a service to be rendered by us, it is the authority, and we answer without question. Now note, the light, the higher mental body of Mr. Rayborn and myself made the call to Saint Germain and he answered. Now then, my friends of light, who shall say among the more than 500,000 students of the IAM, today, what your call? anyone's call to their presence might release and do for them. I want you to feel that, if you will, with definite power tonight, but if your call is not answered, never be disappointed. I mean if you get a feeling a certain thing should be done and it is not done, well then, take your presence, as the authority and be happy and at peace. Never be disappointed that something has not occurred according to your outer desire. You cannot possibly know what the powers of the presence see that is best for you, unless you have a very clear connection, 
and most people today do not have it. But with the continued earnest attention to the presence, clearer and clearer daily will come your receptivity to the presence, until you will come to hear clearly and definitely its direction, I mean through the feeling, for perhaps long before you hear otherwise. You will actually hear through your feeling, so clear and definite, as if you heard the spoken word. You can do it. Therefore, just go on and on and on in your application. Never be concerned, but knowing all the time that your application is the power of light in action, that knows no opposite and will produce in the wisdom of your presence, through your higher mental body, absolutely every step to your great and mighty perfection. Don't you see then, how the most possible is being done for you hourly and daily? Then that will remove anxiety or the wonderment, well, what have I done that I haven't this perfection? We have been calling for this, that and the other things. Which is the human always trying to get your attention onto something else besides the presence? You will find since this class, you blessed earnest sincere students, so much less difficulty in holding your attention to the presence, and you will make such dynamic application that your answers will come more and more quickly. Now then remember, Mr. Rayborn had no more idea, in fact not as much as you do, what was going to take place in his life, until Saint Germain sent the messenger into his home. Because that life had been one of every great harmony, his own light made the call, and it had to be answered. In my own experience, my life had been unusually happy and harmonious. My father had been an officer in India for the government, having gone there from England when I was about four years old, and notice how great is the wisdom of those great ones. This one, however, that befriended me so greatly, was not an ascended master, but was a very great master. Now then, I had never met him, my father had never met him. Then how was it, that he was watching over me as a lad and really quite similar to the way Saint Germain watched over this good brother? Oh, that blessed one watched over me from birth, as I know now. Then when he saw my father was going to meet with the release from his physical body, he had everything prepared. Now blessed ones notice this. He had everything prepared and the gentleman whom my father had grubstaked to go to South Africa to the diamond mines, and had never heard a word from him afterwards, had gained a considerable fortune and passed on. Again the great master, seeing that he was going to pass on, made his acquaintance and gained his friendship, so that he would be the one who received the wealth which actually belonged to his benefactor. But having no relatives, that bread cast upon the waters, by my father, returned to me. Now notice this, there is a marvellous thing in it for you, he came, of course I know now, but I did not know then that he was able to transport his body from place to place, and he transported his body from Africa to India and talked to me, knowing that my father would soon pass on. And when he had come forth and given the radiation to our family, he went away. Then when my father was shot and killed, he reappeared and befriending my mother and myself, gave us, brought to us, a part of that fortune, which we needed to go to England. Then as we later re turned to London, he informed us he had deposited in the Bank of England the balance of the fortune which the friend of my father had left. He explained to me in a brief manner saying, on a great mountain in North America you will find a man with a crystal cup who can assist you to your ascension. I comprehended very little of what his words meant at the time, but that was like words of fire branded into my feeling world, and understand that it never left me for a single hour. Those words rang constantly in my ears, so to speak, and then after conditions had so adjusted themselves and we left India returning to London, shortly after my mother passed on, I was left to go on my search. Many years I went on and on with that search. I did not have your application today. I just had to go on following my impulse or feeling, as it prompted me. I had no other means, and yet, I think not for a single day perhaps was I out of the watchful care of that blessed one who had sent me forth on this peculiar search. But think of it, I knew nothing of these great laws, and yet I knew the truth of his words. Something within me knew that they would be fulfilled, so as that search continued, let us pass over those years. Then when I came to Mount Shasta and the day before, I thought, could it be possible? The first time I ever questioned the truthfulness of the master, rather more in wonderment than disbelief but I began to wonder whether or not I was just on some wild imaginary thing. Now watch this, no sooner had that feeling passed through my mind than a charge went through my physical body, 
as though I had touched a powerful electric battery, and I felt so ashamed for even a momentary wondering at the truthfulness of the Great One who had sent me forth. Then that night I slept on the Great Mount Shasta, not dreaming for a moment how near I was to freedom. Who of you today know how near you are to complete freedom? Then when I awakened in the morning, and had very little with me left to eat, just some fruit I had carried along, I started out, and after about two hours I came upon this good brother sitting there on a log, as he thought, waiting for Saint Germain. Then when I felt this great onrush to explain to him what had been said to me in India, the first time in a long time I had felt the impulse to speak of it to anyone, but something in me knew that he would understand. Then when he wished to give me a drink of water and in his hand appeared the crystal cup, and I smiled today, for even in my eagerness and intensity, I could not help but notice the amazement. On his face, when in his hand came the crystal cup, as I know now, the first precipitation that occurred in his hand. Therefore, dear ones, seeing that crystal cup, which was the exact description the master had given me, all the power of my being of years and years of accumulation rushed forward like a mighty torrent. And to the extent that the human self of this blessed one just receded out of the way, the impelling force of that charged energy compelled it, and the light of his presence came down to the heart area, these arms that you see here. And his head and shoulders were such a blazing light that he could scarcely look into it, nor could I. And when his hand suddenly came forth, reached forth and took mine, no one in all the world will ever know until they experience it, what that touch meant. Then as that mighty current of energy, now remember that mighty current of energy was from his own presence, but as that light rushed into me, into my body and my feeling world, it released the power from my own presence. I felt as though, not just from breathing, but I felt as though one gasping, in every cell of my body, if you can understand what I mean. You know how you sort of gasp at some great astonishment? Well, that will give you a fragmentary idea of the feeling that acted in every cell of my body, and what was that? That was the sudden almighty purification of the physical structure of my body. Words just fail utterly to convey to you the feeling of just what that means, but the best we can do is use the words available, and charge the presence to give you the feeling which I asked in the beginning. Then to my utter astonishment, immediately after that charge of the touch of his hands to mine became adjusted, then my body, my feet, left the earth and I ascended as far as his hands would reach. Then H.E. let go and I continued, and of course, in that mighty radiation, I had no thought of human qualities, but just watched the experience. Then as I stood there in the atmosphere, looking down at him, watching him, the gratitude I had that no words or all the volumes in creation could express, there is not such a thing as words to express T-H-A-T-G-R-A-T-I-T-U-D-E, then suddenly I looked down and saw my body had become as a youth. My garments had changed into that of the higher octave and I stood there clothed in raiment that, as a lad of from 10 to 14 years, I had so often dreamed of during sleep. I was clothed in raiment of that kind, and yet, in the morning when I awakened, was so disappointed that I found I had to put on my same old garments again, but this time it was real. This time those dreams of childhood had come true. Those were not dreams, beloved ones. Those were memories of my experience and activity in the higher octaves of light while the body slept. There are thousands, hundred of thousands of people today, who have had quite similar experiences and have retained the memory of things that happened during sleep, some grand and glorious experience, but they mentioned it to someone on awakening in the morning and they said, oh, you must have had rabbit for dinner, and therefore discouraged the individual, causing them to push aside the memory of that magnificent experience. Beloved ones, can you believe me tonight when I tell you, all you do through those human bodies is such a fragment of what you do every night while your body sleeps. If you could see what magnificent bodies you are in. Really, your eternal happiness would be sustained. Now then remember, now I am digressing temporarily, or possibly trying to give you the true feeling of my experience. You today are in a position, the most wonderful among mankind of the centuries. You have come to know of this great presence of life, whose outpost you are in the human octave. As you come to understand that and know that you can call the mighty intelligent energy and power of that presence into your physical body and out into your world, or call it to project the light into your business. Offices, into your affairs, into your activities, take command of it, harmonize it and produce perfection and success in that upon which your attention is fixed, 
nothing in the world can prevent your success and achievement. As long as you will keep your attention off of the human creation about you. That is the power of light. That is the power of your life and its authority to take command of your activity, and by your undivided attention and the power of life, your powerhouse, and fixing it upon the glory of your achievement, sweeping aside every human suggestion, every human appearance. You will go forth like a rocket to your goal of achievement. Nothing in the world can stop it but yourselves. Gentlemen and ladies in the business world, if you only understand that you could, every night before going to sleep, turn your attention to that, great presence, call its mighty light rays forth to take command of your office, your business or activity. And then again in the morning when you awaken, to harmonize and bring everything into perfect divine order, divine justice, and release from its treasure house the limitless supply through your business which is required, you have fulfilled the law of life in the divine order it expects of you and your success would be as certain as you are sitting in this room tonight. I wish I might talk to the people who act through the strike conditions and agitation in your vicinity, and explain to them the mistakes of those conditions, how it but causes greater agitation or distress and greater inharmony. Preventing the order of divine love and justice to take command of individuals, and harmonize them sufficiently for the problems to be governed and solved. Those blessed people do not know that these agitators are but claws of the sinister force that are sent to them to get their attention and get them disturbed so they cannot see and feel and call divine justice into action. Their one thought and feeling is irritation and disturbance, just what the sinister force wants to keep them in privation because nothing has ever come of it. The money they are deprived of during the absence of employment they will never receive because they were acting contrary to the law of life. If they had utilized that same energy and called divine justice into action for themselves and their employer, the problems would have been solved. No one would have been deprived of a dime, and the whole world would have been filled with divine love, divine order, and divine justice, the only permanent solution to anything in the world. Therefore, beloved people, if only mankind could understand. If there were only those of great courage an energy to go forth and explain this to them, what a transformation would take place in the world of industry, because this agitation has been stirring subtly, cunningly for more than twenty years. Therefore, beloved ones, the solution of every individual problem, the solution of national problems and international problems alone, comes permanently through humanity's call to their own God presence, the mighty IAM, and remember those words. Nothing in the world is so powerful. Will you remember, beloved students, that when you say, I am, it is the fiat of the presence, of all life connecting itself right through your human body, its focus in the human octave. That is what mankind needs to know and feel with all the power of their being. Then when they call to that presence of all life, its power is released, its great harmonizing presence, and all that which distresses you will dissolve and disappear before that release of harmony and light that goes forth to fill your world. If you will, beloved students, understand to keep harmony in your feelings. Then keep calling, keep calling, keep calling that presence into action until the momentum is gained and the great power and energy are gathered into your feeling world. Then at any moment of emergency, that great power would rush forth and the thing would be accomplished, b. Cause it is the power of light, knowing no opposite. That is how you can so easily in your calls to your presence. Stay by your application and become master of your conditions in your world. If you saw from the higher octave how often you accept in your feelings, conditions of the appearance world or individuals about you that are distressing or disturbing or limiting, you would be amazed. Feelings are acting in your feeling world of which you are wholly unaware until days or weeks later. That is why you must face yourself, keep happiness acting in your world, and then everyone you contact will feel that happiness and return it again to you. Look dear ones, everywhere the messengers go, people see that great happiness and know that it is real, and every place they move, the hotels and the halls where their meetings are, and every place they go, are blessed extremely by their presence. There is not anyone that does not feel the happiness, the love and goodwill that is pouring forth from them. That is life, the law of life, and as you do the same thing, you will find the same thing in your experience. Now returning again to my experience, beloved ones, as I stood there marveling at the transformation that had taken place, I felt this great current from above. 
Looking up, there came this great marvelous ray of crystal white light which was self. Luminous intelligent substance, and I felt myself quite rapidly ascending into that, until the brilliancy of that light became so great, that I no longer saw this beloved one who had rendered so great a service to me. Then as I realized that great freedom into which I had entered, my joy knew no bounds. And then your beloved Saint Germain clasped my hand and he said to me, accept my congratulations on your freedom. Then as I became adjusted in a few days, as you understand your time, I entered wholly into that great great freedom. I began to reach out through my great feeling world, which had now become crystal clear. All that I had longed for in my life could now be fulfilled. I went here and there and everywhere, never stopping until I had satisfied many many of the longings of my heart, that I had thought and brought back through my memory from sleep. There I found that all those things were real, so very real. Then after some time, I said to Saint Germain, I want to return to that blessed one who rendered me that service, and Saint Germain said, you may, just for a short period. And so with him, I came to visit him. It was near the close of the beloved messenger's work in Chicago, before Saint Germain sent them forth. And that night, as I stood there in the atmosphere looking upon his earnestness, and the lack of the understanding of the people, I thought, what courage he has, and yet, Within him I saw not the slightest feeling of that which seemed to be apparent. Then I said to Saint Germain, I want to return and help continuously in this great work. So when the messengers were in California, I began my continuous activity with the messengers. It has been very wonderful. Can you for a few moments, feel with me what you would feel, to one who had been instrumental in setting you forever free from human limitations? Would you not have eternal everlasting gratitude of the deepest kind? I think you would, and I say this for the messenger's benefit tonight, just a little secret. He wondered after my words to him at the time of my ascension why I had not returned to him sooner, and shall I tell you all tonight? Because my love and gratitude were so overwhelming that it was more than the messenger could endure in its fullness, so I had to subdue it. Yet, when I gave the first dictation in California, I had very great difficulty in controlling it for you do not know what it means when you come into the vibratory action of the human octave in which you have so recently been, and then, when that great gratitude comes forth. Even in my state in which I am, it was not easy to govern that, but I succeeded. Now I always have it quite under control. I want you to feel, beloved friends of light, that everything that was my experience is yours. Now remember, you have known of the IAM less than four years. I searched many years with nothing to sustain me, but my own feelings. Being naturally quite harmonious, it was easy for this impelling inner power to push me on, and push me on and push me on, until finally, the goal was reached. Just so with you, beloved ones, this power of light that beats your heart is pushing, pushing, pushing you on, and you only need the power of your attention earnestly, sincerely with determination to have that freedom, oh, so much more quickly. But dear ones, in heaven's name, since you have come to know this great presence, not that it might not occur, but if some miracle does not occur in your life in a year or two or three or four, for heaven's sake. Don't be discouraged after all the limitations you have gone through throughout the centuries. You would hardly expect to sprout your wings and fly off tomorrow. Now I am prompting you, dear ones. If you will not be so concerned about some great manifestation, but just keep calling the presence forth in a great methodical movement, then all of a sudden you will find the barriers have gone down, and you stand there the victor over all human creation. Now this should be a very great encouragement. As we have watched the progress of the students, the expansion of their light and have seen the enormous changes that have taken place, dear ones, it is the most marvelous miracle ever performed in four years. Now we see every single thing that has taken place in your life during this time, the expansion of your light and all else required. I say this for your encouragement, because it is true, don't believe or feel because some marvelous thing has not taken place in your life you are not progressing, the expansion of your light is not going on. Why think of it? Necessarily, you must still move about in the human octave. You spend on the average 12 hours in contact with the outer world, approximately 8 hours in business, and then the hours at home before and after business, which I think we might approximate at 12 hours. Then what do you do with the other 12 hours? 
Now remember, you still have 12 hours, and you know most people do not require more than 8 hours sleep, some think they require more, but 8 would do very nicely. Then you have 4 hours, which you might utilize very wonderfully. You might even spend 2 hours at the moving pictures, and still have 2 hours left. Now then, we are getting down to the point. What do you think you could do with that 2 hours which is left? You see I am giving you lots of leeway. Think what 2 hours devotion and attention to your mighty I am presence every day, earnestly, would mean to you. It would mean heaven on earth, for it would open the gates of heaven, which is harmony, the mighty I am presence, to you for the limitless supply, the directing intelligence, love, health, harmony, courage, strength and power of achievement. Do you know that if Saint Germain and the Great Ones had not asked mankind to issue these decrees, do you think you would be giving one hour's attention to your presence today? I question it seriously, with all you now might know that it would do for you, now that is just the point to which I want to get you. Now then, is your freedom less important than the things of the outer world, when you did have twelve hours to devote to all the requirements of your business world and your home activities, and you could give four hours to your presence and still have plenty of sleep, then what is the matter? You will pardon me, won't you, if I just ask you to look at yourselves a while? It is wonderful. It is wonderful, beloved ones, and we love you, blessed ones, in your bodies of limitation, you will never know how much, Mr. and Mrs. Rayborn, Bob and Rex, Nada and Pearl and myself. Do you understand, beloved people, in the name of your presence, what we feel for you? Can you for a moment even imagine? When we so recently stood in bodies limited like your own, and have been set free, then do you wonder that we would do everything within our power to help you to that great freedom, which we know you can attain? Dear ones, do you think for one second that Saint Germain and the great host of ascended masters, and the cosmic beings would be pouring forth the limitless energy, the power of divine love and these marvelous instructions of the ascended masters to you? If they did not see it was possible for you to take hold and have your freedom, do you think they would waste that time and energy? Absolutely no. You must know that. Do you think Saint Germain would keep the messengers going forth, when their freedom was due a long time ago because of their willingness to go forth and remain with mankind and give this assistance? Oh, as the fellow said, you just wait. You have not seen nothing yet. You know we Englishmen did not particularly care for the American slang, but I find it is a very wonderful thing. As true as you sit here, many times we can reach individuals through a slang expression, and then we are criticized because ascended masters would use that language. Well, we should worry. So beloved ones, in all the joy of our hearts we want you to feel that with your attention, harmony and cooperation, there is not one thing that could not be done for you not one thing that your heart desires. Now bear with me for just a moment while I call your attention to the messengers. Look at their struggles for years, and really, even before this understanding came to them, they had powerful tenacity of application, but it was not producing the results. But look, from the time in their home when Saint Germain dictated that first discourse that you have in the book of the I Am Discourses, calling their attention to this mighty presence, where it was and what it would do for them, from that hour to this. Their application has gone forth with quicker and more powerful answers continually. That is where you stand today. They look neither right nor left. Neither did they listen to gossip or anything else. If anybody started to pour that stuff into their ears, they shut it off. That is what you have to do, provided you want to be free quickly. Don't you see, dear ones, every moment you listen to gossip or destructive things, criticism, Condemnation or judgment is just dragging you down and down, deeper and deeper into the limitations of earth. Now take your choice. If you insist on going on with those qualities that deprive you of every good thing, I say, God bless you, and pass on my way. Dear ones, now I know the staff will pardon me if I use this expression, but I ask you in their presence, if they have any idea what it would mean to go out from the heart of the messengers into the outside world and begin as they were before. You have no idea. They have some idea, not as much as I wish they had, but I use this as an illustration, dear ones, because as long as human qualities assert themselves, they are holding individuals from their freedom. 
now the glory of the progress of the staff has been the most marvelous thing ever witnessed, and I say that sincerely. You today, as a body of students, and I mean this and all over America and in other parts of the world, the transformation in your feeling world is the most magnificent thing ever witnessed. Therefore, tonight I want you to feel how great our love and desire is to be of service to you continuously. When the messengers leave your city, don't think for one moment that you are left alone. Don't ever let that thought or feeling come in, but just rejoice more greatly that you have the outpouring of your presence. I say to you blessed ones, who might have the appearance of financial limitation, don't give way to that. That miserable thing has no power in your world. I don't care if you haven't a dime tonight, you might have a thousand dollars in the morning. Just. Keep on accepting all the ascended master miracles that you can think of. Don't ever let your human talk back to you and say, well, where is it? Say, shut up. Now I tell you, when you will talk to those human qualities that try to discourage you like that, it will soon stop it, for it sees you have your backbone straightened up and you are going to take dominion, and very little will it try to intrude itself upon you. But you have to take your stand, dear ones, in all these appearances. After all, dear ones, all your problems and conditions are just the most glorious opportunity to prove the powers of the presence, with dynamic energy and call it forth, like you were driving a post. The law requires that great inner power of that great firm determination, mighty I am presence, I insist on this, and I mean it. It won't take many of those feelings released, until you will be seeing results. Dear hearts, don't make your decrees individually for some emergency with a wavering, quivering feeling within you. Still yourself. Take command of your feeling and then issue your decree with a mighty power of conviction, and you will find the results. I don't mean you have to speak as loud as I do, but be firm. It is a magnificent thing. Dear ones, every word that we speak to you is within your possibility of fulfillment and very quickly. That is the point. In the understanding of your presence, you do not have to wiggle around for years, but just straighten yourself up and say, Why, you human creation, now you are finished. You cannot bind me any longer, because I have found my presence of all life, which dissolves every vestige of you. You may be my creation, but I call on the law of forgiveness for it, and you are done for. I am telling you, dear ones, you will find your release. Do not yield to these conditions any more. Your application will set you free if you feel it, but of course, if you just do it from here up, you don't get much result. But if you will loose the feeling from here, then automatically that power goes forth, just like it grasps the condition, and holds it in obedience to your call. Therefore, stand firm in your presence, beloved ones. I am grateful and thank you and Saint Germain for this opportunity, in my humble efforts, to give you my courage, strength and feeling of dominion over all human things, and I am sure you will all rejoice. I may not be so great as they are, but still the Divine Director, Victory, the Goddess of Liberty, the Queen of Light and various ones have offered their assistance, and why not? We have many ways and means of accomplishment by the power of light, beloved ones. It is one. Dareful to know that you are the victory of the mighty IAM, without ever having to use a destructive force. Is it not wonderful, when mankind have killed each other for century after century over nothing, and today you are coming to know your victory without having to ever use a single destructive force? Remember, when the messengers ask you to use the words, blast and annihilate, it is for your blessing and freedom and for blasting and annihilating limiting destructive conditions. It does not mean physical bodies, but it renders the most marvelous service in the universe to bless protect and harmonize human bodies that are out of harmony almost completely. Don't you see, you cannot harm a physical body by calling the power of light to blast that condition that may be handling it. You cannot harm that physical body. You are calling the power of the presence into action to do these things, which is love, wisdom and power in action, and that presence won't do any harmful thing. Therefore, don't hesitate to use these terms to release power and feeling to do these things. For instance, suppose an individual had drawn a weapon to take your life and you raised your hand instantly and called the presence to blast that. Well, the presence, the light, would turn back upon that individual his own destructive force. That would be no fault of yours. 
You have a right to your protection and you are certainly foolish if you don't use it. Would you go out and lie down and let the wild animals eat you up, just because they might be ruined? Well, that is what you are doing with these destructive forces of human creation, as long as you let them govern you. So do not yield to those conditions longer. Once you did not understand, but now you do. Absolutely face about and silence all human qualities and action, and as you call your presence into action, the full power of that will take its dominion, and so much more quickly than you realize. Do you know the students who have known this work for four years, had they only known it in the beginning? Could have been absolutely free in every way today? But think of it, think of it, dear ones, oh, it is such a short time even at that, but think of the power, think of the force, the assistance that has been necessary to dissolve and consume conditions which were weighing upon mankind. And preventing their clearness of comprehension and application of these great laws. I could cite you a hundred thousand people of the TAM, students who have, well, I will just approx. Imate it, twenty times in these four years, could have had their complete freedom had they stood by their application at certain points at which they had arrived, but they allowed human suggestions and conditions to come in and interrupt them temporarily and then they had to go on again. If you were fishing, but you are not supposed to eat things that have eyes, but if you were fishing, I mean when you used to go fishing, and you had a nice one on the hook and your line was way out, you know, quite a distance, and you begin to pull that in. And you go a couple inches and then you think, I don't want to take it too fast, because I want to enjoy this more. And that poor little fellow out there, he may not want to come in so fast. You take it a little at a time, and you wait a while and you wonder how he is getting along out there. Then you try it again. Do you know, that is just what the blessed students have been doing. They are wonderfully enthusiastic for a while, and somebody comes along and tells them some discouraging story about the messengers. Then they begin to lull. Then the messengers come along and they brace up and go ahead again. Then, the messengers go on and they try it again. Well, that is not necessary. You can keep your momentum going right straight from the start if you would not listen to human gossip and that kind of thing. You know, dear ones, we have talked, the Miz. Sengers have talked a lot about those things here but it is because they love you so much that they want you to be thoroughly cognizant of the conditions that will set you free. Those things, oh, the momentum of centuries, beloved ones, the desire to gossip, judge, condemn, all of which is a condition of inharmony which is preventing the powers of your presence, giving you the perfection it has always wanted you to have. If mankind do that, the fault is theirs. If they do not want to be free, that is the way to keep from it, but the way to be free is, when discordant thought and feeling act, keep your attention on the presence, and saw wood, not like when you are asleep, but I mean by sawing wood, your earnest, sincere, dynamic application. There is not one thing in your world that can stand before it. We have wished so many times that every earnest, sincere, I am, student in America might see for one moment from the higher octave, all that has been accomplished in four years. It is the most marvelous thing ever in the history of the earth, and think, you are only just getting started now. What do you think another year or two years would be with your tremendous dynamic application, I mean to you individually, as well as your city, state and nation? It is magnificent, it is marvelous, and the opportunity is with you. W-I-T-H all my love I call F-O-R-T-H-T-H-E. P-O-W-E-R-S-O-F-I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E-L-I-G-H-T-A-N-D Blessing. M-I-G-H-T-Y-I-M Presence, G-R-E-A-T-H-O-S-T-O-F-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D Masters. M-I-G-H-T-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N-S-O-F-L-I-G-H-T. G-R-E-A-T Cosmic Beings A-N-D-G-R-E-A-T Cosmic L-I-G-H-T. E N F O L D T H E S E B E L O V E D ones T O N I G H T every I A M S T U D E N T in America A N D T H E W O R L D A N D H O L D T H E M so close in T H Y M I G H T Y E M B R A C E O F L I G H T T H A T N O L O N G E R does T H E A T T E N T I O N of A N Y O N E waver in T H E S L I G H T E S T. 
but J U S T H O L D T H E M O B E D I E N T T H A T T H E G R E A T P R E S E N C E O F L I F E allows T H E F U L L P O W E R O F T H Y M I G H T Y C U R R E N T S O F E N E R G Y T O F L O W F O R T H H A R M O N I Z E beautify P E R F E C T T H E I R W O R L D A N D supply each O N E W I T heavy G O O D T H I N G C H A R G E I N T O T H E I R Feely N G W O R L D N T H A T M I G H T Y sustained A C T I V I T Y A N D C O M P R E H E N S I O N all T H A T T H O U D O S T M E A N T O T H E S E H U M A N forms. Give T H E M T H E feeling T H E quick M A N I F E S T I O N O F T H E A N S W E R T O T H E I R call. T H A T T H E C O U R A G F R O M T H E O U T E R stamp O I N T M A C O M E I N T O A C T I O N W I T H F U L L P O W E R A N D sustain T H E M U N T I L T H E Y G E T T H E F U L L F E E L I N G O F T H E victory O F T H E application and T-H-E power O-F-L-I-G-H-T releases I-N-T-O-T-H-E-I-R-W-O-R-L-D-T-O-D oits B-R-F-E-C twerk. Cleanse. Purify A-N-D-H-O-L-D its D-O-M-I-N-I-O-N T-H-E-R-E-A-N-D-G-I-V T-H-E-M-T-H-E-I-R heart's desire. Cause T-H-E-M-T-O-U-N-D-E-R-S-T-A-N-D-T-H-A-T-T-H-E-H-E-A-R-T desires only P-E-R-F-E-C-T-I-O-N only every C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-I-V-E activity. T-H-E-R-E-F-O-R-E ever desirio foot H-E-H-E-A-R-T-S-H-O-U-L-D-B-F-U-L-F-I-L-L-E-D. A N D N O W in T H E A C K N O W L E D G M E N to foot H E presence. Every P O W E R O F T H E universe G O E T H I N T O action T O F U L F I L L every S I N C E R E desire O F T H E H E A R T. T H A T M E A N S T H A T desire is God, T H E M I G H T Y I A M P R E S E N C E, in action. Cause each one, O, G R E A T powers of L I G H T, T O F E E L T H I S A N D have I T sustained, T H A T in every P A R T I C L E O F T H E I R A P P L I C A T I O N T H E Y R R E M I N D, Ed O F T H E glory and T H E victory T H A T is T H E R E. I T H A N K U. June 5th, 1938. N E W York C I T Y, N E W York. Beloved friends of America, not so long ago I was an Englishman and my name is David Lloyd. In India, as a lad, I was informed by a master who was not ascended, that on a great mountain in America I would find a man with a crystal cup and when I had found that individual, I would have found the one who could assist me to my ascension. I understood very little what those words meant, but something registered within my feeling world that impelled me on, with a power unquenchable and irresistible. Shortly after that, my father was shot and killed in his service for the English government in India. Then my mother and I came to London. In the meantime, quite a legacy had been left to us by a former friend of my father's, therefore, in my hands was the means to carry on the search which the great master in India had called to my attention. Then after four years, my mother passed on, and I began my search. I came to your city of New York, and thereafter began the eventful activities of a human life. Today, I wish to assert to the whole world that 176. Mankind's ascension is a reality. Mankind is not limited to the things to which their previous conceptions have bound them. 
Today, I stand a proof to the world, the universe, that this good brother's experiences recorded in unveiled mysteries of my ascension are true, and I ought to know. It is said that it is difficult for an Englishman to immediately accept a joke, well, if you do not accept this, the joke is on you. Therefore, beloved ones, allow me to convey to you something, briefly of course, of my experience. Let us forget the years of search and enter into my arrival on the side of Mount Shasta where the inner impelling force led me. This good brother had gone there, as he thought, to meet beloved Saint Germain and found myself instead. When he would have offered me a drink of water, the crystal cup appeared in his hand. When I saw it, I knew my search was ended. Beloved ones, I explained to him what had taken place, and he said to me, well, what am I supposed to do? With all the force of my being released, I said to him, ask God to show you what to do. Ask the God in you, who does know. To all outer activities of the earth, the most astonishing thing ever witnessed on earth took place. His human self receded out of the way, and the light from his own, mighty I am presence, which is above him, released its power and might, and his physical body, to the heart, became a blazing light, so blazing that I could scarcely look into it. As his hands took mine, my feet left the earth, and mark you beloved people, I was in hiking garments. When my feet left the earth, when I had been raised as far as his hands would reach, he let go, and I continued until my feet were perhaps twenty feet above his head. There, standing in the atmosphere, the transformation took place from the human into the divine. My clothing suddenly dissolved into that of the higher octave and looking down, I found myself clothed in raiment indescribable. Observing my flesh, I found that I had returned to the fullness of youth, all appearance of age having left that form. Good people of earth, let me tell you this is a mighty reality and as a consequence of it, I am A-F-R-E-E-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D being living in T-H-E-O-C-T-A-V-E-O-F-L-I-G-H-T. Everything there is just as tangible to us as your physical world is to you here, and the day that mankind understands that, and will give sufficient attention to the power of life, which is their own God presence, the mighty I am. Then they too will know and experience these transcendent activities. While they are perfectly natural, of course, to the mind unaccustomed they seem transcendent. But you beloved mankind of today, your beloved. Brother of light, Jesus Christ, left the example to mankind. As a lad I loved that idea, as nobody in this world could find words to express, but all I contacted caused me to believe that such a thing was impossible for the ordinary human today. We find today, that is all a mistake. The ascension is intended for every human being on earth, and every human being who will give sincere attention to their mighty I am presence, will find that is possible for them, if not in this embodiment, then the following one. Remember, beloved ones, when you are free and all the pent-up desires for understanding, for light, for the glory of all that your life meant to you, finds its release, and you can go where you will in your ascended body of light, just as tangible in its own octave as your physical body is here. It is a finer substance, it is true, but we can raise and lower the vibratory action of those bodies and make ourselves visible to the physical sight or not, as we choose. It is stated by the Ascended Masters that in the years ahead, there will be many of them come forth in their tangible visible bodies to mankind, to bring the great everlasting proof of the words that Jesus said to humanity to bless them forever. With that goal held before the attention of all people, it will start the raising activity of life, through their Aten. Tie on, and thus bring the fullness of its infinite power into dominion. Therefore, beloved ones, place your attention where you can obtain this understanding, and your presence of all life will give it to you. Try to feel and realize that in the instruction which Saint Germain has brought forth is the key that opens the door to the fullness of your infinite power of light. Turn your attention there and let the proof of your own mighty I am presence come forth into your life and world. It is a great joy and wonderful to realize that so few years ago I stood in a limited physical body similar to yours. Yet today, I am a wholly free being, a perfect being, free from all that has ever bound or limited me. Remember, beloved ones, all this came to me through the assistance of the light which beats the heart of this form standing before you. Do you realize what that means to you? If the light of his own God presence could release itself and render me that assistance, then what do you think his assistance and radiation is rendering you? 
I shall call to your attention a thing that has never been mentioned thus far. His light together with your beloved lotus is the power of the full ray directed from the heart of God, the eternal infinite presence of life. Those two together make the full power of that ray which is pouring forth its mighty radiance. And blessing to you and to all students throughout America and the world. It is acting through the higher mental body of each one. Then there is no limit to what that power and radiation can pour forth to bless you, beloved mankind, and your fellow students. Therefore, in the glory of all you are today, turn your attention, your whole feeling world upon and to the power of your great presence, the mighty I am. Then, as you conceive the goal of life, your freedom through the ascension, think of it, you can give assistance without limit by the infinite power of its action. You will say to me then, these great beings, why have they not done more for mankind? Because mankind drew themselves into the condition which they experience today by their own volition, and therefore, they must come out of that. In other words, climb out by their attention to the presence of all life, which alone can bring them out of those conditions with which they have surrounded themselves. Let me assure you today, beloved ones, that mankind is receiving relief indescribable by the power of radiation sent forth through the great body of students in America, and the other parts of the world. One day you will comprehend what it means to send out a decree, a command, a call, that sends forth a vibratory action just as tangible as you see the activities of the water of the ocean. Those waves go forth just as tangible, in fact more tangible than your radio waves. Therefore, mankind is not any longer standing in the limitations of human consciousness, but have before them the ascended master's instruction of the great presence and activity of life, here in their possession to study, apply and have all that life holds for them through a perfectly natural, normal, practical means. All these things that the messengers have taught you are practical. There is no thing in the world more practical, and that is what mankind needs to understand in order to have the full benefit which is intended for them, and they could have. But unless you will remove from your feeling world and consciousness the doubts and unbeliefs acquired by human concepts, by taking on other human limited concepts, do you not see as long as you reach out and accept the opinions of mankind embodied, you are dealing wholly in human concepts. Suppose they have a very great inspiration, there is no assurance within their feeling world that it is correct. It might be ever so correct, but still they have not the feeling that it is correct, there is always some question in the mind. But today, in the messenger's experience with Saint Germain, myself and others, he knows abso. Lutely from the inner and outer standpoint these great laws. He knows they cannot and do not fail with anyone who will earnestly apply them. Keep out of their attention and feeling world the limitations and conditions which mankind have created and they seem to be living in. Now beloved ones, as long as you care to go on in your limitations, the privilege is yours, but if you care to listen to the messengers and believe and try to apply, and by the application prove to yourselves that these great laws are true, then you too will know through your own self that they are true. Now, the need today of mankind is to be careful, because the atmosphere of earth is charged with human discordant creation, vicious disembodied entities and all that kind of thing in which mankind are moving. Then if they do not understand that there are these two conditions which they must meet, and ignore the lower, then they are not very apt to reach the height. There are many lives that are pure enough that they are in no danger of contact on the psychic or astral world, which are one and the same thing, which means human discordant destructive creation, beloved ones. The Catholics call it purgatory, but it is one and the same thing. It is from the surface of the earth to approximately 7,000 feet, and all of this accumulation of the discord of mankind is in that. If you are an occult student, let me assure you that there is no gradation of the astral world. It is in one octave and there is no good thing in it. Now we have been there and know what we are talking about, therefore, be advised by those who are free to go where they please and bring you correct direct information of the activities and conditions of life. All that condition, though it be destructive, is wrongly qualified energy of life, and one day must all be redeemed. Now how do you redeem a thing? Not by the old idea, but you redeem it by the power and use of the violet consuming flame set into action by your own God presence, the mighty I am. That is how you come into your freedom. The question has been in many minds, how about myself and Mr. Rayborn, who did not know of these great laws long before our ascension? 
well, do you think the wisdom of our mighty I am presence through our higher mental bodies did not know what was coming? You have forgotten that perhaps. But nevertheless, the higher mental body knows what is coming long before the individual. Therefore, when my attention was called to that possibility and continued to dwell upon that, it gave my higher mental body an opportunity to prepare my feeling world, and while I did not know it outwardly, yet that power and action, identically the same you are using. Today, was set into action by the higher mental body and the ascended masters, who saw what was coming. You today, are having the identical assistance from the great divine director which I had then, and did not know it. I want you to see how absolutely practical my experience was, for you too, one day, will know just exactly what I mean and the truth of which I am speaking. Is it not wonderful to know that all the doubts and fears of mankind have no power when once you come into the knowledge of your great presence of life? You can have taken out of your world all the doubts and fears that ever existed there, or were ever accumulated, if you want to do it but you have to brace up and be strong and firm in your determination to have your freedom, to have your understanding, to have your supply. To have your health, just as determined as you would be if you were underwater and wanted your breath. You would want it, wouldn't you? That is just the position you stand in today. As I understand it now, I too, like many others, did not comprehend the intensity which was acting in my feeling world from the time the master in India called my attention to the possibilities of the future for me, but now in my freedom. I see and know definitely how very intense that feeling had accepted those few words, a very indefinite thing concerning the location of where I was to find this good brother, but the law of life is unerring. If mankind could release all uncertainty in their feeling and turn wholly to the presence of life, not one person would make a single mistake again, because the presence of life stands ever ready to pour its mighty directing intelligence. Notice the chart, beloved ones. You have the power of infinite intelligence anchored within your heart, your physical heart, and then tell me that you cannot receive from the great presence of life its freedom, its directing intelligence. Be sensible, dear people, see the proof of life before you. That chart is accurate, and if you will understand that and give attention to it, you will find how quickly will drop away from your world and your bodies all barnacles of human creation which have been drawn there. But remember, beloved mankind, there is obedience necessary and life demands cleanliness and purity. If you have made mistakes, call on the law of forgiveness with mighty sincerity and determination and then don't look back. Don't look back I say to you, beloved mankind, and beloved students. There is where you make your great mistake. Don't condemn yourselves because of your mistakes that you discover now, but turn wholly to the great presence of life. You may be sure it does not condemn, so why condemn yourself? This great light, beloved students, is the greatest thing before mankind ever in the history of the earth, and your beloved benefactor, never in the world until you are ascended will you understand and know what he means to you, what he means to America and the world. Let him and the great ones who are assisting, set you free. When I see what has been offered within the past eight months to the students, it is the most amazing thing ever witnessed, even from the higher octaves of light. When these great beings will charge their mighty qualities into your world to give you assistance, as the mighty victory and others have done, then the mighty divine director assisting you to dissolve and consume every particle of your human accumulation and creation, will release you from the pressure of that which you cannot imagine. Then you will find yourself in the position where your call to the great presence of life brings its instantaneous answer, and you will know that you have entered into life as originally intended. How far away the whole world has drawn itself from the reality of life. The human concepts imposed upon the great truth of life, what an unhappy thing it has been. The human has thought throughout the centuries that it was the door, taking all credit to. The human form for whatever little was accomplished there was its limitation, there was the unhappiness brought about the human form. Beloved ones, today you stand ready, willing to have your great freedom. Do not accept anything else. Oh, do not, I plead with you, allow effects in the outer world to still disturb you, when above you is the goal of all life and the tool within your hand to dissolve and dismiss from your pathway, in your call to the presence, every obstruction that seems to be there. Beloved people, 
beloved students, do you not realize by this time that within your understanding and acceptance of your own God presence, there is no reason why a single obstruction should longer remain in your pathway. If it does, the fault is yours. The fault is yours, because you allow your feelings to keep accepting the appearance world, which is mankind's creation. Don't forget that. Everything in the human world is mankind's own creation. It is just limitation of some description, therefore, if you accept that, you allow it, oh, not only allow it, but you invite it to come and act in your world. Do you realize how, by your attention, you have constantly invited disturbance, imperfection, and accidents into your world? If you knew, beloved ones, what conversation, what contemplation, discussions of destructive things mean, you would not do it. Now. You might say, how about the messengers calling your attention to these things? A wholly different thing. That is instruction to teach you the law, but when you deliberately enter into the discussion and revolving, revolving and revolving of discordant things, that is an invitation by your attention to that very quality to act in your world, and it is bound to do it, because you have called it. Now then, it is easy enough to know a thing and not accept it in your world. For instance, take for illustration or attention the imperative need of understanding there are black magicians in the world. Well, if you do not know they are there, they act in your feeling world and drag you down into limitations and distress, and then, too late, you find how tangible they were. Beloved ones, you cannot run away from a thing. To deny a thing is foolish. However, these conditions exist in the world of mankind. What makes it possible for a disappointed individual to become a black magician, in other words, a destructive being? How do they gather such power to harm mankind? Because of mankind's own destructive accumulation, energy wrongly qualified constantly about mankind, which they seize upon and draw it and turn it upon mankind to harm them. Oh, they are cunning, don't make any mistake about it. When they see an individual whose light is expand, in that they can seize upon, and connect them with the psychic world, they will do it, so watch out. It is nothing to be afraid of, but be careful. Know and be sure that you are connected with your own God presence, and receive its direction and don't listen to something else. Dear people, the higher mental bodies of these two messengers render tremendous service to mankind. Don't get any idea that they are directing you to do certain things. The black magician will even project a body similar to the messengers and try to make believe that the messengers are misdirecting you. Now watch out. They are not all gone yet, but they are certainly taking their departure rapidly. You would never stop rejoicing if you knew how their plans have been frustrated in the past eight months. They had taken hold of certain individuals in physical embodiment in all parts of the world, and they had placed them in the principal large cities and acted through them, but now since your call, which had to come from your octave, that makes it possible to dissolve the cloak of invisibility. Then they will soon cease to be, and that is the joy of all mankind and a blessing and protection. Dear ones, you will never know until your ascension, you could not possibly know what these beloved messengers have meant to mankind. Beloved ones, I am so eternally grateful that the great Light within your heart enables you to feel, to understand and to enable you to pour out that great great love to them, which is to life. You might think it was to these physical forms, but still, it is to life and that great outpouring is the open door to your release. Mankind must love, not with the human sense, but with the power of divine love from their presence, and when they do, their door will be open wide to all the perfection life holds for them. Only a few of the group leaders of the world have begun to have just a little idea of what the messengers mean. But when you really know your presence, and when you know that the appearance world is but an appearance and has no power, then you are not in any anxiety or concern about the appearance world or the fear that mankind can harm or limit you. Know that no longer can mankind limit each other, but remember in all your application and intense desire for freedom, that nothing can harm you but yourselves, and if you will not allow your attention to go out or contemplate destructive things, you will not find destruction in your world. I urge you, beloved students, guard your feelings, your speech, your conversation. Don't get together and buzz away on destructive things. Now I am in earnest, greatly. If you do that thing, you invite the quality that you are discussing. Know a thing, give your decree and forget it. 
Just like this good messenger and your beloved lotus, when something comes to their attention to be handled, they issue their mighty decree and so far as they are concerned, it does not exist. That is how you take your attention off a thing and give it to the presence, which is all-powerful to govern, control, dissolve and consume it. This is imperative. We want to do a tremendous work in New York, and I am very grateful that you have found a friend who has made it possible for these broadcasts to go forth, which is the opening of the great outpouring of the attention of mankind to this great law. I am sure it will only be the beginning of other activities through other parts of America, where mankind can have the opportunity to know this great law and the great presence. As I look among the students, as I often move among them, seeing where assistance might be given, beloved ones, not that you should ever intrude anything upon anyone, but don't have any fear or questioning in your feeling when the opportunity is offered for you to speak of this great law. And when you speak, speak with assurance and with firm determination and certainty in your mind or don't mention it, because, dear ones, the human is very peculiar as. You must have found out by this time. Therefore, if it feels the slightest uncertainty within you, it says, oh well, that is someone's imagination working over time. When you speak with positive assurance, then that human says, well, that fellow knows what he is talking about. Believe me, beloved ones, when you have seen the messengers with that great invincible courage, power and strength to present this law of life to mankind in spite of their viciousness and unbelief, and the victory they have won, then you must know the light is the power. Therefore, feel it in yourselves. Of course the messenger, through his experiences, knows absolutely from first-hand experience. But you, if the light of your heart has accepted this great truth, then you too know, just as sure as the messenger does, through actually experiencing it. Will you allow me to repeat that? Beloved ones, when your heart has accepted this great light and understanding, then you too are just as sure, because it is the light that knows in the physical structure, and when you have accepted that, you know just as sure as the messenger does, the truth of this great law. Therefore, in that acceptance you have not only the infinite power of light in the universe rushing to your assistance, but you have the assistance of the ascended masters, the legions of light, the great cosmic beings, and the great cosmic light, and may I call your attention again today, that this cosmic light which the great ones speak about is not something static in space. It is consciously directed mighty currents of light and energy from that which you have come to know as the great central sun, which is the heart or focus, and the light of this great system of planets and others, that is the source of being. That all exists in the system of planets and others over which it governs but do not begin to reach out and want to know all that exists in the system of planets and the universe before you free yourselves. You have quite sufficient to do. Now then, why do I call your attention to that? Because dear ones, the human gets strange ideas at times and it wants to begin to reach out, reach out and reach out everywhere, when it should stay at home and give its attention where perfection is, then in the wisdom of that great presence, one day, naturally, will come the full explanation. But sometimes just a little bit of egotism gets going in the human feeling and it says, oh, I get all swelled up and I want to be the authority. Well, the human never can be the authority. Only as it calls to its great presence of life will it become the authority, and then it is the wisdom of the presence. So beloved ones, remember you are the most for to. Nate, most fortunate of beings. In the happiness, and as I look at your garments, how wonderful is your great and willing obedience to clothe yourselves in the colors that are constructive and powerful. You may wonder sometimes when your beloved lotus gets pretty strong and powerful concerning colors, well, you must thank her forever, because let me tell you, beloved ones, do you know that in the higher octaves the colors black and red are unknown, never have existed and never will. But the difficult point for the human who wants to hang on to those things, is that it always comes back and says, well, how about your flag? then it thinks it has gotten you. Well, when you think that the red in your flag represents the human blood shed for the freedom of America, and that human blood is red because of the imperfection in it, then is not the explanation complete. Oh, dear ones, when you have freed yourselves from imperfection, your blood will be like ours, a golden liquid, and you will all have the delicate pink complexion which you would like, and you won't have to give it assistance either. Think what a lot of time it would save. 
then your body is not constantly changing its form, having a chance to get new clothing larger, then smaller. That eternal body of light never changes its symmetry, always the same, beautiful and perfect. You know I had a masculine body. I never gave much thought to how mankind might or should try to beautify and perfect themselves, but when I suddenly became aware how very changed my form was from my outer form, when the beginning of my ascension took place, then I realized how perfect life is and how beautiful life is. You blessed ones, did you quite understand when the messenger called yesterday for you to be clothed in those garments, seamless garments of light, did you quite understand what he meant and what that meant to you? Do you quite understand? I think not. However, in his great earnest call that service was rendered. Those garments will remain yours, and while invisible, yet in those garments aside from your feeling world, will be charged the quality of the ascensions taking place today. Please claim it please accept it please qualify it to be eternally sustained and active for you. Now beloved ones, my joy in this heart-to-heart -heart talk with you has been very great, and may that great love that has poured out from my presence, I am standing right here, you should see me, and may that ever be a memory of my words, my love, my strength, and may it be an eternal memory to enfold you. That just so recently my victory was won. Think of it, it is only a few years, beloved ones. Try to feel that great reality for yourselves. Let me remind you in closing, beloved ones, the greatest glory in all human life is in your earnest call to your presence of life for your ascension in this embodiment. If for any reason you do not accomplish it, then you would be certain to in the next, because T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T desire O-F-O-N-E-E-M-B-O-D-I-M-E-N-T-B-E-C-O-M-E-S-T-H-E-C-O-M-P-U. L S I O N O F T H E N E X T. It is a law of life acting within you. See how no single effort toward perfection can ever in the universe be lost. Try to retain the memory and hold that before you as often as you can. Then you will know as you go from one victory to another that every one is a step on that golden stairway of eternal light, leading ever on and on into the goal of all life. Its perfection which comes alone through the ascension, is for all mankind who want to have it. The unfortunate individuals who turn aside say, oh no, this cannot be true, the messenger's imagination is working over time. Well, just so unfortunate are they. As a parting word I want to say to you, beloved mankind, how unfortunate the ministers and their frightful responsibility when they, to their congregation and over the radio, condemn these messengers and this light. They have made the greatest mistake of all of their many mistakes and too late they will see that. So I say to you, do not be caught, do not be held by. Human opinion in its many ramifications, but go on in your attention to your own, God presence. I say to you, beloved mankind, if you never heard of or saw the messengers again, remember that your attention to your own, God presence which they have asked you to give, is the only doorway in the universe to your freedom from limitations, to your perfect health and happiness. And all that makes for the blessing of mankind. They have not asked anything but your undivided attention and adoration to your presence of all life, the mighty I am, and it will take care of the rest. So give it, if you wish your freedom. My love and that of the great host of ascended masters enfolds you forever and may we have the privilege of charging that garment of light to give you its radiance more and more powerfully each day. I thank you. August 23, 1938 Oakland, California. 100% GROUP. I greet you, beloved ones, in the name and the power of freedom and victory. While I could not be present with you last night, I have since received the glory of all the blessings that came to you. I trust when I say this, you will not be disappointed. It was the beloved Jesus' intent to give this dictation, but he was required with beloved Saint Germain in Europe so tremendously tonight, that I was asked to take his place. Europe, never in her history, needed the help as now. The last lash of the destructive sinister force is striking at Europe, trying to drive out of those nations all respect for divinity. Precious people, you have no more idea than an infant what is actually going on there. I have just come from there, and I was with Saint Germain last night in this final tremendous effort to stem the tide there. The momentum of energy that has been released must some way be dissolved. 
As was in Russia, all respect, honor, and attention is being driven away from divinity, so is the same sinis. 199. Terthing going on in Germany and Austria. Dear people, the pity of that condition, and I am speaking of that tonight, beloved ones, because of the power I know you have in this understanding to give that assistance. Your mighty individual calls to that, great presence of all life, will give that assistance to your fellow man there. You cannot imagine the condition and the poor unfortunate people in those countries, not knowing which way to turn, looking to first one then the other, hoping for a solution and peace. Therefore, beloved ones, whenever a few moments are yours, if not working, you can make it audibly or silently, call to the, mighty I am presence, and the great cosmic beings to render every possible service to Europe and the Orient. You have in the past thought and talked of the Dark Ages. My dear ones, it was not a fragmentary thing to what is taking place in those countries today, and yet, knowing the powers of light, I still have great hope. When I came as a lad, at the passing of my father in India, to England, I heard these whisperings of the communistic activity, and in the pretense of bringing a solution of mankind's problems, even the instigators of that, at that time, never dreamed of what it would turn out to be. The sinister destructive creation of Mankind, having become so vicious, seized upon everything to try to destroy mankind, and I frankly say to you from actual observation, if ever the clutches of the sinister force gets its claws upon America, as it has Europe and the Orient today, mankind would be destroyed. Therefore, I say to you, beloved Americans, and I say this, and through the power of the air currents must it go to every, IAM, student in America and the world this night, for their assistance, which they alone can give. Perhaps you do not understand that you wield a power unknown to the mass of mankind, because you have so gradually come into it, and naturally, it should seem natural to you, yet do not pass it by, beloved ones. In the constant contemplation of the change which has taken place in you in just two or three years. My dear people, if you could see with the all-seeing eye of God within you, the change that is within you in your feeling world, it would be the most joyful magnificent thing on the face of this earth, and you who are really sincere. Think of how the light has expanded within you, the power of the universe. You are dealing, beloved ones, with the greatest power that exists, the power of your, mighty I am presence, and not only that, but the great host of ascended masters and the great cosmic beings, and even the great cosmic light that is coming to the assistance of mankind, because it is imperative. Do you think life sent forth from the great source of all life, that which you know as the great central sun? Do you think that life wants to be a failure after those hundreds of thousands of centuries? Beloved mankind, you have lived for hundreds of thousands of years, and remember, beloved ones, since the last golden age upon Atlantis, very little progress has been made, because individuals who knew the law and held the authority over the people withheld from the people this great law which they could have given. Why do you think that at the time of Jesus, when such a great sweep of illumination and freedom could have come to mankind, the fanaticism of the priesthood caused the crucifixion of your blessed ascended master Jesus and covered the light which he brought? After two hundred years, they clothed it so cunningly that mankind has never been able to understand its meaning since. Today, when Saint Germain has brought forth this clear magnificent understanding of life openly, again bringing to the world the full understanding of the, mighty I am, and all that it means to mankind, the very life of the world, the very life of your bodies, then is there hope for mankind. While I do not want you to feel unduly responsible, yet, you have the authority and power in your understanding today, to wield a power and assistance unparalleled on earth since the last golden age. Think what it means to launch forth this understanding of the, mighty I am presence, in the face of its having been covered so many hundreds of centuries the power gaining in the human destructive qualities and creation, because mankind did not know how to dissolve it. But now today, in the power of your mighty decrees which are amplified and assisted by the great host of ascended masters and the cosmic beings, the greatest power of dissolving and consuming of the destructive forces ever known in the world, through any age, has taken place. And the greatest hope of all of us in the prevention of the destruction of Europe and the Orient coming to America, is the dissolving of the war entity. We know that the momentum of destructive force released there can only go so long, but we must repel it until its energy is exhausted, because if it got started here, it would have a renewed energy, because the atmosphere of America is charged with tremendous power and energy. Therefore, 
I say to you, beloved ones, in that service which you are able to render, lose no opportunity in making the call, and calling the great cosmic beings and the great cosmic light to descend into Europe and the Orient, and dissolve and consume forever the remaining activity of that destructive force gathered. The cosmic light rays can do it, and remember, when you call to your mighty I am presence, you are calling to the heart of the universe. The greatest power there is to project those light rays into that condition to assist in its dissolving. To me, there is no point so very wonderful as to understand that the higher mental body of every human being, no matter how destructive they may be, wants them to be constructive, wants them to give forth a blessing just the same as you do. Therefore, do you not see, beloved ones, that you are not contending with a power of any kind of creation? but you are contending with a power released from human beings and energy qualified, that has no sustaining power to it. Won't you feel that, beloved 100% students, and then understand what your service means in calling forth the dissolving, consuming activity of the great presence of all life, the cosmic beings and the cosmic light to render this service. I am speaking tonight of Europe, because it is urgent. We urged the messengers to retire the moment they returned home last night, that they could go forth and give the assistance which was required. There. Do you quite understand, beloved ones, how these two humble ones work night and day, serving night and day? They do not call it work, but no sooner do their heads strike the pillow, than they are out working from the higher mental body, rendering this service. Do you know what it means tonight, you as 100% students? Please listen carefully. These two individuals, because of certain things, which I may not explain to you, must be used to carry these mighty currents to earth. Therefore, when their bodies sleep, then they are working from the higher mental body, because of the connection with the physical body, they can be used to release these mighty currents to the earth. Just as last night, because of the mighty power of victory, that power of the cosmic light rays was driven into the earth for the sustained protection of San Francisco and their bodies had to be at a certain point where they had gained and released tremendous power and energy. The outer world and you, beloved students, did not know that, and the messengers themselves did not, but you see how the great law acts through the great wisdom of the ascended ones, to bring about conditions, causing activities to take place that the outer human does not comprehend. Even in a fragmentary manner. So as this great releasing power goes forth, this great consuming activity, remember beloved ones, how magnificent a part of that each one of you is. When I think of the hundreds of years when the sincere of mankind have longed to give a service, and even in this embodiment, when so many throughout mankind have longed to render a service, they cannot tell just why, but because through the inner impulse pouring, they have felt that surge of that great inner energy to render a service to their fellow man. Now the opportunity is yours, the greatest ever known, because without the knowledge of your mighty IAM presence, it is only temporary, it is but fragmentary. Therefore, beloved ones, in calling your attention to this opportunity tonight, and in prefacing what I shall say to you of quite a different nature, I want you to feel how great your blessing and privilege is to serve the great great powers of light. Oh, that I might convey to you my happiness in my freedom from earth. How little I dreamed, just as you today little dream what is before you. Think of it. Who of you shall say to me tonight what the great presence of life might do for you ere the sun sets tomorrow? Oh, beloved ones, accept the fullness of all the majesty and power that your presence might choose or find the opportunity to release through you. Think, when that great one in India told me that in America I would find that one who would assist me to my ascension. My dear people, as a lad I believed it, and somehow, it never occurred to me that it could ever fail. Yet, as the years went on, and I searched and searched those weary months, and oft times I thought, where, oh where, is that guiding power and intelligence? Yet within me, in the outer moments of wonderment and discouragement, only temporary, again would rise from within me, that joy and happiness in that quest. Everyone of mankind is making that same search today that I made, only today your search is shortened greatly. I had no one to assist me, as I thought, but of course I did. My higher mental body who received that direction, knew from the beginning, but I had to be made sure in the outer part, my human self, as to whether I would stick to that search to make me worthy of the goal, when it was reached. Who of you know, but that you are all being made worthy of the goal which you shall reach ere long? Is it not a happy contemplation to believe that? 
I think so. I know it is so by actual experience. You tonight, I want you to feel with me the reality of my victory, and since you, last night, were charged with the power of victory, apply it to your goal and your eternal freedom. Do you not see, do you not comprehend, dear people, where you stand tonight, from where you stood yesterday morning? Oh, perhaps you did not feel slightly different in the physical outpicturing, but my dear ones, consider what took place within the inner power of your feeling world and the power of your mental world that has cleared the way of obstruction. Oh, believe that, feel that, beloved 100% people, and then stand guard as dynamite to any outside force and any outside suggestion that would mar the beauty of that contemplation, of the freedom of life and its mighty goal. That is where you stand as 100% students. Do you know, upon you devolves the projection of the light in your locality? I congratulate our beloved group leader tonight, when he closed his words by saying to you, that no one who was not actually a 100% student could be so dishonorable as to come into such a meeting. I hope every group leader in America and the world will take that stand with his people. We know only too well that there have been everywhere, people who came in and claimed to be 100%, and were but spies, for it was proven in Los Angeles beyond any question. There were several going from one group to another spreading the poisonous discord, but it shall be no longer. Therefore, I say to you, beloved people, that a per son who spies to spread discord to the students of light had ten thousand times better walked into a den of rattlesnakes, for they would only lose their physical body then, but to practice deception to the powers of light shuts the door to the light, for God knows how long. Therefore, I say to you, beloved ones, these unfortunate individuals who lend themselves to such things little know what they are doing. They may believe they only live once, well, they will find the great disappointment one day. To think mankind will practice hatred and deception for a few paltry dollars. I shall never forget through eternity, the honor of my father who served the English government in India. That man was constantly beset by individuals offering bribes of money for him to do a dishonorable thing, but never once, and when he finally continued to refuse, because he held the great respect of the government, he was shot. A thousand times had he better have been shot, than to have been dishonored. That is the power of light, beloved ones, which you are serving, and a thousand times, ten thousand times, had you better lose your human form, than to once be dishonorable to the light which beats your heart. That is the position of the 100% students, and you who stand, O oh beloved ones, 100% to the powers of light and the ascended masters, will one day. Walk so free from all human conditions, and mark what I tell you, it cannot be long in the great power that is being released. Stand your ground with your presence if the heavens fall, what does the matter of a change of embodiment mean in the great goal of life to that eternal freedom? I want to call your attention to the Rayborns, Mr. and Mrs. Rayborn, Rex and Bob, Nada, Pearl and myself. Not one of us ever dreamed in the world, one year before our freedom, that such a thing could actually be. Take myself for instance, while I earnestly made that search as directed, I did not comprehend but slightly what that goal meant. I did not know. While I believed intellectually what the Great One told me, yet afterwards I knew I did not comprehend but so little, only enough to keep me on the search. You today, are having the greatest encouragement ever in life to assist you in the courage, strength and happiness to stay on your pathway until your goal is reached, and how quickly. Now notice, beloved ones, two things, first, in standing steadfast with your presence in your calls, and then, shutting out forever all human suggestions, discord of every kind, you would reach your goal so quickly, you would be astonished. Now you as 100% individuals, must surely mean. What you say, and what the rest of the world does about you should not be the slightest concern to you. You, who reach your goal, must stand alone with your presence, shutting away every human suggestion and discord, and in your mighty call to your presence, let its mighty currents of energy flow in, through, and around you, and out into your world to harmonize. Not one single human thing shall disturb you when once you really do that. You cannot do it just in the intellect, you have got to do it in the feelings, beloved ones, with great intensity according to your individual requirement, in order to have that goal reached very quickly. But look again, I cite you to our experience. 
my experience required but steadfastness toward the goal. Mr. Rayborn, think of it, only the few years, a little more than three years, that he reached his goal, mostly an inner impelling action. Rex and Bob, Nada and Pearl, children filled with the happiness and fullness of youth, whose light was strong enough to shut away human desires, they too reached their goal in an inconceivably short time. Don't you see by that, beloved ones, that one shall not judge? Even you shall not judge when you shall reach your goal, or how quickly. How could you do it? Don't you see that any feeling within you that says to you, oh, how could I reach my freedom so? Quickly, don't you see you would be your own obstruction if you allowed such a feeling to act within you? Therefore, don't allow your feelings for a single moment to limit you in any way, and I do not mean by that, that anyone should be fanatical. Don't just say, I am going to make my ascension, regardless of whether you give obedience to life or not, that would be foolishness, because your obedience to life is demanded. Now the very curious thing, and I marvel at it even yet, in this embodiment which was one with yours, strange to say, beloved ones, I never knew what it meant to be inharmonious. As I look upon mankind today since my freedom, I can scarcely comprehend how it could be, and yet it was. It was the same way with Mr. and Mrs. Rayborn, and Mrs. Rayborn meeting the public as she did. Of course, she had the presence of Saint Germain in all the latter part of her great career, and in meeting those conditions, not one discord entered her world. Think of it, beloved ones. Why is it different with others of mankind? Now notice this, because it bears upon the success of every one of you. Why is it? I know many of you have said, well, why do I have to struggle when those individuals just walked away free? Don't ask me, ask your life, because I don't know. Unless I would enter into your life stream and see, I would not be able to know, but your higher mental body does know. Therefore, beloved ones, since you were released last night, is my reason for bringing this to your attention so vividly tonight, but whatever your requirement is, remember. It is worth a million times any or every effort that you would make toward self-control and harmony. To gain your goal quickly. Oh, do not be dismayed by the conditions I mentioned in Europe or the conditions that exist in your own America today. I say, what has that to do with you? When you stand one with your great presence of life, you will rise in the powers of that presence, and not a thing of the outer world can touch you, limit or deprive you of a single thing. The outer conditions of the world have nothing in God's world to do with an IAM student who is earnest, sincere, and honest. Let me remind you again, as the mighty victory told you last night, tell the truth if the heavens fall. Let there be no record in your world of deception or falsehood. Beloved ones, the great divine director has released you by his great and mighty consuming power, and now the mighty victory having completed it, you stand free beings. If you maintain that complete harmony and determined command to life, you will call forth its mighty powers to flood your body with health, joy and happiness, and from your treasure house the release of the supply of money or whatever else is required to give you the happiness, attainment and freedom in the service of the light, its power will charge and fill your body. Feeling world and activity with a power inconceivable, until you begin to experience it, beloved ones. We, who have been set free, were fortunate, because life had provided for us sufficiently that we were never even concerned about financial supply, but there are other things much worse than that to contend with. So if you have a little sense left of financial limitation, it might have been something much worse, because there are other conditions of life not so easily conquered as that. But there is not one earnest sincere, IAM, student in America or the world who will take five minutes three times a day and call to the presence of their life, the mighty I am, to release from its treasure house, that will not have it done without limit. It is the law of life, and cannot be denied if your feeling is undivided in your call for its acceptance. I want you to feel you are not dealing with an uncertainty, you are dealing with the greatest power in the universe that cannot and never did fail you. If it seemed to, you failed yourself. Don't ever blame life, don't ever blame your application, and don't ever blame yourself because of some feeling that was acting there, because you were unaware of it, you would hardly blame yourself for it. But face about and call the presence into action to take out of you any obstructing feeling, set you free right now. That is the stand.
now beloved ones, none of you is an exception to this. Every one of you who is being set free by this activity, remember you have got to stand guard over your feeling and self-control, and if you will do that, you will see so entirely the vast change that will take place. Don't let the appearance world around you believe it has anything to do with you and your freedom, financial or otherwise. Dear ones, you are constantly moving in a sea of human suggestions, unless you call the presence, to hold invincible that tube of light about you, that you do not accept a single suggestion from the outside. You are constantly being catapulted by those suggestions, and plenty of them will come up and say with a sneer, well, if you are an TAM student, why don't you show the proof of the law? Tell that individual to shut their mouth and go about their business. That is what you want to be strong enough to do. Those individuals are just claws of the sinister force that want to drive discouragement and disappointment at you. You might be, within the next hour, within the victory of the achievement if you did not listen to that suggestion. You must be strong enough to withstand those things. Just as when the messengers returned to Los Angeles, and those pretending to be 100% students were nothing but spies moving among the groups, spreading that poisonous breath, yet many of those students listened to those things until it nearly ruined their chance of freedom. Don't be fooled by those things, beloved people. If you love your life, your mighty IAM presence, and if you love Saint Germain and the teaching he has brought forth, stand by it and do not listen to anything that would spread discord in your world, even if you have to take them by the nape of the neck and throw them out. That is how firm you must be, beloved ones. As one said to you recently, sometimes a little physical force is of great assistance. I will try to find words that will convey into your feeling world the full power which I feel to assist you to once and forever shut out of your feeling world, all destructive suggestions from whatever source they come, because you are moving in an atmosphere of those suggestions. And if you are just a little below par, you are very apt to accept them into your world. But it is quite a different thing when somebody comes up and pokes it at you, you can stop that fast enough. If you want to. But this fellow that is moving around in the atmosphere, he is not so easily detected. So call your mighty discrimination into action to stand guard. Oh, my dear people, oh, don't you understand that you have a higher mental body that will stand guard over you with a power that is inconceivable? You know how a mother guards her child, or parents, your higher mental body has a thousand, ten thousand, times the power to guard you, and all it asks is that you give attention to your presence and then keep harmonized and it will move anything in the world out of your pathway and give you the happiness and freedom. It is all powerful. Dear ones, think. Beating your heart is the greatest power and intelligence in the universe, and your higher mental body is the director of those currents of mighty energy that will dissolve anything in God's world, either of your own creation or anything that attempts to intrude into your world. You are not subject to anything but the freedom and power of your presence. Oh, my dear ones, please see and feel that with eternally sustained power. When I think of our attainment and freedom, and then I see the indomitable courage of the messengers to face a world of humanity and be untouched, unaffected by the scoffing, sneering, unbelieving mankind, and then to reach a goal like this, my dear ones, it should be the eternal strength and encouragement to every human being that touches this work. But see, they stand dauntless before the world and carry that light and its power and strength with that invincible power. I add my love, my joy and enthusiasm to yours, and say to those blessed ones, bravo. Go on and on until mankind is free. Thank you, beloved ones. Now beloved ones, as I continue, please follow me closely. Every word I say to you shall be the living eternal truth through my own actual experience. I want to take up the final goal, because so many are reaching out so earnestly for their freedom in the ascension in this embodiment. When I met this good messenger on the side of Mount Shasta, with very similar thought to his, I thought I had met someone out on a hike when I saw him sitting there on the log, before he saw me. Think of it. Little did I dream even then how near my goal was. Follow me closely, beloved ones, God within you, the mighty I am, charge you with the full feeling of these words. When I looked upon him sitting there, little did I dream for a single instant that that was my goal, that within the hour would come my freedom. Think of it. Beloved ones, this is no idle talk, but my own. 
actual experience with him, and let the whole world deny it if they like. I stand the living proof of that joy, freedom and gratitude to him for that eternal everlasting service. Therefore, beloved ones, when he reached to give me a drink of water, in his hand came that crystal cup that I had sought for all those years. Can you imagine with me for one moment the effect? I was electrified in every cell of my being with a power indescribable. Then what happened? After about 15 or 20 minutes after having drunk that liquid which filled the cup before my eyes, then we sat down on that same log and I told him what had happened to me in India, and how I had made that search through those years. Then he, like an innocent child, said to me, well, what am I supposed to do? Then watching the action of that mighty inner impulse pour through both of us, he said, what am I supposed to do? That great inner power surged forth through me, and I know now, spoke through my own, God presence, and said, ask the God in you who does know. Such power was released that his whole human self receded out of the way, and the great light from his, presence, came down until this body and arms before you, were such a blazing light you could scarcely look into it. When these hands here before you reached out and took my hands, that mighty power surged through my body as the great and fed flame, sweeping, sweeping out of my body every impurity that remained, like one mighty sweep, then my feet left the earth. You cannot describe such things, you cannot describe the feeling that was in me. The messenger was so charged with the power and light of his presence, I am sure he had no thought at all. When I realized that my feet had left the earth, then I knew all that had been said to me was a mighty truth, of which I comprehended but very little. My purified physical body continued to ascend into the upper air, as far as his hands would reach, then he let go, and I continued on until my feet were perhaps fifteen or eighteen or twenty feet above his head. There I stood in the atmosphere seemingly just as firm as you stand upon the floor. For a moment my eyes left him, and looking upon myself, I saw the transformation taking place. I saw that all appearance of age had left my body, my clothing dissolved into that of the garments of the higher octave. Then as I stood there looking back at him with such gratitude, as never in eternity will be expressed by anyone, you will never know how I longed to draw him forth with me, but something within me knew that he had a service yet to render. So beloved ones, it was months before I dared to come near him, because of my uncontrolled gratitude. Then finally both he and I were able to control it, and I came forth to remain his champion through eternity. Today, remember, beloved ones, while this service rendered me was very powerful and rapid, that same service is being rendered you today in a less rapid activity, but as with myself, who of you shall say what your presence will do for you, but I say to you, do not ever be fanatical. Oh, in the great calm understanding of life, with the power and action of life, give your great calm adoration and hold your mighty determination that the power of life will do for you, every instant of the day, all that it may or is possible to be done for you. That is the position to take to the great presence of all life, then the greatest possible service will be done for you in the quickest possible time. Oh, beloved ones, we stand, while here in this physical building, in the octave of light, in the octave of the ascended masters, for this has carried us there. While your outer sight does not cognize it, yet, are we there in reality? Hold that, beloved ones, and know that every word I have spoken to you is the truth of life. Beloved ones, when the messenger has so earnestly described this to mankind, then foolish ones go out and sneer about the most sacred thing in the universe, and about one whom they are not fit to tie the laces of his shoes. That is how I feel to your beloved messenger. That is why, beloved ones, you can pour forth so great a love to those two most precious people, your messengers. If they did not pour out that great honest sincere love, do you think the love of humanity would come back to them as it does? It could not and would not. Therefore, when someone says to you, they are not living the law, tell them to shut their mouth, and don't mince words when you say it. That is the way to shut away from your world the destructive thing. Many times insane people, because of ignorance, will say those things. Be discriminate, of course, but I tell you. You must be firm against that thing that would deprive you of all that life wants to give you so much. You talk about human love, you talk about divine love, you talk about human powers, you talk about divine powers. Where does it all come from, from the smallest to the greatest? Through that stream of life and energy. 
beloved ones, beating your heart is the greatest intelligence and power in the universe. Remember, that while I am voicing these words to you, I am charging my feeling of victory into your world. If you will accept it with all the joy of your heart, and call for your presence to sustain it, there you will find its full power going into action to assist you to that same goal. There may be a lot of things for you to do before that goal is reached, I cannot tell you. It might be tomorrow, but who should be concerned, except to leave the wisdom of that action in the power of your presence, who knows when, where and what the perfect thing is to do for you. Your presence of life alone knows what is the right thing for you, and to be done for you. Do you not see, beloved ones, how every activity of life is natural, and is absolutely as accurate as anything mathematical or in your mechanical world today? When you engineers put your engines together and you have your last bolt in place, you know that that engine is going to run. Let us bring it a little more simple. When you are over in San Francisco and you get into your car or on a ferry, you feel very sure of getting home. You give the full confidence to that conveyance, and yet, we do not give that same confidence to the greatest power in the universe, our life, to give us perfect health and sustain it to give us almighty directing intelligence that we never make a single human mistake. Because we accept the appearance world as real. We let its destructive limiting powers continue to act in our world. Beloved ones. Don't do it, I plead with you. Don't give power to outside things or conditions. It has no power except your life feeding its radiance into that to give it power to reach you. To me, I think that is one of the most magnificent things, beloved ones, to think that not a thing of all mankind's creation, limiting or destructive, can reach you except you give it your attention. Then it must come back to you on the light ray which you send out through your attention. Think of it. Then when you know you can control your attention, and keep it from fastening upon those destructive limiting conditions that come back into your world, that is why I said to you in the beginning. There is no condition in the outer world that has one solitary thing to interfere with any one of you. So long as you give your attention to the presence of life and keep it there and cast out every human thing. That is why we stand ready. Oh, can you feel with me for a moment how ready we are? Oh, to think of it. Bob and Rex, Nada, Pearl, myself and the Rayborns, who have so recently been set free, my dear people, can you imagine our determination? Our desire to give you and fire you into that full power that is yours to be free and join us so quickly. Don't you think we would be right there, the first ones to grasp your hand? Don't let human conditions bind. You, or hold your attention, not one moment longer. Stand in the glory of that, great presence of life, and let it do for you whatever it wants to do, but in your call, it only needs your constant firm determined call. Now I know many of you have questioned within yourselves at times, why this continued call, if the presence is ale powerful Why cannot I call once and then stop? Is it such a wearisome thing to want to call for your freedom? Oh, my dear ones, most surely not. If you fell and caught your garment on a limb of a tree and were hanging there, wouldn't you call for help? You would not get tired of calling for help would you, and sure enough, it would come. So will your eternal freedom come by your great call to the presence of life, and you won't have to be hanging on a tree either. Therefore, I say to you beloved ones, with all the joy and enthusiasm of your hearts, continue to reach up in your feelings. Watch your feelings and compel them to follow your attention. It means everything in the world. Those feelings have got to follow your attention, and if they do not, in order to bring them into line, say, come on here. Don't you dare lay back there. You get into action. Then it will know you mean business. I tell you, beloved ones, we have observed among the students and all who take that great calm determination, like a great throbbing power, surging in and through them, they win every victory so quickly, that they, themselves, are oft times astonished with the speed and power with which things are achieved. If they had allowed the human, it would have said, oh no, oh no, you cannot do that. Only recently, it was seemingly a small thing, but I watched the whole operation, and Frank to say, gave some assistance. When the blessed one took this place and bought it, then went to put up the words, IAM, in neon lights, they said it could not be done, it was out of the area for which that advertising could be done. 
She said, it is not advertising, and since when has mankind come to the point where the name of God cannot be put in light? Still, it could not be done, but it was done. And through that, blessed ones, those city officials came and saw and heard. Now when falsehood is spread to them, then they will say, run along little one. Every conceivable falsehood had been spread to those officials about this work, even to depravity. But when they came and saw that magnificent meeting in the dedication of that temple, they knew the falsehood of everything that had been said. And the very man who had refused it at first said, In the name of God, why didn't you tell you what this was? Therefore, I say to you, beloved ones, don't ever acknowledge that there is a single thing impossible for the mighty I am presence, through you today. There is not. I tell you frankly, there is not one thing impossible if you will stand your ground in the face of all human opinions, call your presence into action. It will clear the decks and bring the action you require for your victory. That means in your commercial world, as well as anywhere else. Now beloved ones, I say to you, precious people, with the understanding and the power of your presence, flowing forth through you at your call, there is nothing in this world that you should ever be afraid of, persons, places or conditions. When you stand up with your honest sincerity and look an individual in the face, that power goes forth, and if that individual is doing wrong, they cannot look you in the eye, nor can they force any influence upon you. Don't think that many of these individuals don't understand something of the mental law, and they put forth that domination to try to scare the human into obedience. Just like these agitators in the unions and the strikers. If a half dozen of those men walked up in front of them and said, shut your mouth and leave at once or we will see that you do, they would leave. Why, the idea of a hundred men standing and listening to the violent and vicious prattle of an agitator. And stand there and let them gain influence over people, innocent blessed people, and deprive them for weeks and months of the money their families need and they know they will never get, nothing is gained. Instead, they reap all the money they can get out of those blessed people, then sneer behind their backs, because they are gullible. I know it, I have seen it everywhere, and I am telling you the truth. Those agitators do not care any more about mankind than rats, and in their lying pretense of trying to bring a remedy of conditions, they only breathe a poisonous breath that makes it a thousand times worse. Therefore, thanks to the great presence of life and the blessed Saint Germain and your mighty decrees, that thing is fast vanishing from the earth. Right here in your city in San Francisco, the people are awakening and rising up and they are saying, now, we shall say something about this ourselves. Just as quick as they take that determination and stand by it, those agitators will cease to be, and peace, harmony will reign, and divine justice again be called into action to bless capital and labor alike. Beloved ones, capital and labor must harmonize. Labor is no good without capital, and capital is no good without labor. Therefore, in all that is required yet before mankind, capital in certain channels is necessary, if all that must come forth to bless mankind. When you understand the mighty presence of life and issue these mighty decrees, and in these great bodies and groups of students reaching forth in the mental and feeling world, it will cleanse and purify every bit of that, and give the people courage and strength. To stand guard over themselves and their world, and then call the mighty power of the presence into action that will produce divine order, divine justice, peace, happiness and limitless supply to everyone who will stand by it, and hold it sustained forever. I thank you. December 4, 1938 N.E.W. York C.I.T.Y. N.E.W. York M-I-N-U-T-E-M-E-N. -E -E Beloved Minutemen of St. Germain, I trust that sounds as beautiful to you as it does to me. When you have associated with Beloved St. Germain as long as I have, since my ascension, then you will know that your love and trust is not misplaced in any way. I say to you gentlemen, and our beloved friends from Canada, be so firm in your denouncing all falsehood spread about this work or this good brother, who has rendered such a service already. If he never lifted an ounce of energy again toward mankind, he would have rendered the greatest service ever on this earth. I want you to know that. That service which he rendered to me, can you feel it for a moment, all that that has meant to me? I want you to see, in repeating again something that I have already said several times, that when in India the unascended master gave me that fragmentary information, that on a great mountain in North America I would meet that man who would assist me to my ascension. 
the lad that I was, can you believe it, it? 230. Never occurred to me once, there was any question about it. I accepted it, and I marvel today how I did accept it so completely. You will see how fragmentary that information was. There are many large mountains in America, but it never occurred to me that I would not be directed to the right one, and although the search was long, and the human often became discouraged, yet. At each time, and I am saying this for your strength and benefit, each time the human became the least weary or discouraged, always from within, and of course, since I know it was from the light within my own heart that blazed forth in the physical, and with its strength and energy. That sent me forth courageous again. I tell you, I know of no greater joy in all the service that it is my privilege to render, than to relate to you my experience that has meant my freedom. Gentlemen, you are standing in the same position today. While you were not directed as I was, now I know the reason for that great master coming to me was because the light within me had expanded sufficiently, although I did not know anything about it, to draw his attention to me. Now look, gentlemen, now let us compare this with yourselves, so you have it vividly. Why are you here? Because of the light within your own heart that has drawn the attention of the great ascended. Masters to you, otherwise, you would not be here. For instance, even though sometimes individuals come in to sort of investigate, quietly questioning, and sometimes critical, yet, why are they there? Do you not see that it is because the light within their own heart is impelling them on, in spite of their intellectual attitude? That is why all the activities of life are so practical. I tell you, gentlemen, I stand before you an eternal witness to this great law of life. That day when life permits me to stand forth in my tangible body, which I am calling for constantly, I am determined to draw forth from the source of all life that permission. Because of that service that this good brother rendered me, to stand beside him in my tangible body and shatter forever the vicious faucets and doubts that have spread concerning him. I thank you gentlemen, with all my heart, and remember, just as you rise to the defense of this great truth, so are there thousands and thousands and thousands in America today who will rise just as instantaneously to the defense of your America. I say to you, gentlemen, that in the understanding of the presence of life, is the one and only condition that can bring about the balance of the nations. I say to you, friends of America and Canada, really, from the ascended state as you see the cause and effect of the nations of the earth. You won't mind standing for just a few moments, were you to see all that has been done, not because I was an Englishman, but from the inner law. You would be surprised how England has held the balance of the world. Now remember, I do not for one moment condone any mistakes that England might have made, but I mean from the inner law's standpoint, they have been because of the peculiar nature of the Englishman, they have a tenacity that is remarkable. Through long training they have heard that very remark, but through that which has been done to hold the balance until now, when the great presence of life, the mighty IAM, becomes known throughout the world. It will replace that by the power of the mighty IAM in balance throughout all nations, and that is the thing that must come now. It is not a matter of human choice, it is a matter of the action of the great cosmic law, and this is the great privilege of mankind. The more they can cooperate and feel the blessing of that great law of life, will they hasten the incoming perfection which life wants to bring forth, not only to you of America, but to all the world. That is why, I know you feel like it, so do I, that. The imperative need is for the protection of America, to keep out the destructive forces from finding action in war here. To be able to do that, will hold a balance and hasten the incoming perfection, well, it could easily hasten it a hundred years. It seems incredible to us that after human beings have seen repeatedly, of course this is not generally known to the outer world, but these people who are self-styled dictators of the world, know well enough, for they have seen it done time and again. That every time a frightfully destructive force or discovery comes into use, all of a sudden it disappears from the knowledge of mankind. Now they have seen that, yet they go on believing because it is them, that they are going to rule the world. Why, the insanity of such a thing? As if the powers of life would permit one man or two or three or half a dozen to destroy the rest of mankind, in this time when mankind's attention has been drawn to the greatest power and presence in the world, the power and presence of life and its light rays to be used. Now I want to draw your attention, gentlemen, today to the retreat in Arabia, which is the greatest place on the face of this earth for the training in the use of the light rays. 
If you have had any question in your mind concerning the truth of this good brother's experiences, dismiss it right now. When you read UN. Veiled Mysteries and the Magic Presence. Every word there is true and I know it to be for the books were bound in jeweled covers in the Ascended Master's Octave of Light. Those experiences are true, and as he said to you last night in class, those books will remain untouched for a thousand years. Now then knowing this, then you will understand why, from the retreat in Arabia, the one instrument which the messenger calls the cosmic reflector, you can turn that on any spot in the world and see the people. Hear the conversations as clearly as you hear the messenger speak to you here in the room. That will never come into the outer world at the present time. That will remain in the authority and use and governing power of the ascended masters, because that is how they know everything that is going on in the world anywhere. Now that is wholly aside from the projection of the light rays by which they can do a similar thing, but in a wholly different manner. Gentlemen, remember as you look at the chart and see those light rays going forth, try to make yourselves feel their full power, and realize all that it means. You stand in the same position today as those who are being trained in the use of those light rays in the retreat in Arabia. There is no thing on the face of this earth or anywhere else that is as valuable, as important, as the use of these light rays today. You may not see them, but when you call the presence to project a light ray to render any service, that instant its light ray goes forth, and if you can really feel that in the fullness of all it means, you will be able to absolutely render a service which is incredible to you at the present time. In the last five or six classes, the messenger has poured that forth like a river, trying to get the students everywhere to realize that this power of light knows no opposition. When called forth it goes forth into action that instant. As you close most of your decrees with the call for it to be sustained, then that is sustained and the thousands of letters and telegrams of the instantaneous healings which take place, show the power of not only healings of the body, and the remedying of all conditions which are not quite balanced, but healing and solving of conditions in the outer world. When you see and know that this is done, you will understand why you are not subject any longer to the limitations and conditions which the outer world has imposed upon itself. The appearance world, you must understand, is not real. It is only the power accumulated by the use of the requalified energy released by mankind. It is not an eternal thing. The power of light is eternal and a thousand times more powerful than all the appearance world put together. That is why you must understand this and become more and more firm in the following acknowledgement. When I call this light ray forth into action to render this service for myself or someone else, it goes into action with the infinite power of light and stays in action until the achievement is complete. If you once fully understand this point, there is not one thing in the world you cannot accomplish, and remember, you cannot harm anyone in this activity. You cannot harm anyone by calling the light rays forth, because they are love, wisdom and power acting in balanced form. They will dissolve all discord, all imperfection and viciousness, but they cannot harm anything that is good because they are the fullness of good within those light rays. That is what you need to understand and of which you need to remind yourselves in all of your application and the decrees you issue. You have heard these decrees issued for a long time, what do you think happens? Today, you have stood and issued these decrees as one voice. Their activity is the same as when you throw a stone in the water and you see these waves go out. Well, these decrees are a thousand percent, many thousands of times more powerful in the radiance of the wave as it goes out. It not only carries the wave of vibratory sub stance, but it carries a radiance or power of light as it goes forth and spreads into the mental and feeling world of mankind. You know the human has become so prone to believe a thing is not real unless you can see it. You all know as well as I do, that all the real powers in the world are invisible, even in the mechanical world. There is no question about that. There is no person can deny it. Of course, it is still necessary to have your electrical plants through which your generators pour forth the currents through the wires. You see the wires, but you don't see the currents, do you? Unless there is something to make a contact, you don't have any evidence they are there, as long as you do not touch them. But now then, look how human beings can pass such powerful currents through the human being, I mean even your physical electricity. There are individuals who can take currents of electricity through the body that is absolutely astonishing. 
Now then, these currents from your presence, while the vibratory action of them is so much finer, so much higher, than even the most powerful you are aware of physically, yet that is real, more real than your currents through the wires. Now you take in chemistry, there are thousands of things discovered that are poisonous to the ordinary system, and yet, you give enough of it and it ceases to be, because the change of vibratory action makes the individual immune. Now then, when the day comes that you are aware that you can use these light rays to perform every service that you require, then your joy will know no bounds, for remember that every light ray that you call forth is the self-luminous, intelligent substance and power of light. Now that contains, as you call it forth from the, presence, now notice, the ordinary current of energy, as you observe the chart here, flowing from the, presence, into the physical body, the ordinary flow of that is not a discriminating intelligence. It is a current of energy flowing, and you are supposed to use it according to your needs, but mankind has not known that. They have just scattered it promiscuously not knowing the need of concentrating a focus of this power, which is their own life. Therefore, when you realize in the use of these light rays, you have become a power invincible, because that light ray knows no opposition. No condition that exists can interfere with it. If you as an individual in your individual world continue to accept, that in the appearance world through humans or otherwise, there is a power opposed to you, there is a power that can harm you, then you have undone the power of this light that you have called forth to give the assistance which you wish, because you are the decreer, you are the qualifier of how this energy is going to act for you. Even though you call it forth, if there are doubts or feelings within you that something can interfere with that achievement which you are calling forth in the action of the light, then you have prevented it or at least delayed it from rendering you that immediate service that it would render. Therefore, today I wish you to be reminded of these things, that when you make your application, stand so firm and unyielding. Of course, gentlemen, it goes without saying and you see the evidence before you in the outer world, that every person who turns to the light, wherein alone lays freedom, will have opposition, but it does not mean that it is a controlling power of you. That which we have termed opposition, and I want to explain that to you now that you may feel it humanity qualifies and calls certain things opposition. On the other hand, it is a resistance and that resistance alone within the outer world of mankind impels and compels mankind to make the effort. Now the messengers, when Saint Germain sent them forth, there were many things he had not explained and when they began to feel that terrific, as they first called it, opposition, they thought, well, how in creation can that be with this great power of light? But then when Saint Germain later explained that that was a power of resistance, that to some degree was within life itself, then how different everything in the outer world was. Because mankind, in the density to which they have drawn themselves, must have some resistance to make them release a greater power that gives them the dominion. Gentlemen, when you meet something that seems opposing or resisting, take the joyous attitude, here is an opportunity to release a greater power of these light rays and this force of light. When you meet a vicious force, qualify this mighty energy as it goes forth with the force of light, because you need it many times to beat down vicious conditions. Because all viciousness is qualified energy which is destructive force and that force must have something greater than itself to control it. You will find in this simple real understanding of life, that there is not one thing which can oppose you. It would be impossible if you understand this law of the, IAM, correctly. While there may be resistance, it is just a signal to you to turn on more power. It is as easy as if there were a key here within the reach of my hand, and I turned on one third of your power of light. It is as if I turned on the first one third of the current, then I turned it again and released two thirds, then I turned it again and released the full. Force. That is exactly what you are doing in your call to life. At first, not because you would not like to but ordinarily because of the conditions that have been established in your atomic structure, you turn the key only one-third. This is why in the beginning, you do not have the full force of the response to your call as you do later. After a while, you learn to turn it on two-thirds, because the feeling has gone down of the doubt of your own ability to release all you require. Later you can turn the key that turns on the full force of your current of life, and of course, untouched by your qualifications. Oh, it is such a magnificent thing, gentlemen, giving you the full power and authority over yourself and your world. It is so magnificent, and it is so mathematically accurate. 
there is not a thing in your mechanical world that is half as practical, because this is an eternal thing for use and activity in your life. Your mechanical things may get out of order, and sometimes, if you do not have the parts, you delay its completion in order to get them from somewhere else. With life, the parts are always here. You never run out of parts. You never find them absent. Therefore, you see how completely practical is this application of life. We as your friends, as long as you turn sincerely to the light and pour forth kindness and goodwill, you will find us always ready, watching, to project a light ray to give you the courage, strength and assistance you require. I want you to see and feel how unlimited we are in that respect. One of us could project a light ray to each of you equally powerful, and yet, in no wise interfere with what we are doing, except to set it into action and cause it to be sustained. When you have friends of this kind, surely doubts and fears cannot longer beset you. Whatever condition confronts you, tell it, it has no power. Then proceed to call a light ray into it and if necessary, throw a bomb of blue lightning into it. That explodes all of the quality of discord and shatters it. You cannot harm the individual, but you will shatter and dissolve the viciousness and discord. I can take a human form that is violently vicious and throw a bomb of blue lightning into that body, and yet, not harm the body, but I will shatter and dissolve the concentration of the vicious substance which was drawn into that human form. Now do you see how magnificent is this power of light? Of course, if you qualify, or if I qualified that with anger, I would shatter the human form, but remember, the power of light never has anger within it the power of light never has a destructive force within it it only acts as a dissolving force to discord. Won't you remember that, and then take from your feeling world forever any question in the world that you could produce any harm by the use of this light. It is impossible. Gentlemen, you cannot do it, unless you qualify it with anger, and you are always taught not to do that. Therefore, if you do, the fault is yours, not the fault of life, not the fault of the teaching. That is why the messengers have pled with mankind for four years for the implicit need of harmony maintained in the feelings, that the powers of life can flow forth unqualified, untouched by destructive conditions. Now then, you are dealing with such a magnificent power, and notice, wholly different from an individual who calls forth the activity of power alone. Now power being one of the trinity of action of the Godhead will become a terrifying force. We have watched individuals, I say, we, because I have become aware of it since the ascension, but I should say that Saint Germain has watched these activities through mankind for centuries, and wherever power is called forth, and that was what was the matter with the Kaiser, Hitler. And those individuals today, because they have forgotten the other two-thirds of the Trinity. They are thinking only of power and authority over their fellow man. Therefore, they are calling forth power, which is the most dangerous thing in the world, because one day it will destroy the person who calls it forth. If it does not destroy the body sooner or later, it will make that body helpless to be of any further assistance in the world, which you see in the Kaiser today. Now that man, he had the absolute assurance within himself that he was going to be ruler of the world, he became ruler of nothing by the very thing that I am telling you, because he sought power alone and power will one day destroy its creator, the one who is calling it forth. Because unless power is balanced by divine love and wisdom it becomes a wholly destructive thing. Now divine love without wisdom and power will, 90% of the time, make the individual negative, because it comes into human sympathy, which in itself, is destructive. Then when mankind understands these simple things, and notice in previous teachings of every description, Mankind had an idea of one or the other, sometimes two, but never the balance of the trinity. Then don't you see why mankind could not succeed only to a certain point? Now today in your call to the presence, you do not have to consider, you do not have to question once again, because you are having a balance of love, wisdom and power in action. Do you not see what a magnificent thing it is? You don't have to consider, are you having the balance of these qualities, but you know you are, because the prayers. Hence is that and life is that when left alone, but since mankind have free will and it clothes the energy that goes forth from their world by the quality that is in their feeling, then they become responsible, not life, not anything else, but themselves. Gentlemen, you know as well as I do that mankind has been taught for approximately, well, let us say six centuries, that God would do for you what God has to do through you. 
what God does for you, has got to be done through you, and I want to tell you, when mankind really understands that, you will see why you have not complied with life, because you did not know it was necessary to call to life to release a greater power of its intensity and its activity. You have love, wisdom and power in balance, and therefore as you call forth this greater intensity of life, it will do for you everything that is required, because it is its nature. You don't have to plead with life, gentlemen. All you have to do is give it a chance to act. It wants to, it wants to give you everything good, always has, but since mankind's qualification has always interfered with it, oh, for many centuries, then the fault is with mankind in the lack of understanding. But since today you have an opportunity to have the real definite understanding, and I tell you gentlemen, if you want to be happy and free, study those books, go over that. Decree book. It is the most magnificent thing on earth, that decree book that keeps you reminded of your authority to govern all conditions that confront you and the exact means by which you, may do it. Let me prompt you, never for one instant allow your feeling to question the power of those decrees. That is the authority and call to life to release its powers into action to perform that service, and do you not see that there is no opposition to that? Have you thought of where even resistance stops? Now notice this, gentlemen. It is always comical, but it is very serious nevertheless. Do you realize the point where resistance stops? Right at the instant that you give that positive decree. Resistance comes up to that point to stimulate you into a greater blow, and when you release it, resistance has stopped. It is magnificent. Even as we see these activities and watch the difference in the activity with individuals among the students, it is a very marvelous thing, for no two are exactly alike in their release from their application, because of the difference in the intensity of their feeling. But it is wonderful to watch it. How come sometimes, and I could point out some of you, that when you have gone along, and then all of a sudden you put on more steam, then we watch that activity, it is beautiful. Because then we know that you are safe. When you get to that point where you turn on that. Dynamic energy, and know that no human viciousness has any power against it, then you are master over those conditions, or in other words, you allow the powers of light to become the master over those conditions. You see, gentlemen, perhaps I should suggest this, watch out as you begin to gain the powers of the presence at your call, oh, watch out so carefully and be so humble that you never, in an unguarded moment, take that as power in the human. That would be dangerous in the extreme, but remember it is always the power of the presence. You see how humble this messenger is, the greater his power and understanding, the more humble he becomes, and that is correct in the position of life. Be extremely positive toward human conditions, but so humble, as humble as a little child before this great power and presence of life, then you will comply completely with life and allow it to pour its great powers forth without limit. That is why today in this need, we sometimes think it is too bad to have to call your attention to the conditions that are existing, and gentlemen, if you don't know, if you don't believe the treachery and intrigue that is going on under your nose in your city of New York and in Washington DC, the greatest treachery you ever saw among a few, that must go down. But remember and be aware that when a vicious force wants to accomplish something, it will take your attention clear off into something else until it has slipped in undercover and accomplished its vicious act. That is how mankind have been fooled for centuries. So gentlemen, begin to feel out and watch, and when your attention begins to be called powerfully to something, watch out that behind your back the thing is going on that should be watched. Remember today in your powerful friends, as you call to the presence of life, then to them, will you have untold assistance in being aware of these things. Remember as Bob and Rex have rendered the great service in Boston in the communistic headquarters, they dissolved everything that was in that room except the chairs that the two individuals were sitting on. Now gentlemen, the reason for that was because it would be spread all over the world, and it was immediately. Because those destructive forces had to see and know by definite experience that there was a power of light with which they could not cope, and they know that. That is why such viciousness is attempted toward this light, but that is their own destruction, those who generate it. So the messengers are not concerned, but the fellow who sends it forth should be. Now then, when the plane was turned back with its destructive forces and when it landed, Bob and Rex were there in their tangible bodies. 
when they came to seize them, when their hands were upon their shoulders, they dissolved and disappeared before their eyes. Now gentlemen, this is quite a joke on the students. After hearing about that, one of the students said, I wish I could do something that would make them appear to me. Well, they just don't do that. He thought, well, if they appeared to them, why won't they appear to the students and satisfy them? Because it is not necessary. Gentlemen, won't you please abide in the wisdom of these great ones? When the time is ready and when it is necessary, we will appear in the tangible body fast enough. I ask you this, did man ever see anything in life that, in his obedience to life, life failed to answer? Not one thing in all mankind has ever failed to be answered when man turned wholly to the presence of life. Therefore, I say to you, now notice, you are calling for the tangible presence of these great ones, well, that is life itself. What helps you to make that call, what enables you? Why life? You have to use life to make the call. Where is the intelligence that enables you to release and make the call? The power of life. Then after all, it is life acting. Then if you, as the individual, will give complete obedience to life, is there anything to stand in the way of the perfection of life finding its action through you? Certainly it is practical. Is there anything more practical? But mankind has not understood this obedience, and that is what is the matter today. When you do really give complete obedience to life, you will not have another trouble beset you as sure as I am telling you, but you haven't, even yet, understood wholly what obedience is. You will surely, ere long, understand what it means to give complete undivided obedience. Therefore, today I ask you, gentlemen, please overhaul yourselves and see wherein you can give still greater obedience to life. Oh, not to anyone, be the inspector of yourselves. It is a beautiful thing. You have no idea, gentlemen, what that will do and the happiness it will bring to you when you turn and look yourself straight in the face and say, here young fellow. What is it you are not doing that you might give greater obedience? Well, it is a joyful thing. That little fellow may rebel at first, but you say, now just subside. What a joy will come as you begin to see one thing after another which you could correct, which you probably were not aware of even, but that is the way you gain and give complete obedience to life. I cannot tell you, gentlemen, what a joy it has been. To talk to you today and that great sincerity, that great determination in your hearts to serve the light and to be free, and remember, gentlemen, any undesirable desire that has been active within you can be quickly dissolved and caused to disappear by asking the presence to take out of you that desire and replace it by the satisfaction and power of the presence. So remember, since gratification is such a fragmentary thing in comparison to the joy and freedom of life in its great perfection, its full power of strength, health and energy. Oh, there is no comparison, not the slightest. When you realize that the reaction from sense gratification drags you down and down and down, and shuts in closer and closer your power of light. You know your little alcohol lamps you use in heating, temporarily, little things, you put the cover on and you put out the flame. Gentlemen, as you grow more and more dense in your use and acceptance of the human senses, you just begin to put that cap on that flame, within your own heart, until it is shut in, until it is only a tiny thing. Gentlemen, I wish and perhaps it will come about, that many of you will see the change of conditions, and I say just for illustration, take six months ago and compare the expansion of the light within your own hearts from that day to this. Well, you would scarcely believe it. Now in your attention to the, presence. Although you still make mistakes, still gratify the senses, still in the expansion of that light, it has been so tremendous that you would be amazed. As you are willing and do give full obedience to life, then that light continues to expand until its radiance around your body, even though still invisible, becomes so powerful and tangible that any person that comes near you will feel it. Why, think of the hundreds of people the minute they come in the radiance of the messengers feel that peace and quiet and strength. Well, that is in the radiance of the light which is constantly being called forth, and it is only a small part of what will be in another four years. There are thousands of the students, and while I am not a prophet, from observation I would say within two years, possibly within one, there will be thousands of the students who will stand in a similar radiance which the messengers do today. 
I want you to feel, gentlemen, how accurately Saint Germain and those great ones are able to determine. They pay no attention to your mistakes or your words or the things that you do, but they watch your light within, which gives them the accurate determination of the position that you stand in today to the light. You see. Therefore, that is the only important thing to them. Can you imagine with me for a moment they're rejoicing when they see within individuals that light just steadily and steadily expanding like that? Do you know, gentlemen, what discipline and training mean to the individual? I cite this because it is so very marked. You know of the Mounties in Canada, you know something of the severe training and discipline they go through. Well, a number of those great men have turned to this light and that discipline will turn into the obedience to life which will make them a tremendous power. You see, the other nations of the earth, most of them have had quite severe discipline, but the Americans have gone sort of free. In one sense, a very marvelous thing, but when it comes to certain training or discipline, it is a little more struggle for them. But if they will turn on steam enough they will have a tremendous power, because of the freedom which has been theirs. Now these are the two conditions that exist, and you of America need to bring yourselves into greater discipline to life, greater obedience, because gentlemen. I am sure there are a great many who still do not believe that your higher mental body or that we know every thought and feeling that passes through you. We have to. Therefore, don't do anything in secret that you would not do before the great Mars. Ters. Then you will naturally give such beautiful obedience to life that the expansion of your light and your freedom will come so quickly that your happiness will be complete. And gentlemen, is there one in this room that does not want happiness? Bless your lives, mankind must have it. Not a thing in life can find its action without happiness, and happiness is the great motive power which enables life to flow forth in so much greater degree than is ordinary. Do you realize, gentlemen, that when you are very sad or depressed that it is just like you draw in, like that, and you not only shut off the flow of the nerve fluid through your body, but you shut off the greater flow of that light through your body. You know, if your muscles contract in your chest or arm, how in a few minutes it begins to ache, doesn't it? Don't you see the attention of that has shut off the circulation, because pain is congestion and nothing else. There could not be pain in the body without congestion at that point. It is the same way when you are tremendously depressed, you close in, like that, and everything in your body tightens, and if you saw, in your feeling world, this tightening comes before it acts within the physical structure. Gentlemen, you know at any time when some sudden thing confronts you, a tremendous fear seizes you for a moment, how your face grows white. Do you not? See that that is a contracting thing that even shuts off your circulation. On the other hand, when you have violent anger, how the blood rushes to your face and the other parts of the body with tremendous force. Why? Because it is the action of life in defense of itself. You do not know that but it anchors in the feeling that it must do something to defend itself and releases that power of instantaneous circulation. The evidence is before the whole world, but mankind do not analyze. They do not try to find out why these things are so, but if they did, they would see at once the two activities, one causes you to contract and recede, the other to release greater power. Gentlemen, I want you to know and I cite you this one instance. In Oakland, California, there was a Christian science practitioner who had these two friends. The man drank to excess, not always, but sometimes he became very ugly to his wife. His wife was a very close friend of this lady and she was there when he was in an ugly mood. He raised his hand to strike his wife, and she, of course it was anger as well as protection, but she said, stop. And she released such a power that the man fell senseless to the floor, and it was hours before he came to. She was frightened terrifically and thought she had killed the man, and when he came to, he was a changed being and he feared her from that time on, and he never drank again. You see, the terrific force she released in the protection of her friend shattered the vicious thing that had accumulated and grown with him, and probably it was one or two entities about him that were intensifying that desire. She shattered that and disconnected them through that terrific force which she released. Some have discovered that mankind in the human form is a thunderbolt, but that is a great mistake. Of course, to release such force with anger, 
but I am sure that the great law would forgive that blessed one for the service that was rendered. It disconnected him from that condition which would have been his destruction, but that is not the right use of those conditions. That was an emergency and was released without consideration. Today, you in the use and power of these light rays, may produce service as great or much greater in a perfectly harmonious manner. The messengers have, a hundred times in the past six months when conditions arose that seemed not to respond, they would stand on the floor and with their hands to the, presence, say, mighty I am presence. Stop this thing forever. It shall not go on. Not once was there a failure of response. Therefore, dear ones, I want you to see how you are in authority in your acceptance of the presence of life, and I know. There is not one of you that would want to misuse that, because you know you have to pay the penalty if you do. Therefore, in all kindness, but such firmness, draw forth that power to dissolve all discordant conditions. Call the, presence, you gentlemen who are in this room, think of it, what it would mean if you but called the light rays from your, presence, to go into Washington and reveal all treachery and deceit there, and in your city as well for it is closely connected with Washington, and caused to be dissolved and revealed all these things. Soon mankind would be afraid to attempt those things, because they would know mankind would discover it, and that is the thing that makes the opposition to this work. They know it is true, and it is one day going to reveal every particle of the treachery, and that is why they want to dispose of it. I thank you, gentlemen, for this opportunity to talk with you, and may you feel my hand in yours and may you feel my great power of divine love enfolding you, and my strength and courage which is limitless, charging your feeling world, that in any emergency. You may be reminded that my hand is in yours, and my strength and power are there to bless you. With all the love of my heart, may I convey to you the love and blessings of the great host of ascended masters, the legions of light and the great cosmic beings who have rejoiced, gentlemen, that you have styled yourselves the minute men of Saint Germain. I am quite sure you do not yet realize all that that means to you, but one day, may the powers of light reveal to you all that it does mean. May you, in your great response to life, be clothed in the invincible light and powers of love, wisdom and power of the mighty I am presence. As you call it forth, and it sends you forth the mighty presence of light, pouring such radiance about you, that all it touches becomes harmonious and wants to bless you wherever you move in that it enables you to render a service in your call to life that will help quickly to bring about the protection and adjustment of America, which must be the cup of light to the world. Then one day, when all this has been achieved and you find us walking with you in the dawn of the new life, your friends, the friends of light, then will you too rejoice as you never thought possible to experience, then too, will you see how futile has been the destructive powers of mankind. Only because the presence of life had been forgotten. I thank you and bless you with the powers of light in its ever-expanding power from your mighty IAM presence, and may your call be so determined, so intense, that the light within your body, not only within your heart, but in the cells of your body, expand with the power of blue lightning to enable you to render that service which is required today, and make your happiness complete, and I thank you. January 1, 1939 LOS Angeles, California M-I-N-U-T-E-M-E-N. -E -E Beloved Minute Men of St. Germain. Beloved Friends of America, as one who just about ten years ago stood in a physical body similar to yours, and by the assistance of the powers of light, made my ascension into that eternal freedom. Into that eternal body of light substance that is of a finer higher rate of vibratory action than the physical body, but yet, is perfectly tangible. Therefore, as I speak to you today, understand that I am just as tangible as you are, and therefore, giving you something of my experience, something of my power as you enter the new year, that will give you courage and strength to meet that which you confront, and be the victor over all conditions. I say to you, friends of America, who might not be familiar with this great understanding of life, it is quite as practical as anything in your physical world, in your mechanical world, therefore, if I should make statements to you that seem out of your understand. 261. Ing, or seems unusual to you, remember my experience is that which will lift and bring you into a fuller understanding of life which all mankind are needing so much, at this time. Since I so recently was in similar limitations to yours, 
then I can be of inestimable assistance to you in grasping the fuller consciousness of life and the fuller activity in your feeling world, of your authority of life. Remember your authority, I speak that with authority, for mankind has not understood their authority of life. They have accepted human limitations and the appearance world which has prevented them having, or in other words, releasing from the presence of life its fuller expression, which means success and happiness and all that means for the progress of mankind. Since the forward movement of all progress, as is now being understood by mankind, is not a growth, but an expansion of the light that beats each human heart, that means the expansion of the light within the cells of the body, which is the pattern of the structure of the human flesh. Therefore, as you understand these simple majestic laws of life, you will be able to operate them to any degree that you see fit to call into action. But I assure you, that in all these activities you must feel the authority, you must feel the right, and you must un. Understand that life never fails in a single instance to respond to your call. Since all of the great activities of the world, of all energy that is released, is invisible, then your life stream that flows through your body is also invisible to the majority of people, and yet, you use the energy in action through your body. Therefore, why not accept that you can call forth in the acceptance of your presence of life above you, a greater power and action of that life which is the need of the day. In individuals, varying of course according to the expansion of their own light, yet no two individuals require just the same charge, the same currents of energy, since all are different, the general activity of mankind is the call to life, which does release through their higher mental body who knows the exact requirement of each individual, the full power of that which they want to bring into action. Since all of this is as practical as your mechanics of your outer world, then understand, and I say to you friends of America, in your assistance to the students of the mighty I am presence. You will find that you have entered into a world that is wholly new to the great mass of the Western world, and yet, one million people within America have had their attention drawn to this mighty presence of life, the mighty I am, which is God individualized. Therefore, to understand this, I bring your attention today, friends of America, to all that has been achieved in five years by these humble messengers of Saint Germain and what it means to have drawn the attention of that many people to the source of all life. I ask you to consider today what that means to the world. In the need today for the protection of America, and since so much has been accomplished in the past six months, it means that the achievement during this year will be beyond, perhaps, anyone's human comprehension. Yet through a perfectly natural action of life will mankind come into that great dominion and fuller expression of all life wishes to bring forth, and only by your attention to the presence of life, and your earnest call will you be able to release this into action in the human octave. I say to you as one who so recently stood in the conditions that mankind experience today, and has been raised out of those conditions, I say to you, that it is for every one of you. You can have that same freedom which is my joy today. Therefore, I say to the entire world, that I was an Englishman, and you know it is said that we do not grasp so readily as some others the fullness of the great truths, but yet I say to you, I have grasped the fullness of life with its amazing powers and am able to utilize them to your assistance. Beyond anything that I could ever have imagined ten years ago. Now then, you are not talking about something or thinking about something in long ages past, friends of America and beloved minute men. But you are talking about something right up to date, and that is what mankind needs, for all style themselves as practical these days. So may we transcend your practicality in bringing this transcendent activity into practical action today to your attention. Therefore, as you come to understand this presence of life and utilize its great energy, remember friends of America, when you begin to call the presence of life into action, energy itself does not discriminate. Therefore, you must call the discrimination and activity of your higher mental body into action to do this for you, to intensify your discrimination, which you may already have, but make it invincible that you no longer make the mistakes of human decisions which mankind have made in the past. When you call the presence of life into action, divine intelligence will act, and as you continue, it will become an infallible action to you. Therefore, I say to you, friends of America and beloved Minute Men, you can bring this activity of life forth so powerfully, that you will no longer find yourself making the mistakes or being drawn into the mistakes of life. By the opinions of others. As you learn to stand in the presence of life, your own, mighty I am, and listen to it instead of human opinions, 
then you will find how quickly all these mistakes will cease. I call your attention to the fact that all mankind have been looking to each other, have been looking to the opinions released by various ones of mankind who seem to be authority in life. May I call your attention to the fact that there is no authority in human opinions anywhere in life. Now this may sound strange to you, but it is very true. Only when you come into the octave of light, which is that of the ascended masters in which there are no mistakes, in which there are no limitations, only that power and intelligence, is the authority of life. As you look to that and your mighty I am presence, will you find that intelligence operating which is the authority and perfection of life in which there are no mistakes. Now it is within your province, within your ability to call into action, and so charge your body, your mind and feeling world with the ascended master's self-luminous intelligent substance of life, that that will soon cause to cease all limitations and actions within your world of action. As you will try this out, you will find that I have told you the truth, and that it is within your reach. Mankind have not believed this. Mankind have thought these transcendent actions of life were for something far beyond them, but today. You must understand that life has provided all perfection for you, and when you give your attention to that source of all perfection, then it will come naturally into your life's experience, your use. As you could not imagine until you begin to exercise your authority in calling this great law forth into action. For remember, in life there is nothing unnatural. There is nothing mysterious, and that is what I wish you to understand today in talking to you of your life. Dismiss all that has seemed mysterious about it, for life is not mysterious, it is just natural and the most practical thing in the world. In fact, take your mechanics of today, how could they come into action into the appearance world and into your use, without coming through the stream of life of some individual? Therefore, your mechanics that you consider practical, are no more practical than life itself, for from and through life must come all that is. Therefore, in your world, the outer action which we term the physical octave, will you understand that all that is here today came through the life stream of some individual, and therefore is practical. Now you can draw forth the currents of energy that you require, and do whatever you determine to fix your attention upon and hold it steadfast enough until the power of its momentum gains the command of the conditions in which you move. The human, so long claiming authority in the AP. Parents' world or to the body alone, has not only forgotten, but has shut off the great flow of life with its ever-increasing intelligence that would naturally have come forth into the action, or use of mankind. If you once understand that you are the cause of every effect that has taken place in your life, then you will understand how you need to come into the understanding of life in order to let it do its perfect work for you. Life does not act, except to a certain degree, which is the law of life, which causes life to flow through a human body and give it action and energy, but that is only to a certain degree. Since mankind have free will and must determine how that energy of life is going to act for them, then today, in this understanding of the presence of life, you will have and feel the authority to call forth a limitless supply to do whatever you choose, to fix your attention upon for achievement. It does not matter what it is, so long as it is constructive, but when you realize that all destructive thought and feeling is a repelling force, then you will understand why mankind has become so limited today, in the use of life. Having forgotten its source and believing that all authority was in the human, Naturally they shut off the greater flow of life except what naturally flows in to sustain life in the body. You will find and notice as you move among mankind. That those who have through one means or another, used up the gathered supply of energy, they have no further power with which to act. Today the individuals who have come to understand this presence of life are able to call forth that energy without limit, and can go on for hours and hours and days and weeks without exhaustion which is the proof of their ability to call forth a greater supply of life, which is energy. To do the things they require. Energy by use becomes power, and when it is qualified by divine love and wisdom of life, then it becomes the trinity of action, which is the fullness of life acting at the direction of intelligence, which you can call forth without any limit. Now remember, your intelligence is not confined to your brain structure by any means. Your brain is but a channel of action for the intelligence flowing forth from life. One day when you have a moving picture, as you will have, of the action within the brain of individuals, will you come to understand exactly what I am referring to today, for I say to you in the not far distant future. 
there will be moving pictures of the exact activity of the movement of life within the brain and of the nerve fluid through the body and the structure, giving mankind the clear definite understanding of what is acting within the human form. Then as you apply your call to life, and see before your own eyes, its intensification, you will see how great is the blessing Saint Germain has brought to you, in bringing this understanding of the mighty I am, which is the power, the source of all life, which mankind may utilize if they choose to do so. But life will not impose itself upon you with a greater intensity. Since mankind have believed that God would do for them what God has to do through them, and remember God is your mighty I am presence, then you will see the reason why limitations have become so apparent, because mankind have not made the call. I say to you, beloved ones, in all kindness and respect to every effort that mankind has made, the difference between your decrees and prayer is tremendous. Prayer is the acceptance of limitations, while to decree a thing is the acknowledgement of the perfection and authority of life brought into action at your point in the universe. Prayer is very wonderful and has sustained mankind in an amazing degree, but now since you have come to the point of the understanding of life, where you can assert its authority perfectly, right and natural then you can utilize this. Now friends of America and beloved Minute Men, to your perfection and to the achievement in the service of the light in everything that your heart desires, for remember in your desire is the action of life impelling itself forward into expression, if you in the lack of energy. Qualify that action of life with human desires, I mean by that, that which would become destructive or limiting, then the fault is yours, not of life. So to gain the understanding of life is the greatest thing in the world, and to understand its natural, its practical action will bring in action and take from mankind the anxiety, or distress in their feeling of lack of ability to cope with the conditions that confront them. Since mankind have generated for centuries the conditions which bring the limitations of today, then to think, friends of America and beloved minute men, that you can undo that. You can have dissolved and consumed these conditions that have imposed upon you these limitations, even though they are of your own creation. Still in a few weeks, to a few months, can you have dissolved and consumed all these conditions which have limited you and brought you into distress. I want you to feel this powerfully and definitely. Friends of America, as well as the beloved Minute Men who are here, I want you to understand that as your attention is upon my words, the powers of light are charging forth into your feeling world that courage strength and victory of life which will one day bring you into this full understanding of the presence of life, which will give you its victory. Therefore, as this goes forth in the vibratory action of mankind, friends of America, I want to say something to you today, that you may understand what the students of the IAM have been doing during the past four years in issuing their mighty decrees which have brought such blessing to mankind. Oh, understand its action. A decree sets the vibratory action going within the atmosphere of earth in the mental and feeling world of mankind, and that is far-reaching, beyond human comprehension, and as this vibratory action goes forth in the world of mankind. It harmonizes and changes the feeling of mankind until those who want to be unjust will become just, and desire divine justice to all. That is how human selfishness will be steadily removed from the world, and mankind will come to have that great love for each other that has been talked about throughout the centuries a brotherly love that has been so often referred to, and yet has been so absent, will become a natural activity of life. Every individual will want everyone else to have the happiness, the success, and perfection which they crave for themselves, and that would be full compliance with the law of life, and would bring such success and happiness. Because then there would be no condition in the world of qualification that would change the natural action of life to bring all that your heart desires. For understand, friends of America, you have used your faculties of life creating, limiting yourselves constantly. Therefore, as you come to understand life and give it the full power to cease all requalification of this mighty energy of life, as it flows forth at your call in its ever-intensifying action, then you will find life will produce its perfection, its success for you. For think you not that life is the producer of your success? Whatever it may have been in the past, it was not the cunning of your intellect that brought that success or the acting intelligence as you thought, which was wholly intellectual, but it has been the power of life flowing through. Although you did not know or give it attention, yet there were certain conditions of harmony within your world or determination that drew forth that release without outer application, which the students are making today. 
but the outer application is the only thing that will make this victory of life a permanent action within you and your world. For mankind has so long charged the atmosphere about them, and the atmosphere of earth with the appearance world by giving it power, that it has brought the limitations that exist today. I say to you, friends of America, the students know this, that as soon as you stop giving power to the appearance world, which is human creation, you will then find your dominion taking rapid action in your world. But mankind must understand and take the authority of life in their world, and of course you understand by that, that your desires and conditions must be constructive if you wish to give obedience and harmony to life, the response that life requires from you. Therefore, as you understand this, then you will be able to calmly, serenely enter into your great call to life, and find every hour, every day its increasing power of action taking dominion in your body, through it into your world of action to produce first, the great harmony of life. Then the ever-increasing expansion of that life, which is the directing intelligence that causes you to do the perfect thing the perfect action in life, in response to your call, that makes for your outer success in the human octave of your business world. I say to you today as we enter this new year, realize that your call to life, if you wish business success, if you wish success in any manner whatsoever, you must realize that the life flowing through your body is the only chance, the only means of the success you desire, and as you call to life. Give it authority, give it power which you have been giving to outer things. Then will life flow forth and produce its perfection for you, its happiness, its strength and courage in your world. For while you believe today that other things have power to affect your world, yet I say. To you from actual knowledge, that you alone are the authority, and all of the rest of the world of mankind cannot interfere or change the action of your individual world, when you call the power of your mighty IAM presence into action, to take command of your mind, body and world. Produce its perfection, and hold its dominion there. You take your own world of action. While all life is one, yet at your point of focus in the physical octave, your world is independent, and if you will understand this, you will not allow conditions of the world to frighten you. You will not allow them to limit you, and you will stand in the presence of life, in the radiance of your own, mighty I am presence, and in your call to life draw to yourself your own. For your life stream has generated, has planned the victory of that which your individual life stream contains for you, and if human opinions, human suggestions did not interfere, that life stream would produce absolute perfection in the body and in the world of action. Therefore, as you understand this and give all attention and power to life, and that does not mean that you should give constant attention to it all day long, but at intervals give direct conscious attention and the call to life to continue in its expanding activity. Take command of your mind and body and cause you to do the perfect thing that you should do, then as quickly as you can, stop going to your friends. Stop looking for directing intelligence from outside. Turn to your presence. Call it into action and let its wisdom and power direct you, then you will not make mistakes. If at first, when you begin to do this, you should make a mistake or two, do not be dismayed but go on and on in that mighty call and soon you will find all mistakes cease. The reason for mankind's mistakes today, suppose one gives forth an idea to a thousand people and they take up that idea, if later that idea is found to be a mistake, then a thousand people have made mistakes through accepting that idea of one individual. Do you quite understand how far-reaching this is? That is why I suggest to you that you stop listening to human opinions and listen to your presence, the mighty IAM, for direction. I say to you, that if you will do this earnestly and sincerely, you will find flowing into your consciousness and mind the full power of the wisdom that is there, and when an emergency appears before you, you will immediately know what to do to govern, harmonize, and control the condition. There is no condition in the world today that cannot be remedied by this. I say to you, as you will give attention to this, you will not need me or anyone else to say to you or to show you how great is that truth. Since you have not given attention to the presence of life, once you begin, 
You will have all the evidence you require of this great truth within your own world of action, but if you will not make the effort, if you will not make the call, you will never know. You will have the same action going on, you have had through the centuries you have lived. Therefore, it is for mankind to choose. We can put before you the truth of life, but if you will not accept it, if you will not apply it, you won't have it. Therefore, it is up to mankind today. They have made all these mistakes and created and brought about them these limitations. If you have drawn yourself into a condition by your own free will, then you must rise out of that by your own effort. There is not anything going to raise you out, friends of America and Minute Men, except your call to life, your acceptance and the ceasing of expecting release and relief from the human world of action. No matter how great has been the magnificent action of all phases of life, for instance, you take your industrial world, you take your medical world, your doctors, lawyers, judges and all the activities of life. They are acting largely upon human opinions or conditions established through human opinions. Now this was not so in the early establishing of your American government. That was powerful, and I was about to say inspiring, but Friends of America, it was more than inspired, because Benjamin Franklin, Washington and Lafayette and others knew St. German in person. Therefore, instead of the perfection that had been established, or was then to bring your government to its present state, that was more than inspiration. It was direct knowledge from Saint Germain in his great wisdom that enabled those of that time to establish that which has brought the perfection today. Remember, if there had not been intrusion in this perfection that was established at that time, mankind would find themselves in a world of great perfection today. But constantly does human opinion and desire try to intrude itself and override the wisdom upon which the foundation of things is laid. Then as long as that condition exists, there will be continuously imposed upon that which was established for perfection, human opinions which change and bring the wrong conditions, which some day must be corrected. Today, we are in that process of the most gigantic correction that has ever been on the face of this earth, and I encourage you beloved minute men and friends of America, to be assured in spite of the appearances in the outer world and the conditions that exist. Your call to life will cause life to become the Almighty dominion in action to correct these conditions and make them permanent. Remember, while this has been said to you many times, I repeat it again, all that you achieve in your call to life, your attention to the mighty I am presence, becomes a permanently sustained activity, a permanently sustained power that holds that dominion which you have gained. If you have gained one foot in advance through that power, then that advance will stand there until you gain another foot, and so on until you enter into the great glorious perfection of life which life wants you to have. So far as your supply is concerned, life wants you to have everything. Mankind has imposed upon each other the sense of financial limitation, but it is not the truth of life. Life offers all, and even in nature her generosity is indescribable, and the substance within the earth produces without limit. Still mankind think that nature has deprived them of things, yet they alone have deprived themselves. Nature is lavish abundance and will give it to mankind, if mankind will harmonize with life, which is nature, and let nature do for them in the physical octave that which it wishes. I say to you in covering this great scope today, mankind has experienced droughts, and insect disturbance in the producing of that food for the sustenance of. 280 The, I am, discourses. Mankind, but why do you think that is there? Not because of nature, but because of the inharmony of mankind. I say to you, the insects that disturb you, beloved friends of America, are mankind's own stinging thoughts that have been their creators. Once mankind understand this, they will see that as soon as harmony and good will reign in mankind, all disturbing conditions of the human octave will cease to be. That is what we are entering into now in this understanding of life and the call to it. As mankind realizes these great truths, will they find that all of these disturbing conditions will have ceased to find an appearance. Then in the call to life and the response of life, will nature produce moisture where it is required, and the abundance of production that all mankind may live in the abundance of every good thing, as soon as the selfishness of mankind ceases to be. That is the only thing that can take this from the feeling world of mankind, the call to the mighty IAM, the presence of life, which will one day dissolve from the feeling world of mankind all selfishness and discord. Therefore, you are so privileged, beloved minute men today, in having this additional knowledge of life, 
and understanding its application. I say to you, friends of America, how you will one day rejoice. Yourself. For after all, when we wish all the good we desire for ourselves for everyone else, then we will have complied with life, and will find our own success and our own requirements being fulfilled with tremendously greater power and supply. Therefore, you cannot afford, gentlemen and friends of America, to desire anything for yourselves that you do not desire for all mankind. Since the action of life is always at hand, always ready, then you will feel that at your hand is the correcting of conditions, a power of action and the intelligence that supplies the wisdom on the moment. For anything that you require for the correcting and perfecting of the conditions that act within your world. Therefore, today let us feel the fullness of that privilege which is yours, and if you do not mind, allow us to be your great friends to give you of our experience which is life, to give you of our wisdom which we have gained in the freedom of life. That the outer world cannot get from any place else. That is the truth of life. We, who are free from limitations are the only ones that can give you the assistance required today to set yourselves free. For I say it with authority. There is not one human being in physical embodiment today that has the strength and power to raise himself out of the limitations, except by our assistance. That is the reason why Saint Germain has. 282 The, I am, Discourses. Brought your attention to the ascended masters, the legions of light and the cosmic beings, who are beings wholly perfect, as tangible as you are, just advanced powers of life, reaching back their glorious hands to you to direct to raise you into that power and perfection which you should have and which every heart craves. Try to understand, gentlemen and friends of America, what a craving and desire within you means. There have been thousands of desires within mankind trying to find action which mankind has wrongly qualified. Let me say something to you which I think the messengers have never said, every desire in your world of action, in your feeling world, in itself is pure and perfect until it finds action through your qualification, and it would remain so. Therefore, I wish to call your attention today to that one tremendous truth, the same as the energy acting would produce perfection, even though it has not power of qualification in itself. Yet energy in itself is perfect, is pure, and so is the desire within the desire world of individuals. In its origination, it is wholly pure and perfect, because it is life surging forth through the individual to find expression, but in going through the individual, it finds human qualification acting there and is why it is. Life is perfect, but when it flows through the human form, it is clothed by the quality within the individual, and being the governing of that, it is the first power of action that acts for the individual. Therefore, instead of the perfection of life that is within that stream of energy, clothed by the quality of the individual, the action of the clothing is the first power that strikes. Therefore, if it be clothed by discord, it will find action in the world of the individual. That is why mankind today, must understand and change all activities by their requalification to allow the perfection of life to flow forth without any, qualification of any kind. Then they will find the full perfection of life finding its full expression in their world. It is a magnificent thing, and since mankind has believed everything else but the perfection of life, I say to you, friends of America and gentlemen, why not now turn and let life have its full perfect action through you in your world? and see how soon mankind will lose the desire to limit their fellow man or to dominate them, or to feel irritable and uncertain. I say to you, in human consciousness mankind has forever that tragic uncertainty, because it is not based upon the foundation of truth. Therefore, all human opinions are wavering. Therefore, that which is wavering is always unstable to produce a given result. That is why those who have come into the under. 284 The, I am, discourses. Therefore, you are deep, standing of this, I am, in holding a firm concentration of the power of life upon a given objective, find no wavering consciousness there. It is held steady until the accomplishment is before you. Therefore, you are dealing with definite law, and when you apply it for definite results, you know your goal from the beginning. I wish to say to you, the beloved ones who are filling official places of responsibility are in the position today to call forth divine justice in a manner that is inconceivable until they put it into practice. Our blessed judges and the sincere lawyers of America today are receiving into their feeling world, tremendous power and blessing that will help to bring divine order and divine justice to our people. 
however, in the intrigue and treachery that is within all nations by human qualities, then mankind is never sure of what is going to happen, but now notice this gentleman. In your world of industry when you deal with the presence, the mighty IAM of individuals instead of their human form. You will have divine order and divine justice in 95% of the cases. That is why mankind in this understanding today, is beginning to know the goal from the beginning, that gives you the assurance, gives you the stabilizer. It's action that stops your qualification from accepting a power apart from that life that would interfere with its perfection of manifestation. So I say to you today, in the fullness of all that you wish to bring forth, first is your acceptance of the presence of life, the mighty I am, then your call to it for its greater expansion and greater release of its energy. Then remember, that it is the foundation, the anchorage of all that is building, that will one day make you a wholly free being in your individual world of action. As long as you consider that some other individual can interfere with you, you will find yourself and your world constantly disturbed. But gentlemen and friends of America, if you will practice, instead of having human opinions of each other, if you will call the blessings of life upon each other, you will hold your feeling world harmonized and bring the blessing to them and through it to yourself. That is beyond any comprehension until a group of mankind try it out and see the perfection which it will produce. In all that you wish to do, there is always a definite power of action and reason for everything, and life is that reason. Therefore, when you wish to have it, you must look to the source of all that is, for that perfection. You cannot get it from the human octave, but when you are willing to give your attention to life. Call it into action, then you will have that sustained. From it, the greater expansion of your own light will bring a greater release of the presence of life into action, in your individual world. Remember, the presence of life is your foundation in the human octave, your mighty I am, and there is no other source in the universe. Therefore, today as you go into action in the fullness of that power, it is necessary, gentlemen. You have forgotten so long. Do not forget this, do not forget your presence of life, which through that is building your foundation that makes for your perfection, happiness and freedom. If you think of your presence one hour and have your attention upon human creation the rest of the time, you will hardly expect to have definite powerful results. But if you give, and there is not any condition that takes your attention so powerfully in the outer world that you cannot once an hour, give silent, direct, powerful attention to your mighty IAM presence and your silent call to it for your perfection, then you are complying with life. Because there is not a thing in your outer requirement that you could not, for a moment, send that call to your presence of life. That is what is meant in the statement of practicing the presence. You don't have to sit down and give your whole undivided attention of the human to that presence, but to once an hour make. That call to the presence of life during your waking state would produce such perfection as you could not imagine at this time, but this is imperative. That builds your foundation that is your final freedom and perfection, but if you do not do this, you cannot have it. Therefore, I say to you, friends of America, today what a marvelous thing it has been to watch the progress of the students throughout America and the world as the advance, the expansion of this light, has gone forth. No thing in all the world that could come to the attention of mankind will give such happiness, such rejoicing as the observation of this mighty activity, and while you are still not able to do that yourselves, yet we, in the kindness of our hearts. Offer to you our observation that it may give you the encouragement and strength you require, until that day you do observe with us all that magnificent activity of life, when given its full power of action, and the glory of that is simply beyond all words. Today, I am speaking now directly to the Minutemen of Saint Germain, you have come to a certain point of action. Your momentum is gained. As you continue its powerful concentration in the call to life, you will find the full power of its action without limit. Therefore, understand that in the momentum you have gained up to date, it has brought you into a position where, if my observation serves me right, you are where you can hold an unwavering concentration by the energy, shall I say the added energy, which you have called forth. I tell you, it is a magnificent achievement, and gives you an opportunity to cleanse purify and fill your world with the perfection of life, that means all upon which your attention is fixed. Mankind alone may choose through the direction of their attention upon what they wish to achieve, and if you are uncertain, please call your presence to give you clear, direct direction of that service that it wishes you to render. 
Many people have a definite idea, and that usually comes from the pressure in the desire world. But if there is uncertainty in your feelings, then call your presence to establish its directing action to cause you to do the perfect thing that your life stream wishes. As you do that, you will find a rest and peace in action that can come in no other way, and as you do this, you will find the full power of its beauty and perfection daily taking command and action, and bringing into your appearance world that which everyone is craving today. Remember gentlemen, and I say this with all the love of my heart, mankind previously has believed that the goal was achieving and accumulating things in the outer world. That is beautiful, it is splendid. But that is not the goal. The goal of mankind is the perfecting of the human form, the glory of life in its full power of action, which we experience in the ascension today. Many times the accumulation of too many things has distracted mankind, until they have lost the ideals which they once held. I have heard so many people say that in youth, they had these magnificent ideals, but when the pressure of the attention of the outer world took command, they forgot all those ideals and lost the power that seemed to be within them then. Well, that is wholly unnecessary. Today you can hold to your ideals and have the perfection which comes forth through them in its full power of action. So make no mistake about it. You are the authority today to bring all the perfection your heart can desire into action into the appearance world, into the blessing of all that stands before you. As you come to greater understanding, an expansion of your light continues, you will have the desire to bless every person in the world, and you won't feel the resentment to the people who have made mistakes as you have in the past. You cannot afford to do it. Resentment at mistakes, whether your own or someone else's, closes the door to the harmony required to fill your world with happiness. Therefore, I say to you in the fullness of all that you require today. Gentlemen, remember your foundation is being laid, the foundation of life, the glory of its perfection. All you have to do is to sustain it. And how? By your continued call to the presence of life, and the withholding of all in harmony from acting within your feeling. May I say, now since you have gained the momentum you have, it is rather to let life flow through by continuous harmony, because you have gained enough momentum now, most of you, where life will begin to act to a large degree automatically. But as you continue your call, then you will intensify that action until it will satisfy the most exacting, in all they wish to bring forth in happiness or perfection to themselves and others. Gentlemen, won't you make the call individually for the restoration of the home life of America that should be so beautiful, so magnificent? It must be restored and will be, but in your call for that particular action, will you hasten it into action in the perfecting of America and the activity that is so rapidly rushing forward? In closing May I call your attention to just one thing, that if you will hold in your visualization in the coming months, it will give us the substance and energy with which to act to produce that result and that is hold your attention fixed upon this perfection of the home life, and in the establishing of divine order and divine justice in all official places. These two activities are vital. You as men acting in the world of industry, remember, you have because of that, a greater authority to call this forth than the individual who is not acting directly in that capacity. Just for instance, as you in your world are the heart center of the focus of energy that flows there, so in your activity in the world of industry, according to what you are representing, will you also become a direct focus of that life, light, power and energy that will change that and bring it into the perfection needed today. So remember, you in this vanguard of the light, must be an individual focus in whatever part of life you represent, in whatever phase of industry you are interested in to act, then they're in that. You are the authority and focus to hold that power there until it reaches out and enters into the feeling world and action of each one, to produce the glory and perfection that must fill our America. I feel tremendously encouraged, gentlemen, tremendously encouraged today. After observing the almighty activity last night from the mighty Teton and the other retreats of the world, for gentlemen, those are no figment of anybody's imagination, they are mighty focuses of power that without them mankind would be lost. I ask you gentlemen, if you want to hold the great ist power in the world to this perfection, govern the energy that flows through your body, conserve it. Refuse absolutely all intoxicants of every kind, for gentlemen, whiskey and gin open you to every destructive force that exists in the world, and don't forget it. 
everyone who might have had that desire within them, can call the presence into action to take out of them that desire, and replace it with the pure substance of life, satisfaction and perfection, and when those desires are gone, you become master of yourself and your world. That which you have known as black magicians and discarnate entities, and which America has been freed from, are responsible for the intensification of those desires in mankind, and don't forget it. Since you have been so tremendously released from that, exert your dominion, self-control, then as you call the presence, into action to take out of you those desires, it will be quickly done. If sometimes those appearances attempt to manifest after you have been making the calls, don't be discouraged. A great battle was not won in just a day, yet, the thousands and thousands of people who have been able to dismiss those desires. Remember all black magicians were seized and taken from the earth at the close of 1938, and all discarnates from the Americas were removed at the same time. No more will ever be allowed to enter or remain here. Overnight almost, is encouraging, and I say to you for the messenger that never in his experience have so many letters reached him of the victory of the students in these years as since their return to your city. That, gentlemen, let me assure you, is the beginning of the almighty victory that you will see manifest within this year. Remember, that your application is hourly becoming more victorious in everything for which you call. Be dauntless and let it do its perfect work for you. I thank you. April 12, 1939 Chicago, Illinois M-I-N-U-T-E-M-E-N. -E -E Beloved students of Chicago and those who are visiting here today, in the fullness of that which has been prepared, and I may only say this much today, one of the greatest achievements known in the history of the Messenger's ministry was accomplished yesterday. I am here today to try to take you with me, and while I talk to you, will you be seated and be just as quiet and still as you can, and please, no matter what I say, just keep your seats and hold this which we wish to do. Since the dispensation has been given and so many of the student body of America and other lands will take advantage of it, and as the messenger called your attention in the beginning of the service today, to begin to prepare yourselves as definitely, at least. As if you were going to journey to Europe, it is a far more important journey I assure you, especially now. Ladies and gentlemen, since I am an Englishman, or used to be, I know considerable about our people. I. 294. No considerable of Europe, and far more in the last three years than I could have ever gained in the physical body. Since we see the cause and effect of all conditions of each nation, then we are in a position to determine what is the thing to do. Now since this dispensation has been given, will you understand that it is given for you? Why do you suppose those great ones went to the great central source of all wisdom, power and knowledge to this earth and gained a dispensation for the people of earth? My dear people, do you understand, won't you try to charge your being with the full comprehension of what that means? Why am I endeavoring to carry you into a certain consciousness, into a certain feeling today? While my time is very short, yet I shall endeavor to do it. When you have actually experienced something, you are in the position first-hand to know the cause and the result, and since I am the one who recently had this experience, then I am an authority to you to lift you into that, if you care to be lifted. When in India, the great master came to me, not an ascended master, and told me and set before me that vision of my goal, I stand in amazement, if we could be amazed in the freedom of the ascended master's octave, I would still be amazed, how it was followed out. You have a magnificent faculty, your physical eyesight, which you could use with a power that is indescribable, if you knew it, if you would believe it, if you would use it. I am amazed how the messengers have pled and shown mankind what they could do with their physical eyesight, one of those three faculties, but they hear it and go on. My dear students, if you are just going to hear a thing, then go on serenely in your old way, what good does it do? Do not construe anything I say as anything critical, you will defeat your purpose if you do. I never criticize anything or anybody, never in the world but I am trying to get at you in a way that will cause you to see definitely your limitless ability, dear people. Oh, I love America just as much as I love England, for I belong to all nations now. Remember, when he held that magnificent worded picture before me, without knowing it outwardly, I accepted and set into action in my feeling world that vision, and then as I briefly follow this, you will understand how definite it was. When he said to me, on a great mountain in North America you will find the man who will enable you to have the ascension, 
Can you believe it, I never questioned it a second. I did not even question how I was going to get there, how I was going to have the money supplied. Not one thought ever entered my mind, except I accepted it. Now this is what the power of complete acceptance means. The light within me, as I know it now, enabled me to accept the fullness of that without question, and you, dear children of the light, could you accept the things that Saint Germain says to you without question? What a transformation would take place in the student body throughout America in 30 days. But to hear a thing and go right on as you did before, is of no consequence. Now then, after he was gone, he and my father went away by themselves and visited for hours. When my father returned I said, Notice, father, what did he say to you? He said, My son, that I may not repeat. How little did I know how he was preparing my father for that which was so quickly to follow. Then he went away, we knew not where. Then, shortly after, suddenly, my father was shot, and the natives brought him home. Understanding what that great presence in our home meant, when my father was brought back, I looked at him, but I only thought, and why blessed father, you are free. There was not the slightest sorrow. I did not know why then, but it just wasn't there. Then this glorious one appeared again, and this time he came from South Africa, with the information that a large fortune had been left to my father, and in case of his passing, to me. Oh, my dear ones. Observe closely how the great light and its power was preparing the way through individuals for all that was required for me. Now notice, I made no effort up to that time. I was just like other lads, very happy and harmonious in our home, because there was no inharmony ever in our home, but my mother felt quite different. Her sorrow was very deep and very great, even though what the master said to her, still she did not quite free herself from that. Then she too, made the change, and I was left a lad alone in the world, as I thought, but how mistaken I was. The master had said that this wealth had been deposited in the Bank of England, and on going there, I found it was there. Then transferring to a bank in New York, I began my search. Talk about patience and determination, I had it, but I did not know it. I just went on and on and on, sometimes I did grow very weary, but never was there a moment or thought of failure or discouragement, as you know it in the outer world. While I grew weary, as soon as I laid my body down and it rested, then the same great calm strength and courage was there. When finally, in arriving and observing the beauties of Mount Shasta, think of all the thousands of miles I traveled, and think of the hundreds of miles I hiked, then that memorable day, when coming sued. Denly upon this good brother sitting on a log, little did I know who he was, what he was, or why he was there. Remember the glory of that inner directing intelligence, which is guarded and directed by your higher mental body. I knew nothing about my higher mental body, but the accuracy with which the final goal came and the speed of it, was something that cannot be described, for as you near the goal, everything in your life simply speeds up. Remember now will you, take that cue. Do you quite get that? May I repeat it? When you come nearer the goal everything in your life stream speeds up. So don't mind if you find yourself in a position to do 10 days work in one day, what you did in days previous. You know, I smile sometimes at the staff, of course, they are not listening, so I can talk to you about it, and when I see them serving with such great speed and intensity, I wonder if they will take this cue. Then, when I went up to him sitting there on the log, and he looked around and stood up, and may I use your slang expression, for a moment we looked each other over, neither one dreaming, now observe dear people, up to that moment. Just observing each other, not either one dreaming what was so quickly to follow. Do you see that? Then I think we both must have begun to feel something, for I am sure we suddenly felt that great peace and harmony to each. Other. When he reached to offer me a drink, in his hand came that crystal cup, and seeing that, everything in my being leaped into action and I thought G-R-E-A-T God. My search is E-N-D-E-D. -E he did not know it, but when I saw that cup, I knew my search was ended. Then he stood there looking at it in amazement, watching it fill with the liquid, and myself doing the same. As soon as I saw it was filled, I seized it with both hands and drank it as fast as I could. I could not tell you just all that took place within a few moments. It was like fire through my entire body, yet not anything unpleasant, but just like a fire, 
and I know today it was a fire of life sweeping out of my physical body, and releasing the purifying substance into action within those few glowing moments. Then, when I stood there watching him, and he in such great amazement, after hearing my story, said, what am I supposed to do? Of course, he felt it, but this is the first time I have ever said to anyone or to him, when I spoke those words, ask the God in you who does know, every force of my being went into action, and the proof was that his human self went out of action. It just dissolved and receded out of this human form, and the light from his presence came down until here, below the heart, and his head, and these arms and shoulders were such a blaz. In light, I could not look into them at first. Then his hands came out and my hands took his, and my feet left the earth. Dear people, follow me in that feeling. As I continued to ascend as far as his hands would reach, and, letting go, continued until my feet were some distance, perhaps twenty feet or more, above his head, then I found myself standing there in the atmosphere looking back at him, watching him, then I felt this great change. I felt this substance released from my body and disappear. That was that part of the substance which could not go with me, but it just left the body, just like a substance all around it, and disappeared. Then, this change. I found myself looking at my body, and it had taken on the fullness of youth, and my garments had changed into those beautiful garments of light. Then, feeling this current, I looked up and there I was looking into this glorious stream of light and energy. After a few moments, I saw within that the great presence of all life, my own, mighty I am. You will never know, no words could tell you my feeling when I found that I was leaving him behind. Then as I disappeared into the, great presence, and went to the ascended master's octave of light, I could not take my mind off of him, and it was weeks and weeks. Finally Saint Germain came to me and said, David, you must change your attention. Your friend still in the physical body has much to do there. You must take your attention off of him, otherwise you will draw him away from the body. That you must not do. To my amazement I could instantly change my thought back from him to that octave of light. Do you understand, my dear ones, I know you cannot fully comprehend, but to the best of your ability try, what that means, my feeling to him for my freedom forever from earth and its limitations. This is real, my dear people. Then, after months I came, and I have remained most of the time, near, to guard and to bless and to thank him for that service. You today are being offered the most glorious thing in eternity, your freedom. Oh, beloved students. In the name of your presence, let childish foolishness be gone. When your goal is offered, after thousands of embodiments in human limitations, who should want to continue longer? In your call to the presence, in your preparation for the goal, be at peace and rest. Make your calls that the presence see you do all that is required in the preparation, that you give all obedience required, then go on about your business quite unconcerned. You would not help it a particle by shutting yourselves up somewhere and concentrating on it. Your goal is according to your decree for it. It can be in this embodiment with a great great number of these beloved students. Please understand, the matter of the number of years over your head has not anything to do with it, not a thing to do with it. You perhaps have made as many mistakes as others who are not as old as you are, but all human mistakes must be forgiven. Do you understand the beneficence of life that has made it possible for all human mistakes to be forgiven? How in kingdom come would mankind ever be free if life had not thus provided? Don't you see, it would be an endless wheel that would never cease. Now when mankind is willing, with all their being, to call on the law of forgiveness for all their mistakes and for all mankind, then life says, we are ready to begin the correcting. If you will continue to accept human opinions, silly gossip of the outside world, of those conditions that hold you bound in these things, don't blame anything but yourselves. Freedom is here for you, and remember, the majority of you beloved students, are people who will not go to war if war came to your America, since you are past the human age limit. But your opportunity to place before the young people, whether they accept it or not, is not your province, but to put it before the young people, call their attention to it. They are the ones who would be there. Since the condition that has grown in your schools. That has tried to take away from your blessed young people of America, the ideals of life, God, it has placed them in the position where they are in the gravest danger in the world. 
but your calls to their higher mental body, to their presence of life, and your call for divine order, divine justice and divine perfection to take command of those minds and bodies, and free them from all false concepts and opinions, would do wonders to your young people of America. That is why today, I urge you with all my heart. You don't have to force things upon people, but to kindly call their attention to this great light. Oh, my dear ones, when you have heard my experience, do you think there is anything in this world that could ridicule me or this good brother as to how that service was rendered? Why, all the silly imbecility of human nonsense that denies these great laws, is so babyish and childish, that any human being on the face of the earth ought to be ashamed to try to assert it. The kindness of this blessed one that has poured out his life to humanity, then imbeciles come back and say it cannot be true. My dear ones, he has given more proof to mankind than any human being that ever lived on this earth, and then puny human beings that are not fit to lace his shoes, come back and say these things cannot be true. It is time that people stop such silly nonsense. Two of the greatest obstructions to your progress, beloved students of Chicago, have been removed. So will you please accept that and go forward in the victory of your light, of the light that is established here and held sustained, and supports you in its courage, strength and power and its wisdom to send you forth victorious in the light. Why, you have us, your friends, the most powerful in the world, if you will only believe it, if you will only accept it, and if you will only call to your presence, and as for any condition, it will not remain long. Since you have lived for centuries in all these limitations and distress and privation, why be disappointed if you have to make a little effort now, and don't sit down or lay down on the job? You know there is more than one kind of sit-down strike. Mankind, in a sort of lethargy, is about the worst kind of sit-down strike, but it hasn't anything to do with the outer strikes. That means that you have struck within yourselves. So I say to you, my beloved ones, take advantage of your opportunity. What a struggle you blessed ones of Chicago have had, because you listen to silly foolish tales. Are you going to do it any more, or are you going to clean it out of your world and go for? War to freedom and victory. I think I see you cleaning it out and going forward to victory. Therefore, we stand ready to give you every assistance. Will you accept it? Now remember, if you allow any gossip to start among yourselves or in your city about each other, or about the messengers, or about this work, then you will alone be responsible for what happens. The greatest opportunity in your lives is here, but only as you shut that out, will you find release and relief complete. Therefore, as we have journeyed together today, how many of you in this room can tell me how soon we shall meet in the octave of light? Can you do as well as I can? I could tell every one of you, whom I am going to meet there, and approximately the time, and I am not a prophet either but that is the power of light in its clearness, that shows the way free of human limitations. I want you to know how great our love is for you, how we stand by waiting every opportunity to serve you. We cannot do more than that. We can only assure you of our presence, of our readiness to serve, and then you must make it possible. I close by saying that in this class, the greatest achievement for America thus far has been accomplished, and the greatest achievement for the student. Body. Not only you here, but those who are focusing their attention upon this class and have come to know its magnificence. My dear ones, what a pity Chicago does not realize that almost a million people's attention is focused upon you here in this classroom twice a day, calling for your perfection. It is the greatest class that ever has been held, and how could it be otherwise with the consciousness of a million individuals and their love pouring out in one mighty focus upon you? to lift you and sweep out of your world every limiting thing. That is what they are calling for, those who love you from every part of America, those mighty groups that are focusing upon you for your blessing, perfection, freedom, supply and your health. Never was such a thing known on earth, beloved ones. Not only just what is magnificently arranged for you here and the mighty light rays here, but their calls to life for you, for your freedom in every conceivable way, for the expansion, blessing, protection and freedom of America. You don't need me to tell you that such a thing in the world never was and never will be, except for these messengers. I want you to see that. I wonder if the student body has forgotten what the great divine director said to them, that these beloved ones would remain the messengers of the ascended masters and the power of light. 
yet so many have been disappointed because they could not receive as the messenger does. The unfortunate lady in Evans Tun who turned aside because she could not call forth Saint Germain's flash of the words of light, turned aside and has failed on the pathway of light. Is it not pitiful when such opportunity is before you? Please remember, when you fail to love these messengers and pour forth gratitude, you have failed life, the light that brings your freedom. People have said, well, I do not need the messengers, I can go to my presence. I do not need the ascended masters, I have my presence. True, you do, but we have failed to find any human being in physical embodiment so far, who could raise themselves into freedom without the ascended master's assistance, and don't forget that, beloved students. The arrogance of the human who says, that they will go on independent of the light that has lifted them, brought them to freedom, they have made a mistake. When people have entered this stream of light and turned aside from it, they have closed the door to their light. Don't misunderstand that, don't forget that, dear students. Your belief, whatever it may be that turned you aside, that does not alter the truth. You blessed people of Chicago, who have had such an opportunity with these messengers, that is the reason why I gave you my experience myself today, in my great love and devotion. These two blessed ones are setting you free, just the same as he set me free, a little slower process, that is all, but if you don't see, know and appreciate that, then the fault is yours. Do not make any mistake about it. These messengers ask nothing for themselves, but your life and all life demands, since they have had the strength to stand for the light, the respect and love of mankind. It is not any affair of theirs, but it is your life, it is all life that demands this. This explanation has never been given to any student body before, but their love is so great for you here, that I am offering this explanation, because I am one who has received his eternal freedom through this, your beloved messenger, and know how magnificent is your opportunity. Yet, you can close the door any time you determine to do it. Life is not going to force you to do anything. We are not going to force you to do anything, but you, as the decree of your own life and energy, must determine. Feel our great almighty intense love for you, our call with almighty power for your freedom, and then remember us, your very loving friends. I thank you. D-I-S-C-O-U-R-S-E-A September 9, 1939 Minneapolis, M-I-N-N-E-S-O-T-A Breakfast Beloved friends of the light, beloved students, we are in a time today that was hoped only recently might still be averted, but since mankind insists on going into the destruction, then since there were not enough students in the world to hold the balance to prevent it, then we must continue to hold it out of America and let the conflagration go on in Europe. Who knows how great the wisdom may be that may bring out of that frightful chaos, a solution of the problems of the world. Before continuing to talk to you, and since there are a few here from Canada, I wish them to take back to Canada, my love and congratulations for having taken, in the infancy of its activity, the removal of the communists from Canada for her defence. I tell you, dear people, you have no idea what that has meant for Canada, what it has meant for America. America has not done so well in keeping out this. To think in a government of America that schools of that diabolical activity have been permitted. Before my ascension, I was an Englishman. Yes, I did, this question has been in the minds of the people so long, I am going to answer it this morning, yes, I was connected with the Lloyds of London, and they could never hold me to the things of the outer world. Dear ones, when the light within you is surging powerfully to free itself from the limitations which that form has drawn it into, then you may be sure at that point it will win its victory. Today in my great freedom, only yesterday I was observing the preparations and conditions in England and France, mankind willingly going into that frightful struggle to destroy each other. For what? There is not a living human being on earth can say for what? because an insane fiend that should be held up as an example and quartered before the world, and how a vast nation can succumb through fear to one puny individual, but such is the force of human creation. Friends and students of America, will you not observe how far-reaching are those conditions and influences? With these words prefacing that which I wish to say to you, I am going to try to hold your attention upon the one thing this morning, and that is association. My dear students, will you not see how impa? 312 I am, discourse.
Tant it is to formulate your associations as much as possible with that which is harmonious. Mankind has difficulty enough in keeping themselves harmonized, without just putting themselves in the position of listening to conversations of people that are out of harmony with this great law. Now all activity and individuals who are acting against this light or disagree with it, many of them, it is not of their own volition. They are seized upon by the destructive forces of mankind. You will rejoice, friends of Minneapolis and St. Paul, to know that for a radius of 50 miles around these cities at 12 o'clock last night, the last of the entities were removed. Simultaneous with that, was a certain amount of the substance thrown off by mankind, dissolved and consumed at the same time. Now this will remove a pressure that has been over your two lovely cities here, and you will never know, ladies and gentlemen, how much. But in the days and weeks ahead, you, who are sensitive to this great light, will see, know and feel clearly and distinctly what it means to be released from that pressure. Your state, being so marvelously productive, that is why the communists focused such a power herein. Hence to speak of. Remember, these conditions that have pretended to assist in the regulation of the conditions of labor and capital, are nothing but a sinister thing underneath. They do not want to remedy the conditions. They are not trying to help labor, but they are trying to trump up excuses to pit labor, as they call it, against a condition which they know does not, in reality, exist, to get the feelings of the people stirred so that the sinister activity can bring in an internal disturbance. So that the forces of the outer world can reach in and finally get a hold and destroy you. Now dear people, the communists, the Nazis, the fascists, all those activities, underlying, are one and the same thing. And you know without my telling you, that they try to take away from the people the feeling of the Godhead, and when you turn from divinity, you have turned to destruction. Saint Germain has almost become determined to reveal to those who care to listen, the true reality that exists in Russia and Germany. Never did such conditions exist upon this earth, and behold today, in the censorship of information, stronger and stronger is being clamped down on Germany any information getting out that people might know the truth in the outer world or even their own people within the clutches of that terrible thing. Do you know that 75% of the German people do not know? That France and England are in the war. The censorship has become so terrible that the people even tremble when they start to listen to the radio, else by some chance, a connection has been made and be discovered that they lose their lives for listening. That is how the true information is being shut out from the people of Russia and Germany. Now dear people, the mass of those people in Germany and in Russia, I tell you there are at least 65% of the people from 14 to 34 years of age in those nations, that in their feelings, are rebelling like fury, but they dare not show the slightest indication of it. They have begun to discover that the very principle of their being has been taken from them, and in the depravity into which they have been thrown, it has become wormwood and ashes to them. I have called with all the power of my being, that ascended master friends be raised up in those two nations with a strength, power and influence to restore the Godhead to Germany and Russia. Now returning to your own beloved land, to your own precious hearts, I say to you friends of Minneapolis and St. Paul, do not be deceived by these pretenses of all these conditions. The communists, Nazis, and fascists will never remedy anything, but bring greater and greater destruction into the world of man. Kind, because the motive back of it is wrong, all wrong. There is only one thing in this universe that can bring the solution, the solving permanently of these conditions to the world and individuals, and that is this light, the attention of every individual to their, mighty I am presence, calling it into action. Then finally the momentum will be gained until individuals everywhere will become such an outpouring of that light, that everything that touches their world of discord will be dissolved, then mankind will again come to know this happiness. Oh, could you see, blessed people, what your beloved Saint Germain has done? Oh, my goodness, not one hundredth part has been said to you of that which he has done to hold the freedom of America, your protection, and your blessing. As was intimated, the messengers could not come here until a certain point had been reached, but now blessed ones, I ask you to observe in the coming weeks and months and see what their presence in your midst has meant. That has enabled us to establish, and hold, and continue to expand this mighty focus of light. Oh, that I might reach the hearts of all mankind today, that they might see clearly and know the forces acting upon mankind, and think, dear people, 
it is nothing extraordinary, since all is the accumulation of mankind in hundreds and thousands of embodiments in which they have lived. This is mankind's own accumulation, and even the destructive forces that have seized upon these individuals and make them fiends incarnate, still that is the accumulation of mankind's destructive force released. As your beloved Lotus said to you, as students, beloved ones, think of your responsibility. When I say this, I do not mean or intend to have you feel undue responsibility, but you as students of the light are examples to the rest of mankind. If you allow yourselves to express discordant things, then you are turning mankind away from this light, because they say, well, if those people are students and still do not have control of themselves, why should we seek this? You see what it means when you enter this great light, to become really the example and be silent toward discordant things. If any person, place or conditions need correcting, just make the gall silently to their presence or their higher mental bodies, then be silent outwardly, that others do not feel that the students still are not living up to the law which this great teaching represents. Now you here in your twin cities are a sufficient focus, beloved students, if you will silence all outer expression of discord and keep calling with dynamic power the light rays into action, to spread this radiance over this city until you will not have places large enough to accommodate the people. I say this in all truth and sincerity, never in the messenger's experience has such response been from the broadcasts, as here in your city. Aside from the outer evidence, we have from the inner standpoint a far greater evidence of this. I congratulate our beloved one for having kept very close touch outwardly of this, but still from our standpoint, we see how even greater has been that response, because we are looking at the feelings of the people. You cannot see that physically, but we do see it. I ask you please, in this entire locality, do not ever feel discouraged at not having a greater response of people in the classes, because they are listening to the broadcasts and the acceptance of it is very remarkable. So after all, the service is being rendered, and that is the important thing. Now let us come back, because we cannot take too much time, let us come back to this point of association. The entire student body of America still does not quite fully understand what that means. If you in your conversation, listen to destructive conversation, and whether you outwardly accept it or not, if you listen to it, some part of your feeling is accepting some of it. Which makes yourself a wedge to let the destructive forces into your individual world of action and into the heart activity of the light, wherever you may be serving. Do you not understand, beloved students, why the messengers are so terrifically dynamic against even listening to destructive things? Now you might sometimes, and people have criticized them for continually referring to that which must be remedied, but if you were not reminded, the service would not be rendered. They do not wish to keep calling your attention to the destructive things, but unless mankind will awaken and render the service, the attention must be called to it. For that service must be rendered in calling your attention to the destructive things, because they already exist, so that you may render the greatest service. It is Saint Germain's hope ere long, that not one word in these classes will ever be uttered of a discordant thing, the whole thing be held absolutely wholly constructive, but until the student body, enough of them, are firmly enough anchored within the power of light at their own call, then they must still be reminded of the conditions that are to be governed, and that is the only reason. You see, we are trying to cover so much ground here, since this is the messenger's first visit. We are trying to hold steadfast to those fundamentals which mean everything in the world in building your foundation of anchorage in the light. Oh, my dear ones, you cannot have a firm permanent building without your foundation secure, and to hold steadfast to the foundation and your calls, until you have formed yourselves in such firm anchorage in this great light of your presence, that nothing can disturb it. Then you must be constantly reminded until that time arrives. You will observe in the experience of the messengers, how quickly they became aware that everything discordant must be shut out of their world, and while they must listen to it, and the letters that come calling for assistance, you cannot shut it all off. Although it is tremendously more wonderful than ever before. But mankind does not understand what is acting, because the momentum of expression of destructive things has been so very great, and mankind always felt justified in criticism, condemnation, and all those qualities that, after all, are just charging their world with the limiting destructive thing. You know, I rejoice that I was just a little bit like the messenger in this respect. By nature, I never was discordant. 
no matter what was going on around me, I tried to make some excuse for it, any way, I kept myself out of it, and I think today, that had much to do with my gaining my freedom. Dear ones, I cannot refrain from calling your attention to it. Just think, dear ones, only such a few years ago, that I in my search, moved about in a limb. It body like yours, and yet at the most unexpected time imaginable my freedom came, not under the new dispensation as you are privileged today. Oh, my dear people, won't you please realize all that that means to you, and Saint Germain and the others who have promised your freedom in your obedience to life. Why, after two and a half million years, possibly more, that you have been re-embodying in limitations, and now even in the chaos that exists today, you are offered your freedom. Precious people, won't you understand all that it means to you? Now please do not feel, any of you, because there are now and then one who wants to know, in all there is to be done, why should I seek my ascension? Because you can be of tremendously more assistance in your ascended state than you can just now. Will you remember, may I anchor this point in your minds today, every human being who makes the ascension, carries the purified substance from the physical octave, which holds and makes it possible for their remaining continuously connected with the octave of earth. And rendering that service from the ascended state that only the ascended masters, who have made the ascension from the octave of the human world, can render. Now why? I think no mention has been made at all. Concerning this, but this stands out before me today so powerfully, that I must call your attention to it. In those who have recently made the ascension, for instance myself, Bob, Rex, Nada, Pearl and the Rayborns and others, why do you suppose the law in this dispensation saw that this was accomplished? Because the more recent activity of this kind, holds the more powerful connection with the octaves of light into your physical octave, for this service that is needed so much at this time. I tell you there are no words to describe, and I make no attempt to convey to you, what the service was that the mighty master Ariel rendered in giving the ascension to those children of China. Dear people, do you not understand that from every environment from where these activities take place, in that instance, the whole activity of the nation was raised. They do not know that outwardly yet, but still everything of perfecting activity must go on from within out, in order to make it permanent. Now then, let us use this for an illustration, suppose today, 10 people among the student body were to make the ascension, and then in a week 20 more, then in another week, 60 or 80 more, what do you think that would do for the entire student body, for America and the world? Do you not see that that would be a powerful raising process of 322 the, I am, the vibratory action of the individuals whose attention was centered upon the presence of life and the assistance to every one of you would be transcendent beyond description. That is the far-reaching power. Let us go back a step to your application. Every person who holds their attention firm and unyielding to their presence, and listens to no gossip or disturbing conversation, and refuses to be influenced by anything that would make them doubt this light. Those individuals become the same lifting power to all the students about them and to the people of the city. Now, let me take the room here for an illustration. Suppose one person sitting here in the center of this room was absolutely firm and unyielding to this power of light, but suddenly, all the people in this room pounce upon him and tell him this work, this light, was all wrong. If that person stood there untouched by all the influence of the rest of you, that person would lift everyone in this room beyond anything that you could express in words. I want you to see what that means as students stand firm, staunch and unyielding. Say to every person who says a word against this light, be silent. Then you would stop it. As you say in your decrees to all human creation, you have no power. Mighty IAM, are doing in the mental and feeling world of mankind. When you assert to all human creation, you have no power, then in the following one, the legions of light sweep across the face of the earth my dear blessed people, that actually takes place and does sweep from the west to the east. Think. A million people calling, issuing those decrees even once a day, is the signal for the powers of light to sweep forth through the atmosphere of earth. Do you think that some of these things, for instance, what has just been done alone in your city, do you think that would have been possible without those calls going forth from the student body acting in the mental and feeling world of mankind everywhere? It would have been impossible I tell you. 
That is how far-reaching is this mighty power of these calls, because after all, my dear ones, are you not mental and feeling beings? You express through your physical body, but my goodness, then only a fragmentary part of what acts in your feeling and mental world before the expression goes forth. After all, you can and do express many things in so many words, but there is little effect from it, but you can put forth a dynamic feeling that enters the feeling world of mankind, and it's almost irreparable damage, for its destruction. On the other hand, you can put forth a joyful feeling of the truth of this light, and it will go forth in the mental and feeling world of mankind and give them the courage and strength on touching this light, just like a flower unfolding, and then they become permanently anchored. I say to the messengers, beloved ones, rejoice with all your hearts, the broadcasts are a thousand times making up for the lack of attendance at the theatre. Keep on calling, beloved students, for your own temples of light. I tell you, that two of them will come forth in America sooner than you realize. Keep up that mighty call, it is dauntless and nothing can stand before its achievement. Once you have these two points in America established by which the ever-intensifying activity of this light can be established, and held uninterrupted, in which there is no other influence, then you will see still a very much greater activity. You are bound to have at least two of your own radio stations in America. The light is bound to bring it. Do not be impatient physically, go right on and on making your powerful determined calls, and all of a sudden you will find, well, there it is. Please beloved students, do not let the appearance of the conditions in Europe make you feel that there is any retarding process in America. It is true, quite true, that still in America are a network of spies still trying, but they have lost their influence, oh, so Trey. Tremendously. If you were to see in the CIO what has taken place in the past six months, you would go right through the ceiling. That frightful destructive force that was using that means to try to get its clutches upon the people of America, has lost almost its entire influence, and of course, then will be more and more revealed the nefarious activities that were going on underneath. Let me tell you, dear people of America, you can never pour forth gratitude enough to the Dyes Commission for that which they have set into action in America. How do you suppose, dear people, it was that these things came about? Have you not been calling for ascended master friends to be raised up everywhere in America? Well now, because those people were not students of the light, yet, they are well informed about it, still they can be ascended master friends raised up, and so it will be, ever expanding throughout America. As these things are from time to time revealed, and the people really begin to see the deception that was practiced upon them, then they will begin to understand and be more alert to anything in the future deceiving them. But the greatest deception has been practiced in America by these spies who have gone about so cunningly. I want to call your attention to one point, and all of. You who saw the confessions of a Nazi spy saw there the one point, and if you did not catch it in the picture, I call your attention to it. Remember, when the first of their spies were discovered in America, as was indicated there, the Gestapo in Germany said, now then, we must change our tactics entirely. They then began to establish the American Bund in America, in the pretense of the defense of America, to get their claws on the young people as well, and all the time underneath was the Gestapo in Germany. Now the people, thank God, are beginning to awaken to what that is doing in their midst. Call, 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 dear people, for that to be absolutely withdrawn from your America, that it be shattered, for it has been revealed, and will be more and more, what is underneath. There are many wonderful German people in America who are loyal to America, but the influence of these claws has been terrific, even reaching many people who were not German in America. Therefore, let us awaken, dear people, make your calls, knowing the infinite power they are as they go forth to act in the mental and feeling world of mankind, and you will have rendered your service. You will have fulfilled the law of life. Do not let anyone come to you and tell you that these things in America are harmless. They are strict. In at your very foundation. Dear people, to show you how that arrogance, reaching a certain point, will cause the outer expression to reveal the inner secret motive when Hitler said to his people, that he would take France and England and then compel them to assist him in taking America, why, such insanity? Don't you see, those individuals are compelled to say with their own lips, the things that reveal the inner motive, but that is childish foolishness. You know I was an Englishman, and when I am in England I still am, but when I am in America, 
I am a staunch American. There in that great octave of light we know no nation but the perfection of life, and one day all the earth will know that perfection of life. There will be no controversies among the nations, and then what a paradise earth will be, in which to live. You know the old medical theory that when you give a fever time, it will run its course. Well, maybe this is a fever over there, a very destructive fever, but if it has to run its course in order to purify, then maybe after all, that purification may come very quickly. But there is still a greater purification that has been surging to release itself upon mankind, and that is the mighty cataclysmic action. You will never know how the great ascended masters and the cosmic beings have withheld that from the earth so far. That almost three years ago would have begun to release its force of action upon this earth. I call your attention again today, beloved people, to Siberia, a nation that was once a semi-tropical land, that within a few hours froze every form, as it stood, into solid ice. The evidence is discovered today by the outer scientific world, mastodons, even horses bridled and saddled for action, with their eyes looking forward to the coming of their masters. That is real, dear people. Then can any scientist in the outer world tell me how that came about? No, because no man in the outer world knows, but we have the record which we may read of what took place. I say to our beloved Grant, who was just telling the messenger of an incident with the birds, which occurred in Imperial Valley in California, remember the birds of the air make no mistakes, and when they change their activity you may be sure that wisdom is acting. And they changed their activity from October to August. This is a considerable change, ladies and gentlemen. Watch, O oh beloved people, for the signals that will be given of coming evidences. Don't look for events, but watch for the signals. Many will be given, and if things begin to occur, be more calm than ever. You know your beloved Saint German's statement was very emphatic, that when cataclysmic action began to take place, the people remaining would jump in the lap of God and stay there. Well, I very much expect that will be the case, then the people whose attention has been drawn away from the Godhead, will suddenly be reminded after all, there is an intelligence and power greater than man, and never forget it, beloved students. Human opinions do not change the great law, but remember your mighty victories fiat for this earth did change many of the activities of the law for this earth in a magnificent manner. Never will mankind be able to pour forth gratitude enough to the mighty victory, the tall master from Venus who came once again to render that mighty service to this earth, each fulfilling some part of the mighty plan. Behold! Saint Germain, the lord of the violet ray to this earth, the mighty great divine director, the authority for the life streams of mankind, and beloved Nada, who was instrumental and will be again, in raising civilizations to their height. That wonderful being whose wisdom is so great in governmental activities, your mighty victory, who issued the fiat for this earth changing the activity of the laws, and who brought forth from the partial truth the full truth to the understanding of mankind. Reversing some of the old laws which had been issued for the deception of mankind, no longer to act, the goddess of light. Who has rendered a service to this earth few great beings have rendered, the goddess of justice, recalled from deep within the great silence, that the call of the student body of America and the world had caused to return, that divine justice might once again be established on this earth. The goddess of purity, who was driven from the earth by the feelings of mankind in their depravity, has once again been recalled, to wield that scepter of power of purity and re-establish in mankind, the glory of the perfection of God. Life in its purity and perfection and manifestation through human form, and your goddess of liberty, magnificent beyond words, the power of the future of America. Since her wisdom was great enough to give Washington that vision, and since the closing of it said in emphatic terms, THAT if necessary THAT LIGHT as of ATHOUSAND SONS WOULDDESC ENDINTOTHEARTH never forget it, and remember. Your acceptance and comprehension of that great fiat will enable it to come forth more quickly. Why not have it come forth before the episode occurs, instead of afterwards? That is how your calls, beloved ones, the Godhead embodied, may call into action upon the surface of this earth and hasten the activity of perfection, instead of allowing the destructive activities to first act. I want to see your cities preserved in America. 
great changes will come in your outer physical structures into greater and greater perfection, but let the natural law of life and its action cause that to be done, rather than devastation. Only a few days ago, Saint Germain, with a group of us, was looking into some of your industrial activities here. I may not reveal to you what we said, what was determined to be done, but great transformation must come forth, in simplicity in the perfection of activity. No person will be the loser of anything, or could be, in the coming forth of this greater perfection, but mankind outwardly does not understand that. They think, oh, my dear, I am losing millions of dollars by it. Why? By the more cumbersome machinery and things like that? Well, temporarily, but in its place would come that which would compensate for the loss. You know it would be impossible for life not to compensate for that which we willingly give, and won't you remember that in your individual life and call? Life always compensates. If something goes out from you, something, as your beloved Lotus says, ten times better comes back, and you establish the law. Dear people, do you understand when the messengers are calling for ten times more than the financial supply you require for the moment? Don't you see, it is establishing the law that keeps always on hand that which you require in any emergency. Of course, life. 332 The, I am, discourses. Itself knows no emergency, but those in limited form do still accept that there are emergencies. As long as that condition exists in the minds of mankind, there must be something to compensate for it and hold the balance. Now, I would like to go on the rest of the day. You know, blessed friends, I feel quite honored to be in your midst with all these distinguished faces. Why do I say that? Oh no, not to flatter you, but because of the light that is shining through. Dear people, I perhaps see more than you are aware of, but let that light go on and shine through until your blessed faces become luminous with the glory of its mighty dominion in your human forms, and worlds of action. Let it go forth with the full power and victory of the light. I thank you and bless you always. I am, Discourses. By. Beloved David Lloyd the following discourses were dictated. Through. The Beloved Messenger Mrs. G. W. Ballard. December 11, 1953 Chicago, Illinois. Precious ones of the mighty Saint Germans family, thank you for your presence here tonight, thank you for your love of the light. Thank you for your desire to be raised into its victory forever. And if in my humble way, I can do anything to assist you, to make you feel what I felt in the accomplishment of my ascension the way it was attained, I shall be so happy at any moment to send my feeling to you, that you may anticipate the experience and live deep within the love of that feeling. So we may accomplish the most possible as the great cosmic law permits. Having once attained the ascension in the way which I did, anyone who can feel me within your heart, can feel the feeling I experienced in the magnificent victory and transcendent way in which it was accomplished for me. Long years of love and desire for that, drew the power in and around me, qualified with the ability to accomplish it. So it is with you, if you desire to do it that way, without any personal reason, but just because it is the most wonderful, perfect way to accomplish it, and then to leave. 3. It as an example for mankind to love to follow, then it is an easy matter as you dwell upon the experience to receive the feeling that was mine in the moment and the hour of my attainment. For I assure you, when you make the transition from the outer self into the full perfection of the higher mental body, it is the most wonderful feeling to accomplish that consciously with full determination. Knowing every instant the glory into which you are ascending and the blessing to that which you leave. One of the secrets which I feel you should know in regard to the fulfillment of your desire, if you want to attain your ascension as I did, is to be continuously aware, sometime each day, of blessing everything in the physical world that has assisted you. Just as if it were a being, you thank the thing for the blessing which its existence gave to you. You just thank everything with the love that frees you from all connection with anything in this world, except your, beloved IAM presence and the ascended host. Then you leave the feeling of that wave of love and gratitude to everything that you have used you leave the blessing that one day will free it from all human qualities imposed upon anything in the world. That is one way of overcoming what the world calls the gravity pull of earth. I want you to feel, if you will, my presence in your heart, as you send your love to your, mighty I. A.M. Presence, and your call to me to assist you to enter into its eternal perfection.
My dear ones, while the struggle was over a period of more than fifty years in my search for the man who could give me my ascension, yet in that experience of fifty years desiring it, was the ever-increasing release of the expansion of my own heart's flame of love. That became the raising power drawn from the great central sun magnet, that gave the outer physical form the assistance to pass directly from what you call the physical atomic structure of this world, into the gradual raising and vibratory action of the love of my higher mental body. I assure you, the sensation was something, like what you experience when you go up in an elevator, only much more refined and much more enjoyable. There was not one fraction of an instant when I was not completely aware of the love to all that was down here, and my love to that which was drawing me there, and I was passing just clothed in the love that set me free. I loved to attain that so long, I wanted to attain it so long, and I knew that love was the only way, because you cannot take there anything that is not love. So, I knew if I were going to attain it, that love had to be the purifying power of the physical body, it had to be all the vibratory action of the love of God. If I were to attain consciously the fulfillment of my desire. So, beloved ones, I am going to do something for you all tonight, which I trust you will enjoy and one day appreciate without feeling that I have intruded upon you. I A M G O I N G T O place T H E I M A G E O F M Y S E L F W I T H I N T H E love. O F your H E A R T T H A T I M A A N C H O R W I T H I N U M I F E E L I N G O F love T O H E L P U A T T A I N T H E ascension as I did. Thank you, precious ones, won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. Now, you may think, well, we don't know what you look like. How can we hold the image? Well, you see, if you just hold the oval of light within your heart, knowing it is my love, I will be able to convey to you through that more easily, my actual feeling of the raising of the body. That will assist you much more than you realize, to expand the unfed flame in your heart and let its love go forth to bless the things that you have used in this world and those you have contacted. So, when enough love has gone forth to bless everybody and everything that has ever contacted your life stream, when enough of that has gone forth, then there are no more pulls so to speak, to the conditions of the outer world that hold any of your energy away from your presence. When the release comes. From the things that have held you, or the conditions, because you have just poured love enough upon them to give them freedom from any connection with you, then the energy of the outer self is free in the love to the presence to complete the victory. I am quite sure that I can make you feel my love that brought freedom to me. I know what I felt when I gave everything else its freedom by my love and blessing to it. I know what that feeling is of just being free from every bit of struggle in this world. That love to everything around me gave me that feeling of freedom, and as soon as I had given complete freedom, I had my freedom. It can only come through enough love to all that you contact in the physical world, and that love must be the outpouring of your higher mental body through the outer self. With that pure divine love, that just blesses with deep gratitude everything that God has placed in this world to assist your life stream to be free. So, love is the only way, and since your love is so great tonight for your nation and for the protection of that which is right, and since your service thus far has been so wonderful, I wanted to offer you the assistance of my love to accomplish your victory as happily as I did mine. I can make you feel what it means to love yourself free from the connection with this world, and to love yourself into the next world by your love to your presence. It works both ways. Your love to everything in this world that has blessed you, and even all that has not, frees you from the connection with the qualities of this world, and your love to your presence, is an action of the great central sun magnet that draws you into the love of your presence. Since your love to your nation tonight has been so great, and since your calls have gone forth, then love must answer its own and the love you have given to save that which is of God within your borders. Will always remain within and around you to help you give that same protection and freedom to the life around you, until your presence gives you the same thing. My feeling when I saw the beloved Godfrey, and H.E. handed me that cup, I shall feel that thrill and I feel it yet. I shall feel it for eternity. For in that moment, there is a record made in the universe of the glory that comes only from that magnificent I am presence, that gives you existence. No one knows how much I loved him, no one knows how much I love him, no one knows how deeply you feel the gratitude for the connection with that power that attains the fulfillment of your desire. 
that is why my love was so great. It took me some time, even in the ascended state, to control the intensity of my love and gratitude to him, because it was a management of the en. Ergi which had gathered so powerfully during those long years of my desire. The mighty Saint Germain and the great ones have taught so well the way, the means of gaining your victory. So, in the realm to which I went immediately, as I became accustomed to the use of those greater powers of my freedom, as the greater love surges, you still have to hold control of that energy. And I had to sort of practice controlling that before I dared come back into the atmosphere of the beloved Godfra. Do you know, my dear ones, the channel through which you receive your ascension is an altar of love that abides with you for all eternity. You never lose the love nor the gratitude nor the wonder of that help which comes to you in the attainment of the final moment of your victory. There is no compensation. There is no balance you could ever give in the universe to those who help you to your ascension. The love is so great for eternity, that it ever seeks to spread forth its blessings to make others feel that same love that sets all free. That is why the mighty Saint Germain, in his love to the Master Jesus, is an honor to life whenever he passes him, and that love and gratitude ever grows greater for his great magnificent work throughout the world. The blessed Master Jesus in the powerful assistance and strength which he was to the earth, in that vic. Tory of his attainment, shall forever bless this whole system of worlds with the glory of its perfection. So it is with you. In the moment of the ascension, there comes such joy if you attain it consciously, without passing through the change called death. There comes such joy as you will never know, until you begin to use it to bring joy to others. That is why tonight, I have anchored the image of myself within the love of your own heart's flame, that I may make you feel again and again the feeling which was mine of that complete love that is your attainment. Then it will not be so difficult to pour love to the world around you as you feel more often the mastery and complete freedom that is in my feeling as I attained that freedom and felt it for the first time. The first time you feel that complete release, the feeling will never fade through eternity. So, my fifty years of wandering throughout the world, throughout America, seeking that which fulfilled the blessing of the master who gave me that instruction, while it seemed a long strenuous effort, yet it was so little for what I received. All the effort you will ever make toward your ascension, beloved ones, in self-correction and obedience, is such a small thing compared to the great thing of attaining the ascension. So, when you realize, that in letting go of everything here, by pouring your love and blessing to it, you are receiving the infinite love and happiness of eternity. Nothing will seem difficult, nothing will be a struggle. Everything will be just an opportunity to send forth more of that love that brings the moment of such transcendent joy, as you complete your victory of your journey through this world, and you arise consciously within that ray of light. Whose love to the heart of creation ever raises you to greater heights of perfection. But the greatest freedom in the universe is yours as you bless this world and everything that touched your life stream, with the love that sets you free. In setting yourself free, you are loving the substance of this world into the purity that will one day be self-luminous, and the earth itself becomes ascended also. So, as you give the love that cuts you loose from the limitations of this world, you are also giving the love that helps to raise this world into its ascension, as you take your own. So, as you remember me, try to keep paramount in your consciousness, THAT I have placed WITHINMY image. In THE love O F your H E A R T, I have placed M Y feely N G O F M Y love T O life, and it will be much easier for you to pour forth love and kindness, where heretofore, perhaps, it has been something of a struggle. So, my love, in the image in your heart of me, will be the assistance to you that enables you to expand your own love more rapidly in that magnificent service, which you have the privilege to give to life, because you know this law consciously. Then, if it becomes necessary, you will have made preparation ahead, whereby the cosmic law can draw you unto its own love, because the way is prepared, your love has been sent forth to free the rest of life, and automatically the cosmic law pours back to you your freedom of eternity. So, when you think of me, try to feel me ascending. As that feeling saturates the energy in and around your physical body and the atmosphere about you. The more you can feel me and feel that love which was mine at the moment of my ascension, that simply begins to saturate you in your world, and in its natural raising action, one day. Helps you to complete the journey of centuries through the distress of this world. 
It's wonderful to be able to just draw God's love into everything that gives freedom. In giving it to the world, you give it to yourself. It's the best investment you can ever make. May you know with every fiber of your being, that as you give the love of God to the world, you are giving it to yourselves, because, as it frees the world, your presence frees you. So, as I give you my love and my feeling. At the moment of my ascension, through the image of myself into the energy of your feeling world, I am quite sure you will know that I am real, I am tangible, I am visible and I am your friend of eternity. If I may assist you through my love to your final victory, I shall be your friend for eternity. Thank you, precious ones. Now, as you go forward, there is nothing strenuous about it. You do not have to sit hours in a day, and do it. You simply feel it, let its love expand, and go on about your business. It just becomes like when you turn up a light. If you turn on more current, the light just gets brighter, and you turn it on again, and it gets brighter. So it is, with the raising of the outer self. As you just send your love to your presence, in recognition of that which you want, and as you ask to feel my love at the moment of my ascension, it will be an expanding flame, flowing through you to enable you to do likewise. That which man has done, man can do, and, if the great cosmic law permitted my ascension that way, why would it not permit yours, if you give the same love to life that I did? And I can give you my feeling of love at that moment. As you give that love to free life, life above you gives you its love to free you. There is no such thing as failure to the love that is for eternity, the perfection of God's great miracle life from the great central Sunday. So, just whenever you think of me, remember my love is ever abiding within you. When you come to beloved Shasta Springs, when you come near to the locality where I attained my victory, I assure you, that locality is flooded with my love, because there I got my freedom. It's no wonder you love Mount Shasta. It's no wonder you love the springs. For my love has ever abided there and ever will abide, to raise all who will understand this law, as rapidly as possible to attain a like victory. Because, when you have a wonderful blessing, you know love wants to share it with others who will be as happy as I am. So, go forward, and know that my love in you will make you feel the love to life. That enables you one day to enter in consciously to the love of your presence, and then go on into cosmic action. So, may the fullness and awareness of my love for you ever abide with you, and clothe you in all the power of that love you will ever require to attain your victory, as I did mine. May we go forward and just bless everything with the love that purifies and sets free, until the giving of freedom to others has automatically brought your own. May you feel my enfolding presence, and remember the image of myself in you, as my love to help you, till your vic. Tori is complete forever. May you feel it deeply and give it everywhere, till all stand in our octave, the journey completed, the world blessed with our love, until it is the sun in space, that forever loves the universe. May my love abide, and forever bring you to your final attainment. Thank you so much. August 19, 1954 Shasta Springs, California Beloved ones of my heart, I welcome you tonight with a joy that words will never convey, but which my feelings shall reveal to you within yourselves, for your strength and accomplishment of that which you choose to make conscious effort to attain. In entering into the use of the great power by which the ascension is attained, there may seem situations in the outer that apparently would try to discourage you, but remember your own authority of your blessed mighty I am presence is paramount over all human creation. And tonight I want you to feel that. I want you to use that authority, with the full realization that the sacred fire from the great central sun in its dominion upon the earth is yours to use without limit. Now, to make your journey more wonderful in every way, and your victory more certain, I wish you to understand, that as you are definitely concerned with calling forth the ascension for all mankind the original divine way. 60% of that desire and the energy which it concentrates into your feeling world, remains in your own life stream to be the ascending power to help you. 348. Mankind, bound as they are in the shadows that will not let them understand what the light holds to bless them, must have assistance to draw them up and out of those shadows by a power of light that they cannot resist. That is the reason for the descent of the cosmic light into the atmosphere of earth, and into the mental and feeling world of the mass of the people, that there may live again within them the desire to have the perfection of God, and the freedom from the heart of creation. 
that fulfill the divine plan to set them free. This, I want to assure you, will flood to you every day from my heart, and from the hearts of the ascended host that are ready now to release their feeling that they experienced at the moment of the ascension, into the feeling world, into the energy of the mental and feeling world of all mankind. Because, in attaining the ascension, there must come within the energy of the outer self, the feeling of levitation, the feeling of arising, and the vibratory action increasing in the flesh structure to the point, where it becomes one with the vibratory action of the higher mental body. Which is the Christ consciousness, the Christ love that you must feel for all that is, before you can enter into the flame presence, or the electronic body of the, mighty IAM. So, those of us who have gone the pathway before, you, have already experienced the feeling of rising from the physical structure of earth into the glorifying, blazing substance of the higher mental body, which carries a thrill, a joy, a power, that you will never forget in all eternity. Then, as you enter into the oneness with the electronic body, that raising process is so wonderful, it is such ecstasy, it is such a sense of freedom, and such dominion over all the atmosphere around you, that it makes its eternal impression upon your feeling. You never forget the joy of those moments when you are arising into your great mastery and almighty dominion over the energy of the universe. Since no unascended being can convey that to you, it is imperative that mankind have this assistance from the ascended masters and the cosmic beings and the angelic host, because the ascension cannot be accomplished without that feeling flooding into and qualifying everything, that is the energy and substance of the outer self, with the feeling of that love which is master of creation and is the source from which all happiness and all perfection forever pour forth to flood everywhere its dominion for eternity. While our love is so great for you all, and we do have to temper it with mercy, beloved ones, as you turn your attention to us, so we do not overwhelm you too suddenly, yet, every time you give us the op. Port unity, through your attention, to make you feel our presence and our feeling at the moment of the ascension, every time you do that, you are raised one step nearer into your victory. So, if you don't mind, I would like to associate with you very, very often. Thank you, precious ones, with all my heart. Won't you be seated please, and just remain so. Now if you care to experiment with this feeling sometime each day, if only for a few moments, as you turn your attention to me, I think you will be quite conscious of a peace and an ease coming into the energy of your feeling world, that will be not only a sustaining strength, but will be an expanding light and a raising power that gradually transmutes the substance of the outer self into the white fire body of your higher mental body. This is the great process within life for raising the substance and the energy of which this world is composed, into the eternal activity of the sacred fire, that forever expands its perfection everywhere throughout the universe. Therefore, even the tiniest portion of the substance or energy of the physical octave must someday become a flame in the ascended master's octave and as you draw forth our feeling into the physical conditions of the world around you. Our sacred fire begins to flood your world with the perfection and the happiness, that one day makes the earth a sun in space, and all life upon it, ascended. Regardless of anything mankind has created, this of which I speak is the master power of life. It will never fail you, and it is never absent, and no one in the universe can prevent you having its perfection. If you decide within yourself to feel the love to your, IAM presence, and the ascended host, which enables their sacred fire, our sacred fire, to come back into you. Carrying into you our feeling of dominion, of illumination, and of the miracle control of all substance, and all energy for which you have called. Then, my dear ones, the matter of the healing of the body, or the healing of the mind, or the illumination of the outer self, is but a continual flow into that energy of the feeling from our great octave of life. If you will bring our feeling of that love to life into this world, just as surely as you call this forth into outer physical conditions, must the cosmic law flood you with the feeling from the great central sun that gives you the blessings and the power and assistance to express the fullness of your mastery. So, if I may convey to you the joy of attainment after long years of search and struggle, I am just as sure, as I am that the universe exists, that you will accept my feeling of my victory and my love and my enjoyment of attainment. And regardless of anything of human creation or limitation, if you will turn away from it, and D-E-M-A-N-D-T-H-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-J-O-Y-A-N-D-V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S-A-T-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T-O, 
F-T-H-O-S-E-W-H-O-S-T-A-N-D-T-H-E-M-A-S-T-E-R Pre's N-C-E-O-F-T-H-E Cosmic Law T-O-T-H I-S-W-O-R-L-D Their love and their feeling of complete dominion comes into the energy of your life. And you, feeling as they do, manifest as they do, their love to this world, and as you give it, you must receive it from above. So, beloved ones, the greatest joy in existence is to call to your mighty I am presence, to make the outer self feel the fullness of its own mighty heart's command to life. As you ask that from your presence, and then, ask it from those of the ascended host to whom your attention might be called at that time, there comes a twofold stream of that feeling into the energy of your own outer self, and as that feeling is built permanently into your outer consciousness, and its energy and substance, it must produce perfection for you and it must raise the outer world around you into perfection also. Since, in this magnificent gift of life, which the mighty I am presence, has bestowed upon the outer self for its use in this physical world, there must come the attainment of your victory, then we who are privileged to assist, continually watch every opportunity when your attention comes to us. To flood you with our feeling. Now, in the assistance which I wish to give to you, that as many of you as possible may have the ascension the same way I attained mine, I assure you, I am not going to recall the feeling of my struggle, through the years before my attainment. That has been consumed. I have replaced it with the feeling of my joy and freedom at the moment of the ascension. So, any feeling that comes to you from me, when your attention comes to me, can never bring back to you anything but the joy, the victory, and the power of my attainment. Now then, in sending forth your call for the freedom of mankind, there must come the love of forgiveness to that which is of the shadows. Now I do not mean a sympathy with that which is destructive. I mean the use of this sacred fire, with the command that it go forth into all that causes distress and consumes it from the universe, and in its place, you leave this feeling from the heart of creation of the glory and attainment of the ascension. Then that becomes an illumining, purifying activity to the physical structure of earth, until, like a magnet, it draws off the impurities that have been imposed upon the beings of the elements, and the forces of nature, and the substance of mankind's bodies. In drawing off that impurity, it changes the appearance of the physical form, and mankind return to the original divine path. Turn from whence they began their journey upon the earth. This will solve more problems than you can possibly understand tonight for it is the hand of the sacred fire from the great central sun that removes from God's world, and from those who have journeyed this way. The appearance and the qualities of desecration of the beauty that was given in the beginning. So, when my feeling of love comes to you, I want you to realize, I shall charge you with the exhilaration and the thrill of joy that will lift you, day after day, into such victorious accomplishment while you yet move in the outer world, that wherever you abide. The Ascended Master's perfection does become a part of this world because of your joy and anticipation of your attainment. So, beloved ones, let us try this in the next three days. If you want my exhilaration and thrill of my experience in the place of seeming physical weariness, I have the power to draw off that which is not the joy and miraculous accomplishment of that which you desire to produce before mankind, as the picture of the joy of fulfilling the great divine plan. I will assist you in every way in this locality to accomplish anything your hearts desire to do for the raising of mankind, and the earth into the perfection that should long ago have been established here, as the great blessing from the central sun. You may have anything you desire, so long as you bring ascended master perfection into this world for the ascension of all, including the earth itself, in the fulfillment of the great divine plan. It seems to me, mankind have traveled the path of struggle and distress, and the shadows, long enough. My love is light to the universe, and so should yours be, in your call for the ascension of mankind. The very intensity of your call will bring a light within and around you, that will show the rest of mankind the pathway out of distress, and into the happiness that mastery alone can give. So, as those who have assisted mankind through the centuries to attain the ascension through the retreats of the world, are now pouring their feeling of So, as those who have assisted mankind through the centuries to attain the ascension through the retreats of the world, are now pouring their feeling of that ascension into the outer activities of mankind. It is that the distress of the centuries may be compelled to be released and consumed from the universe, that the heart in every human being may speak its command to the fulfillment of the great divine plan, the joyous way out of the human ideas, and into the feeling of the love that never produces imperfection.
So, blessed ones, whenever you pour your love to mankind, remember to make the call for the Ascended Master's feeling of that love to go forth to mankind that can never produce imperfection, or unhappiness, or anything in the way of a struggle to life. Anywhere you pass by. I tell you, it is such a thrill of joy to be able to send forth that sacred fire of the love that brings happiness wherever the shadows of distress have unfortunately been created by mankind. Will you try to awaken to the consciousness that the great all-wise, all-loving, all-perfect source of life, the mighty I am presence, in the great central sun, never created unhappiness or imperfection in this world? So, since you have had to experience some of it, and certainly want no more, then as you understand what it means to draw the thrill of the ascension into the feeling world of yourselves and the rest of mankind, just make the call, then go on in a perfectly natural, normal way every day. You will find that thrill and feeling which we experience, becoming a natural part of your own outer activities, just as the joyous assurance of your own victory attained. The very intensity of that love and that feeling will draw your ascension into action, not necessarily more quickly, but with the greater power that is the raising activity to the rest of the earth. In that way, my dear ones, you could raise an entire locality out of the distress, and imperfection, and blight mankind have imposed upon it, and make it become a glorifying activity to the source of life to all. If you will only remember how intense my love was for the beloved God for after those long years of search, when, again and again, I became discouraged, but only for a time, just perhaps a few moments or an hour. Then, there always arose within me, the determination to search once again. Where do you think that determination came from? Both my, mighty IAM presence, and the radiation of the love of that blessed master in India, who told me to search. That was the strength of his love which he gave me in those words, and that was my power to accomplish. So, I too can give it to you. I can give you the thrill of my feeling at that moment, and, I can give you the feeling of that determination that never wavers, because the goal must be attained someday, sometime, somewhere by all. In the meantime, you can draw perfection into this world, until all understand their obligation to release the earth from the distress of unfortunate human creation. So, as we go forward, beloved ones, who have tread the very ground I walked upon, you who have gazed upon the mountain that I loved, you who have felt the peace and the power in this locality, I ask you to accept right here my feeling, and joy, and raising activity at the moment of the ascension. The Master Jesus, and the beloved Godfer, and all who have attained it, will intensify that feeling in this locality, as well as in yourselves. Then, when you d e m a n d t h a t m a n k i n shall awaken o u t o f t h e i or distress, a n d s h a l l f e e l t h e l i g h t o f t h e a p r o a c h i n g d o f cosmic f r e e d o m, then in that feeling which you send forth, will they too reach up and become aware of that which is their goal. It is just as certain of accomplishment as that you exist in this world. From tonight, and in your presentation, please know there will be the host of the ascension abiding in the atmosphere where you portray the picture, and the action, and the words of those who have gone before you. There will stand the host of ascended beings who will charge the atmosphere of all who behold this which you will present, and that atmosphere will be charged with the ascended master's exhilaration at the moment of their ascension. You may absorb that, and the earth itself be filled with its light, until the ascension is the goal of happiness for all, consciously determined, deliberately chosen. With intense power, send forth the call for the release of mankind from the distress of the centuries. Your privilege is very great, also your obligation and responsibility, but, as you arise and are determined to have the happiness and the thrill of eternal mastery, will there come always the assistance to you to attain it. So, in that which you are privileged to present, will come to you the greater power of your own attainment. Just know, the love from our octave will bring you every good thing you could ever desire, as you go forward and are determined that this world shall become a sun of happiness, and mankind, the legions of the ascension, to go forth and produce in cosmic action that which fulfills the law of love. So, unto your victory do I commend you tonight, and know that every time you turn to me, my feeling and thrill of my freedom shall come into you, to abide until you too have become the fullness of its victory. So, in that which you are privileged to present, will come to you the greater power of your own attainment. Just know, the love from our octave will bring you every good thing you could ever desire, as you go forward and are determined that this world shall become a sun of happiness, and mankind, 
the legions of the ascension, to go forth and produce in cosmic action that which fulfills the law of love. So, unto your victory do I commend you tonight, and know that every time you turn to me, my feeling and thrill of my freedom shall come into you, to abide until you too have become the fullness of its victory. May this whole locality be so charged with that feeling, that all who ever pass this way will turn to the light and enter into their eternal mastery. Thank you, with all my love for eternity. January 10, 1957 Chicago, Illinois Beloved ones of the mighty St. Germain's family, it is again my privilege and my pleasure to take you deeper into the thought and the feeling that is as surely raising mankind, as that individuals exist in this world. I want you to feel tonight, the great privilege that is yours, and it is ours, in awakening mankind once again to the desire to fulfill the divine plan of life, and to close the door on the distress of the last two and a half million years. Because, in the returning of the world and all upon it, into the luminosity by which the purity is maintained and the accomplishment of the ascension is again brought forth the original divine way. It is a far greater task than you understand and it requires far greater release of the sacred fire than any individual has any concept of at this time. In your desire to attain the ascension the original divine way, there comes an awakening, just like a flame passing through the emotional bodies of all mankind. All life in this world, is aware of the wave of that light and the passing of that sacred fire through the energy of the emotional body and through 300 and the mental body. It is an awakening again into the realization of the great divine plan's happy fulfillment of the destiny of each life stream. It is not the work of a moment to take mankind out of individuals' human creation of the centuries. But nevertheless, as the flame in the heart begins to reach up and desire to fulfill the design of the divine plan of the higher mental body, once that flame begins to expand, it will surge and continue to surge with a certain cosmic pressure from our octave of life that will eventually bring it to the fulfillment of its cosmic victory. So, when you desire to attain the ascension the original divine way, you are doing a great deal more than just lifting yourselves to your eternal freedom, you are a raising power to all life, and every time you desire the divine way to do a thing, there comes back to you a release of the sacred fire by which your desire can be fulfilled. If you will remember beloved Saint Germain's reference to the blessed God for his desire to see the ascended masters, and that desire had become so strong that the cosmic law had to see it fulfilled in outer manifestation. So it is with you. When a few of mankind begin to desire to fulfill the great divine plan, the original divine way, that desire, since the feeling world of mankind is one, and the mental world is one, your desire for what is right ramifies and con continues to flow out into the mental and feeling world of all life, not only human beings' life, but the life of animals, the plant life, the life of this world. Every desire that you have for anything constructive goes on and on as a raising activity to life wherever that vibration flows. Therefore, to divinely desire the fulfillment of the great divine plan, brings always its blessing to all the life in the world. When you begin to desire the original divine way of doing anything, you cannot desire that without the greater life beginning to release to you the greater wave of the sacred fire by which you can accomplish the fulfillment of your desire. So, be very careful what you desire. When you understand what you could have by just the great, joyous, loving release of yourselves into the complete control of your mighty I am presence and higher mental body with no thought or desire for anything except just the awareness of its presence. Filling you and your world with what it desires for you, you would have so much, infinitely more of perfection than you could ever imagine in your wildest use of your imagination. Now I speak from experience, because in those long years of my experience in searching for the men that could help me to my ascension, you have no idea what the intensity of my feeling built and what power it accumulated, until the final moment of my victory, and that desire, the energy I concentrated in that desire, was the raising power that helped me to the fulfillment of my desire. So it is with you, so it is with all life. When you desire that which is of God and continue to desire it, the very intensity of your desire draws back into you and your world the power to fulfill it. So, never feel discouraged, never feel that any earnest effort is wasted, for it is not. Anything constructive will always raise all life, substance and energy into something that is better. While destructive forces, through their evil, seek always to desecrate and destroy that which is of God, yet, my dear ones, in their desire to do that, they shut off all ways and means by which they could have help, until they desire God. I want you to see what this means to life streams that come and go in embodiment, with no thought at all of the fulfillment of the great divine plan. 
they are pushed here and there, like a boat on the ocean, without pilot or rudder, battered here and battered there, until the human stubbornness goes down, and allows the desire of the higher mental body to come into the energy of the outer self. And release its power to raise the outer self into the greater perfection that is the fulfillment of the divine plan. Then, I want you to see, and I want to show you what it means to call forth the love of the sacred fire into yourselves, and then, pour that love of the sacred fire to everything in the outer world. That sacred fire love is the disconnecting power that makes every discord disconnect from you and your world and drop away of its own weight. You will never realize, until you're completely ascended, did you get that? I said, C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E-L-Y ascended. Do you realize you're partly ascended now? Thank you. The reason I said that was because your mighty Saint Germain said to you, O-N-C-E-U-B-E-C-O-M-E-A-W-A-R-E-O-F your, M-I-G-H-T-Y I am pre's N-C-E, A-N-D you begin T-O call I T-I-N T-O-A-C-T-I-O-N-A-N-D-R-E-C-O-G-N-I-Z-E your ascension, your ascension has begun. Once you become aware of what you can do to free yourselves, by calling the love of the sacred fire into yourselves and into outer world conditions, how you free yourselves, you will never realize how important it is, until you are completely in our octave forever. But, I am come to remind you, and to try to make you feel the power that you have all the time, to keep calling forth the great central sun's sacred fire love into everything of the outer world, that just lifts it by the very intensity of the flame. So, blessed ones, be not discouraged when you look at the outer world. It is changing, perhaps not as rapidly as all would like, but I assure you, the light in its cosmic action is expanding. There has not for centuries, in any age, ever been released into the outer world, the desire and the calls for the sacred fire from the central sun that you blessed, IAM, students have poured forth in this IAM activity through the years. Not in the entire history of the earth has that much desire gone forth in a call to the heart of the central sun, for the release of the sacred fire for the ascension of all. So, it is raising you far more rapidly than you understand, and it goes on in its raising activity to the earth. When it reaches a certain point, I assure you, the people will awaken, just as certainly as they exist. When the sacred fire appears, they will either understand it and love it, or they will bow and give obedience, until the evil in them is consumed. For there is no escape for evil. Evil must be annihilated. Therefore, when you desire these magnificent activities of the sacred fire to come into yourselves and do these things that produce greater perfection, and bring about that change harmoniously, you are establishing a permanent raising force into the structure of earth itself. So, blessed ones, when I said that I blessed everything at the moment of my ascension, everything that had ever touched my life stream, while it was harmonious or otherwise, I just blessed it with the sacred fire and let it go. Oh, you will never know how much pressure you struggle under until you are free from it. When it completely lets go, you will experience a joy, a relief, an ecstasy of that world of love which is God's heart, and was the original way you were always intended to enjoy. The original divine plan of embodiment never contained the struggle through which you have passed, never. There have been planets and systems of suns that have come forth and fulfilled the great glorifying plan of the universe, and not one shadow of distress or discord ever touched those manifestations. So is it going to be in this world, except, as we close the door on the hordes of human creation, we also will close the door on the memory of the discord, for God's universe never included a plan of discordant manifestation. So, in order to be free from the discord, you must at all times call T H E G R E A T C E N T R A L S U N sacred fire Elovina N D A R O U N Dior Silvestre raising P O W E R T O T A K E U O U T O F T H E distress T O D I S C O N N E C T U F R O M I T S substance. Then, as you gain your freedom, that sacred fire goes on and on into that substance and energy and continues to purify it until it is re. Turn to its original purity. So, no matter what you do in the use of the sacred fire of the great central sun's love, you bless yourselves, you bless all life, you bless the world, you raise all that you contact, and whatever you do, by that use of the sacred fire, is permanently done. When you see how much the world needs that love from the central sun, you will not miss an opportunity to call the great central sun's sacred fire love of cosmic control into the physical conditions of this world to control them until they are purified rebalanced and set into action to fulfill the great divine plan.
So, blessed ones, I hope, as I make you feel the freeing power of the sacred fire, I hope you will use it daily in and around yourselves, that you may feel the release from the pressure, and the strain, and the struggle of the conditions of the outer world, and while yet unascended. You may have a very great deal of this sense of lightness and freedom from connection with the destructive forces, until they are completely removed. As you go on in the full realization of how the great central sun's sacred fire love can transmute conditions and close out that which creates discord, when you begin to see it work, when you begin to feel the relief, then you will understand what I mean, and if it takes too long, I will come and visit more often to remind you of it. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated please? When you begin to realize the power in the great central sun's sacred fire love, once you begin to experiment with it to correct conditions that have opposed you, once you become aware of how it can transmute those conditions, you will not forget to use it. I tell you this night, if with your fierce determination you turn to your mighty I am presence, and say to it, M Y, beloved I am presence, A N D T H E A S C E N D E D host, F R E E M E F R O M E V E R Y T H I N G T H A T is N O T T H E G R E A T C E N T R A L Sons Love O F T H E Sacred Fire. T H A T is M A S T E R O F all. F R E E M E F R O M all else A N D make M E T H Y Sun Presence. I tell you, tons of struggle can drop away from you overnight. If you will experiment, you will miss the tons of pressure. You do not know yet what power you have to free yourselves, by simply pouring to life everywhere the great central sun's love of the sacred fire, because that is the love from the heart of the central sun that does all things well, and does not produce discord anywhere. If discord exists, it dissolves it, but it goes on its way with a freedom that brings joy to life forever. So, blessed ones, I hope you will experiment with this of just blessing life everywhere, with the great central sun's love of the sacred fire, and go on your way. Tonight, if you could replace all resentment, all criticism, condemnation, or blame, and all rebellion against conditions, with just the constant call for the great central sun's love of the sacred fire, just let it go forth into outer conditions. Be unconcerned as to when they change, you would find them changing very much more rapidly than otherwise would be. You can even call T H I S F O R T H A S A M A N T L E A B O U T U T O K E E P O A T H E Pressure O F O U T E R W O R L D Discord A N D T H E I M P E R F E C T I O N T H A T has been G E N E R A T E D by M A N K I N D. I tell you the only comfortable place to live, when all is said and done, when you've experienced everything that has ever taken place in this world, the only real comfortable place to live, permanently, is the sacred fire's great central sun's love. When you call forth the love of the great central sun's sacred fire as your home, your business, your world, your atmosphere, everything you do, and continue to do that, it will reveal itself. I will need to say no more. It will unfold within and around you, it will reveal what it can do, and the powerhouse of the universe will have come to abide with you. So, go forward, and experiment with it tonight. I'm not giving you any ad. Vice, I'm just offering you an opportunity. Thank you, precious ones. If you remain standing just a moment, I have just this to say, if you want freedom enough, you will do this from tonight, and if you do it, your freedom will come very, very quickly. So, I enfold you in my feeling of what the freedom is that comes with that love of the sacred fire. May it be a mantle about you, to forever release you from the pressure of all in this world that is not the great central sun's love of the sacred fire of your eternal freedom that lifts you unto your ascension as you have called. Accept it tonight, go forward and use it, and be free from the distress of the outer world, till that hour when you come to us for eternity, and no pressure can ever touch your life stream again. Thank you, with all my heart's love for your presence here tonight. Good night. Won't you be seated, please? May 23, 1963 CHICAGO, Illinois Beloved ones of the light, I trust one may bring to you this hour, more of the power of our love from the Ascended Master's octave of life. I wish you to feel how important it is for you to recognize the ascension as an action of life, not only within your own life stream. 
to raise you into the eternal perfection of the great divine plan's fulfillment, not only that, but to recognize the ascension as the great raising power from the great central sun, to raise everything where you pass by into something better, and greater, and more magnificent in its glorifying activity to the greater life that has placed it here. In the attainment of the ascension, it is not just the concern of your own life stream which should be considered by the outer self, it is the awareness of your affecting presence upon all life that you contact, because, as you call for your own ascension, your very desire to rise into the ascended master's octave is an activity of the great central sun magnet that, through radiation, goes forth into the feeling of all life around you. That feeling, as it touches other life streams, and even the powers of nature and Forces of the elements, is a raising, expanding power of perfection. It is the way that you can give back to life, as you take your own ascension, something of the great love of the universe for the blessings that the life in this world have given you as you took embodiment here. And use the substance and the blessings of this world to draw forth the powers of your own. And use the substance and the blessings of this world to draw forth the powers of your own life streams, to exert your mind. And used the substance and the blessings of this world. If you remain standing just a moment, I have just this to say. If you want freedom enough, you will do this from tonight, and if you do it, your freedom will come very, very quickly. So, I enfold you in my feeling of what the freedom is that comes with that love of the sacred fire. May it be a mantle about you, to forever release you from the pressure of all in this world that is not the great central sun's love of the sacred fire of your eternal freedom that lifts you unto your ascension as you have called. Accept it tonight. Go forward and use it, and be free from the distress of the outer world, till that hour when you come to us for eternity, and no pressure can ever touch your life stream again. Thank you, with all my heart's love for your presence here tonight. Good night. Won't you be seated, please? May 23, 1963 CHICAGO, Illinois Beloved ones of the light, I trust I may bring to you this hour, more of the power of our love from the Ascended Master's octave of life. I wish you to feel how important it is for you to recognize the ascension as an action of life, not only within your own life stream. To raise you into the eternal perfection of the great divine plan's fulfillment, not only that, but to recognize the ascension as the great raising power from the great central sun, to raise everything where you pass by into something better, and greater, and more magnificent in its glorifying activity to the greater life that has placed it here. In the attainment of the ascension, it is not just the concern of your own life stream which should be considered by the outer self, it is the awareness of your affecting presence upon all life that you contact, because, as you call for your own ascension, your very desire to rise into the Ascended Master's octave is an activity of the great central sun magnet that, through radiation, goes forth into the feeling of all life around you. That feeling, as it touches other life streams, and even the powers of nature and forces of the elements, is a raising, expanding power of perfection. It is the way that you can give back to life, as you take your own ascension, something of the great love of the universe for the blessings that the life in this world have given you as you took embodiment here. And use the substance and the blessings of this world to draw forth the powers of your own life streams, to exert your mastery, and rise into the eternal perfection of the divine plan fulfilled that makes you master everywhere you go through infinite space. Each one's individual ascension is a raising activity to the whole world. It's a raising activity to the powers of nature and forces of the elements. It's a raising activity to every particle of life that you contact. So every thought, feeling, spoken word, and act that you send forth qualified with the desire for the ascension, the sacred fire's love that gives you your ascension, and the use of the ascended master's consciousness to help you attain the ascension. Everything you send forth is a raising activity to some other part of life. That is why each one can be of such tremendous power in his or her effect upon the rest of life and that is true of everything that is constructive, everywhere in this world or any other. Whatever you call forth into manifestation that is constructive, it is always, if left undisturbed by discord, it is always a raising activity to all the rest of life that it contacts. Now this is the master power of the great central sun magnet. If people understood how much of that power the outer self could have to use in outer world activities, 
to raise every other part of life into something better than it is now experiencing, the individual who is willing to do that would forever keep receiving greater and greater blessings from the Ascended Master's octave. You cannot use your own life to pour forth the desire, the feeling, and the blessing to some other part of life, to raise it to something better, without the greater life above you pouring into you something that will raise you into something better. So, whatever you give to life that is constructive, the greater life will give to you in greater abundance, greater power, and greater protection. Now, this is the fulfillment of the divine plan. It is the ascended master's way to live life, and if you will notice, everything that is concerned with your ascension is a giving out of the perfection of your own life to the life around you. Therefore, the ascension can only be attained by unselfishness, by the action of giving out a force that raises the rest of life. Then the greater force and power from the ascended master's octave come into the individual, to raise the outer self into the greater perfection of the ascended master's octave. Now, it is only because mankind's selfishness of holding things to the outer self, and the outer feeling has been concerned just with the outer self, that it has closed the door to the awareness of the purpose of physical embodiment. It is only because of that selfishness that mankind has forgotten that the attainment of the ascension is the purpose of physical embodiment. I hope, with your assistance, to awaken the people to a realization of, not only the possibility of attaining the ascension, but the necessity of mankind understanding that it is the divine plan fulfilled, and it is the law that is one day going to compel it in the physical world. And you can be a part of its fulfillment. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated please, and just remain so. T-H-E-B-E-L-O-V-E-D-M-A-S-T-E-R Jesus C-A-M-E-T-O give T-H-E-P-R-O-O-F-O-F-T-H-E ascension, and yet, mankind does not accept that it is the duty, and the obligation, the destiny of every life streams use of life in this world. Therefore, when mankind sleeps in the senses, in the selfishness of human feeling, there must come again the awakening force from one or more of the ascended host, to move into outer physical conditions the awareness of the purpose of life, and then the explanation of how it is attained, and then mankind must give obedience or suffer until the obedience is given. It is with very great joy that we contemplate the student body throughout the world who have accepted and understand that the ascension is the purpose of your experience in this world. When we see this many people accepting the ascension as the purpose of physical embodiment, we not only offer every possible assistance through our love, but we try to expand into the consciousness of individuals that you meet, sometimes just through your radiation. The awakening power that will pour into other life streams the desire to attain the ascension also. Therefore, your influence is not only upon individuals. Your desire for the ascension, your understanding of how to attain it, goes forth into the mental and feeling world of all mankind, and must, someday, bring to the outer intellect the conscious understanding that it is the fulfillment of the divine plan, and the outer self is obligated to one day, gain its freedom that way. This is very far-reaching, and the beloved Saint Germain, bless him for eternity for all that he has done and every effort he has made to bring this to the consciousness of the people, that by their accept. Ants of it, their suffering may cease, because suffering never will cease, until individuals understand that the ascension must be attained somewhere, and every experience in this world should lead one to the attainment of that victory. Here is the beloved mighty victory, offering all the love from the beings on Venus to the people of this world, to awaken in them the desire for the ascension, the desire to become an ascended being the desire to master discord, and evil, and limitation in this world. When you realize the amount of love life has bestowed upon the people of this world, age, after age, after age, civilization, after civilization, to bless mankind with these greater blessings from the ascended master's octave. In order that the divine plan may be fulfilled by which the earth itself may become ascended as a sun, when you realize how much love life has released to the life in this world to attain that, only then will you understand just what the sacred love of the sacred fire means to the universe. Unascended beings will not know and cannot know, till they become ascended, what terrific effort the great cosmic law has released through individuals, civilization after civilization, to build blessings in this world, to raise mankind's desire to attain the ascension. Unascended beings haven't the slightest concept of the amount of energy they have used in the experience of one embodiment after another 
that have not only not attained the ascension, but have deliberately created conditions that prevent the ascension. Therefore, you blessed people, who are awakened to this, are blessed beyond any words to explain. You cannot realize yet how great is the gift that has been given to you, until you see it from the ascended master's octave, and you will look back and you will wonder, how could any part of life be held in the shadows that long, and endure suffering that long? When love is ready to release the assistance to the ascension eye if you do not realize how great the love of life is, recall often, through your intellect, the feeling of what it means to life, what the freedom of life is in the victory of the ascension. When that blessed being said in the early days of this instruction, give me a little bootblack off of the street, and if he will give me obedience, I will give him his ascension in three years. Now, after hundreds and thousands of embodiments in which you did not gain the ascension, in which you suffered tragedy, and distress, and limitation, and destruction, yet, in three years, the door to that can be closed for eternity, and all it takes is cooperation with love. All it takes is the cooperation with the love of that great being who has offered it. Because, every ascension is only accomplished by the love of some one or more ascended beings, because it takes the power of the ascended master's octave, the ascended master's love, to be the force that raises the outer self into the ascended master's perfection. Just think how great the sacred love of the sacred fire is. When, after hundreds and thousands of embodiments, in which only the great law knows what has been created, all of that can be dissolved, consumed, removed from the universe, so it never touches life again, and just the love from the presence and the assisting master. And the obedience of the feeling of the outer self to that love, takes the individual out of the centuries of miscreation in this world. You cannot comprehend how great that love is till you become it, and then you realize that it is the law of all systems of worlds, it is the law of all creation. It is the law of all peace, and mastery, and ever-expanding use of all that is in infinite space, and only happiness, no discord, can ever touch it. It is well to contemplate what the sacred love of the sacred fire is, can do for you, and also, it is well to realize what it has done for mankind age after age after age. So, when the shadows gather in outer world conditions, by the selfishness and destruction of mankind's unfortunate human creation, T-U-R-N back. T-O-U-R T-O-U-R B-E-L-O-V-E-D-I-A-M-P-R-E-S-E-N So, when the shadows gather in outer world conditions, by the selfishness and destruction of mankind's unfortunate human creation, T-U-R-N back. T-O-U-R, B-E-L-O-V-E-D-I-A-M-P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, A-N-D-T-O-T-H-E-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D-H-O-S-T, A-N-D-T-O-T-H-E sacred fires love, A-N-D-C-A-L-L-W-I-T-H all you are A-N-D have for all T-H-A-T-T-H-E-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D masters K-N-O-W-T-H-A-T-M-E-A-N-S-T-O-L-I-F-E-T-O-C-O-M-E in A-N-D-A-R-O-U-N-D-Y-O-U. R-E-N-D-E-R-I-T-S-S-E-R-V-I-C-E, A-W-A-K-E-N-T-H-E-R-E-S-T-O-F-L-I-F-E-O-U-T-O-F its distress. A N D P E R F O R M for U T H E S E R V I C E T H A T G I V E S Y O U E T E R N A L F R E E D O M. Blessed ones, until you are ascended, you never can know what gratitude is, till you are free from the limitations through which you have passed in this world. So, whenever you think of the outer world's chaos, more than ever, turn back to your beloved I A M presence and call F-O-R-T-H-W-H-A-T-E-V-E-R-C-O-S-M-I-C-S-A-C-R-E-D-F-I-R-E-A-W-A-K-E-N-I-N-G-I-S -E 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 necessary. T-O-Blaze-T-H-R-O-U-G-H-T-H-E-W-O-R-L-D-F-O-R-E-V-E-R-T-H-E-A-N-I-H-I-L-A-T-I-O-N-O-F-E-V-E-R-Y-T-H-
Whenever the outer world weighs heavily upon you, turn away from it and calling to your beloved IAM presence and to us, but sending your love to your presence first. Ask for your presence a n d t h e a s c e n d e d m a s t e r s sacred f i r e a w a k e n i n g c o n s c i o u s n e s s a n d sacred f i r e love t o c o m e n t h r o u g h a n d a r o u n d u a n d p r e v e n t t h e x i s t e n c e o f a n y t h i n g else in your being a n d w o r l d n o w a n d f o r e v e r. As you gain even a small momentum of this, your experience will be so astounding, the miracles will bless you so greatly, your victory will be so invincible, and your boundless supply so ever expanding, that you will realize that to live any other way of life is but the foolishness of the human. So, if you want to dissolve and consume the human creation, f i l l yourselves w i t your b e l o v e d i a m presence a n d t h e a s c e n d e d m a s t e r s s a c r e d f i r e a w a k e n i n g c o n s c i o u s n e s s o f a l l t h a t t h e ascension means t o life t o u t o t h e life around you t o t h e universe everywhere and try to become one with the love that is so great that it only produces perfection, everywhere, forever expanding, and never contains discord again, never. The sacred love of the sacred fire never produced discord and never will. So, until mankind is ready to come within the heart of love and live there, peace does not come, and will not come, and has not come in the past. There is only one place from whence peace comes, and that's the sacred love of the sacred fire from the beloved IAM presence and the ascended host. From the ascended master's octave alone comes the only peace in all infinity and all eternity. So, when you want peace, T U R N back T O T H E, beloved IAM presence, and T H E A S C N D E D H O S T, a n d ask f o r t h e sacred fires love of t h e awakening consciousness t h a t raises all i n t o t h e ascension and you have no idea what miracles can be produced you have no idea what power you can have you have no idea what protection it will be if the great cosmic law through the love of the beloved master saint germain or any ascended being is willing to raise a little boot black off the street into the ascension in three years surely there is some love in the universe that will raise you too, and I am that love. Thank you so much. Try to remember that whenever you call to us for anything, whatever our love gives to you is a raising consciousness to raise you out of distress, out of limitation, out of everything that is not our love, and our mastery over all creation. Go forward, and remember, there are angels of the ascension, whose love is indescribable in words, but whose raising power of that love is forever the control of all wherever you abide. So, I commend you to your close association with them. I commend you to your call to them, that they may raise others you contact, as well as yourselves, so all may go forward to the victory of the ascension, and that ascension is what? Just letting go of the distress and the limitations you have had in this world. So, it shouldn't be so hard, it shouldn't be difficult, it shouldn't be feared, and certainly, it needs to be understood. When you call THE sacred fires love O F T H E A W A K E N I N G C O N S C I O U S N E S S F R O M T H E A S C E N D E D masters, octave I N T O L T H A T lives in T H I S W O R L D, you are giving the eternal love of immortal perfection of mastery over discord, and therefore, the I am. Mortal purity of freedom, and peace, and victory for eternity. I commend you to it by the love which it is my privilege to use, to bestow, and which I am pouring into this world with your assistance, to help the rest of life become that which we are. So, unto that divine purpose, to that great joy, to that mighty victory do I pour my love, that I may help to raise you to that freedom which, I am. Then again, as you turn to pour your love to the rest of life, will you find illumination taking the place of the shadows of earth, and the happiness, and the music, the I am, miracle music of the spheres, will forever replace the cry of human distress. I invite you to come into my heart's world in the song of the sacred fire's love, which is immortal peace. May you become its sun presence to the earth, and walk with us every day, and pour forth the sacred fire love that produces it for eternity. 
Thank you with all my heart. January 4, 1967 Chicago, Illinois Beloved ones of the mighty Saint Germain's family, I wish to give you some of the feeling that we have from the Ascended Master's octave, that will stay with you for eternity and will, at all times, bring in, through, and around you more and more of its eternal perfection. I wish to show you what an outpouring of love from your, beloved IAM presence, and the Ascended Host can do everywhere in the physical world, if people would only use it, and try to understand just how powerful it is. This which I am going to call to your attention, tonight, is concerning healing. If you could see, for one moment, just a second, what is the effect in the cellular structure of your body, when just one wave of love comes from an ascended being in, through, and around you, to fill you with whatever is required to either heal the outer self, or to purify it, or harmonize it, or protect it, or to help it expand the light from the, mighty IAM presence, in its producing of the victory in the physical octave of anything and everything that is constructive, with which you are concerned in daily activity. 385. Could you understand and see, just once, what the effect is in every cell of your body, when just one wave of love comes from an ascended being, you would see the point of light in every cell expand, you would see the beings of the elements within you expand the light, and harmonize very quickly. More than that, you would see pass off and be consumed, the rates of vibration that have been the discord within the emotional body, or the etheric body, or the physical structure itself, or the mental body, the outer intellectual consciousness. When you watch this from an inner standpoint and see how easily, how quickly, and how happily the wave of love from an ascended master's heart passes through the physical flesh structure of the outer self, and can dissolve and consume the shadows that cause distress. You would use this all the time to solve every problem you have. You would use it all the time in every physical thing in the physical world, because it is the master presence, the master control of all the energy in the physical world, and all energy that is not manifesting harmony, or love, or perfection to the outer self, is some shadow. It is some vibration that is not letting the light release, so that the feeling of love from the higher mental body can be the only feeling in the emotional body of the outer self. But when you call an ASCENDED MAST ERSHEARTFLAME, S LOVE INTO YOUR SELVES ANDTHROUGH YOURSELVES, ORUJUST CALL THEASCENDED MAST ERSHEARTFLAMEOF LOVE TO SOLVE THISPROBLEMORTHATPROBLEM, ORANYTHING, T O C O N T R O L C O N D I T I O N S in W H I C H U M U S T move. If you could watch this at the inner level, just once, you would be the most grateful people on earth. Tonight, I trust I may make clear to you what happiness that wave of love, which is always luminosity, brings to the powers of nature and forces of the elements. As you watch it pass through the beings who create the blessings that the powers of nature and forces of the elements give you all the time, and by which you are able to survive, or move, and have an embodiment in the physical world to accomplish the victory of your ascension. Now, when we come to the attainment of the ascension, every bit of purification that has to take place in the physical body at the moment of the ascension, has to take place by an ascended master's purifying love, a flame from the heart of the ascended master who is assisting. The beloved Divine Director, beloved Jesus, beloved Godfrey, the mighty Saint Germain, and blessed Victory, and every Ascended Master who gives assistance at the moment of the Ascension, stands, and expands, and pours the flame of love from that. Ascended Master's heart, right through the atomic structure, until the etheric body and emotional bodies are purified and drawn up and into the higher mental body. At the same time, the higher mental body is pouring its own love and light into the outer substance that is being raised into the ascension. So, when you think of solving your problems by using the ascended master's love, will you always remember that it brings a light into the atmosphere in which you move? It brings a light into the condition, and then, whatever the problem is to be solved, you will find the purifying love from the ascended master's body is what passes the vibration through the condition, and dissolves and consumes every vibration that causes discord. Therefore, when you call forth the ascended master's heart flames love to solve any problem in the physical world, try to remember, the beings of the elements rejoice more than you can realize, when destructive frequencies of vibration are dissolved and consumed. 
and the love from the Ascended Master enfolds the light in the being that is creating a blessing to the powers of nature for which mankind is constantly calling, and which mankind must have and use in order to embody in this world, and create a body through which the ascension can be attained. If the people of the world would only learn to use the love we offer, the love that is light, the love that is peace, and the Ascended Master's love, that is power unlimited and indestructible. Human experience in this world would be dissolved and consumed, and every bit of discord be replaced by the perfection that is the Ascended Master's way of life for eternity. So it doesn't matter what is the cause of discord in the outer world, nothing is really important, except how much sacred fire love you pour into this world, you pour in and around yourselves, how much you draw forth to be the world in which you live, until your ascension is complete. It doesn't make any difference how much is needed in the physical world, there's infinitely more in the Ascended Master's octave than all the energy and substance in this world put together. I trust I shall make this plain to you tonight, in a way that makes you realize what a very tangible, powerful, ever-present blessing that life has always offered, and is always in existence, and can always be used in physical conditions. When you call the Ascended Master's sacred fire love into any condition in the physical world that needs purifying, or removing, and, in order to set life streams free, must be consumed, if freedom is to come, and freedom cannot come from anywhere, except the Ascended Master's sacred fire love. The love in the, mighty IAM presence, and the, electronic body and higher mental body is Ascended Master love, because it has never been anything else. Never has anything else ever existed in the electronic body or the higher mental body, but the invincible, eternal sacred fire love from the great central sun, which is one with the heart flames of love in the hearts of the ascended masters. If you can understand what a miracle power this is, to form the habit of using it in everyday affairs to do everything for you that you want to have done, to give greater harmony, or greater happiness, or to solve your problems, if you would only try this out. And use it on everything. There is no thing where you can't use it, you would avoid everything that is of distress. The Ascended Master's heart flame of sacred fire love is eternal. It's indestructible victory, an indestructible purity, an indestructible love, for which you have been calling. Therefore, to fill yourselves with it, feel yourselves clothed in it, call it forth into all conditions of the physical world, whether they affect you or not, is not important. There is only one thing important. This is bringing the perfection, which the Ascended Master's sacred fire love is, into the physical conditions of this world, that mankind's suffering may cease. There is no way to take out of existence mankind's frightful human creation, except the sacred fire love of the Ascended Master's, which is indestructible purity. So when you call forth these great cosmic powers of the sacred fire into physical conditions to purify them, they are, at all times, the heart flame of life, the heart flame of love of some life streams, the cosmic beings and the sacred fire, which the angelic host direct into the physical atmosphere of earth, which the cosmic beings direct, which all ascended masters direct, and which the cosmic law of the great central sun is constantly pouring forth, that heart flame of love from the heart of the great central sun. And it can never produce discord, never did, and never will. You have an infallible concentration of cosmic power to use in the physical world, with which there is no contest. You can have it without limit, there isn't a condition in existence that it cannot perfect. There isn't a thing that is needed in the physical world to purify it, to hold balance, and to bring into outer manifestation the substance and the things necessary to fulfill the great divine plan, there isn't anything in existence that that ascended master sacred fire love cannot produce. When Previous to the attainment of the ascension, the little beings within the cells of your own bodies begin to feel that purifying love illumine the flesh, and remove the vibrations that are the discord and limitations of the flesh body, could you see the happiness that that love produces in every cell of your body? I hope, someday, this can be held before mankind and picturized, so mankind can see some of these inner activities of the magnificent, magical powers of the, beloved IAM presence, and the ascended host. These magnificent master powers of the, beloved IAM presence, and the ascended master's octave, and these great cosmic powers that come from great systems of worlds, to pour what you call light to a system of worlds. Try to realize, the very light that is coming to this earth, 
that is the life that is being given to the earth, is the life that love gives. That light and life, which comes from your physical sun, whether mankind accepts it or not, good or otherwise, the gift is the gift of life's love, and life is constantly giving into manifestation the love by which mankind can have perfection and can have permanent peace and harmony. Can have mastery over the manifestations which are brought into outer existence for mankind's use. When, after long years of searching, as was my experience, that love developed, which the master who came to me in India and told me what to do to gain the ascension, I knew that only love could find. The one who could help me, and only love could raise me into the victory of the ascension. Only love sustained me, all through those years, when I sought everywhere for the man with the crystal cup, who could help me to the ascension, and love finally rewarded me for my search. Now, that love, which raised me into my eternal freedom, I give without limit to you. May it do for you what it did for me. May it enable you to use it to help your loved ones, to help all life everywhere you go to be set free from the distress that that which is not love has imposed upon life, to create limitation and destruction. There is only one thing that can stop war on this earth, and that is the sacred fire from the ascended master's octave. That sacred fire is love and love's purity from cosmic realms of this system of worlds, who pour constantly to the earth the blessings of life to manifest perfection by which mankind can draw forth the master powers of life, and producing perfection in manifestation to bring happiness to the rest of life, gain the ascension in the drawing forth of the master powers from the mighty IAM presence and the ascended host. If you will realize the master powers of life or the master powers of that sacred fire love, there is nothing else important. What is there in the outer world that can compare with that sacred fire love? Which is not only eternal, but is ever manifesting greater and greater perfection, to bring greater happiness to life, to consume everything that is not happiness, and to let mankind go forward to the great magnificent use of all the master powers that life contains. That the great cosmic beings contain, and who are always giving more and more of that sacred fire love into outer physical conditions, until this world becomes the ascended master's octave. Then, never again can any vibration of discord ever be created by life in the ascended master's octave. If you are to be through with distress, limitations, suffering, and the unhappiness that has been created in this world, you might just as well make up your mind, there is no way but one way. There is no power but one power to use. There is nothing existing anywhere in the universe that is comparable to the sacred fire love from both your mighty IAM presence and the ascended host, and it is the eternal freedom from everything that is of limitation or distress. Won't you let go of your limitations tonight? Thank you, precious ones. Won't you be seated please, and just remain so. Won't you help us, when you think of the atmosphere in which you move, and sometimes, it's unpleasant. Won't you help us to call F-O-R-T-H-T-H-E Sacred Fires P-U-R-I-F-Y-I-N-G Love O-F S-U-C-H-I-N-D-E-S-T-R-U-C-T-I-B-L-E Victory I-N-T-O-T-H-E-A-T-M-O-S-P-H-E-R-E W-H-E-R-E-V-E Ryu Abide T-H-A-T-T-H-E-U-N-P-L-E-A-S-A-N-T-T-H-I-N-G-S-T-H-A-T-M-A-N-I-F-E-S-T in T-H-A-T-A-T-M-O-S-P-H-E-R-E T-H-E-I-M-P-U-R-I-T-Y A-N-D-T-H-E-U-N-P-L-E-A-S-A-N-T-T-H-I-N-G-S C-A-N-N-O-T-L-O-N-G-E-R survive, because our sacred fire love can consume them completely, and change them into the fragrance, and the healing, and the harmony, the light, the illumination, and the perfection which our love is. We only ask people to use that which makes them happy and it is the master presence of life throughout infinite space for all eternity, and is forever as free as the air you breathe. Beloved ones, if I were to talk to you a million, billion years, I could not exhaust the blessings contained within that love, for it fills and surrounds, controls all in existence that manifests anywhere in any system of worlds. Do you not think it can manifest in you and your world, and produce the same luminosity, and beauty, and perfection, and music of the spheres in you and your world, just as well as it can in the ascended master's octave or in interstellar space it is without limit it is almighty it is eternal and there is never anything but joy as the result of its use it never creates any discord to any part of life if i may remind you of this often 
I may remind you of the love and the gratitude that were mine, when the blessed Godfrey fulfilled my desire that I had held so long. Fifty years is a long time to search for it, but I held to love, and love held to me, and love set me free. It will do the same thing for you. Whenever you are unhappy, or limited, or in distress in any way, just stop a moment and know that above you is the love from your beloved IAM presence, and from the Ascended Master's octave, that can love away everything that is of distress. And put an end to your experiment with that which God never designed. God never created. The great cosmic law of life never created discord. The sacred fire love cannot create discord. So it is your place of eternal security. If my heart's flame of love can remind you often enough to use it, day after day, in the little details with which you are concerned, to dissolve and consume that which is not the happiness of our love, that which is not the victory of our purity, that which is not the fulfillment of the divine plan, if I can remind you, that my love is waiting for you to use it, I trust we shall accomplish what the world calls miracles. As you gain a momentum in the use of it, the master powers of life become perfectly natural in your outer use, and as you use them to bless the rest of life, the infinite life above you will pour more sacred fire love, and more powers of perfection into your outer use, till the world becomes the heart flame of our love, and your love. Because you have passed this way and have accepted the gifts of the powers of nature by which you could embody here, and in which you can abide, and tell your own heart flame from the mighty IAM presence, has expanded enough to raise the flesh structure into the ascension. What else is there in this world that is important beside that? Is there anything important except the amount of sacred fire love you draw into this world from the Ascended Master's octave, that you may purify, and balance, and set free some part of life, or some part of substance that has been bound in discord that is not God's divine plan, never was. Never will be, never was God created. Freedom is with you always, because the mighty Saint Germain's love to life was the call to bring the knowledge of the violet consuming flame into the physical conditions of this world to those of mankind who would listen to him, and accept, and use it. Until its love has proved the truth that he told, and the great cosmic creative word, I am, when you understand that as you issue those words, I am. The ascended master's sacred fire love that sets all free, controls all manifestation, takes all through to the ascension, and brings joy to life for eternity, and, I am, its victory. Acknowledge it, beloved ones. Try it, use it, fill yourselves with it, ask to be clothed with it. Ask your world to be its world of perfection, and then send it forth to the rest of life, irrespective of what mankind has or has not done in outer world activities, and let it reveal to you what a change it brings, the master powers which are within it. And the master control which it is everywhere over manifestation, everywhere you go in infinite space, the rest of eternity. You can never fail. You can never be limited again. You can never know anything but the magnificent happiness, and all the ever-expanding, protecting perfection of the sacred fire's mighty master presence everywhere that life abides. Go forward and try it out. And, when you think of things that are in distress, whether they be the powers of nature, or, sometimes, the physical things that are in discord of the outer world. Or whether you see human beings in distress, just call F O R T H T H E W O R L D E N F O L D I N G Oceans O F W H A T Ever Sacred Fires P U R I F Y I N Glove W I L L N O T L E T M A N K I N D S H U M A N Crete I O N E X I S T L O N G E R in N E P A R T O F Life B U T J U S T F O R G I V E I T B Y T H E Sacred Fires Love for which the world for centuries has needed, but does not use to undo mankind's unfortunate creation. Do you realize that it was the love of the Master in India, that told me what to do to gain my ascension, and his love stayed with me, and was the strength and the protection of the love the first needed to release, to search long enough, until I found it, and when I did find it, it was still love. When the love of the blessed Godfrey made the call to God, as he understood it, to do that which fulfilled the divine plan, love acted. His call was love, my strength of the light to search for the cup was love. The sustaining power I had was love. Therefore, I got the victory that only love can bring. When you want victory, remember, 
It is ascended master sacred fire love within which is all of everything life could ever desire, or need, or use, or manifest, to fulfill the great divine plan, and take every particle of life into the ascended master's octave for eternity. Since the world, this hour, is in distress indescribable, those of you who know this law, we hope, will begin to call FORTH its OVERWHELMING COSMIC ACTIONTOPREVENTNOWNELONGERMANKIND SCREATIONOFTHAT. WHICH has caused SUCH distress TO life, ANDWHICH has NORIGHTTO exist, because IT is NOT love. Therefore, when you call FORTHTHEASCENDED masters, MIRACLEMANTLEOF loves mastery, it is very real, tangible substance and flame from one or more of the ascended host, or a conscious projection from the temples of the sacred fire of a living flame, and living substance. That can enfold anybody or anything in the ascended master's life, that consumes everything unlike itself. I hope, tonight, you will accept its mastery. We will abide with you, whenever you want us, and if problems seem to need attention, we are quite willing to flood those problems with our heart's flame of love, the sacred fire love from the ascended master's octave, that is indestructible victory of indestructible purity. An indestructible control of all wherever you abide. May we help you without limit, and we offer you everything to attain your freedom, to exert your mastery, to hold your protection, and to help you render your service to your loved ones that love will always give, and your loved ones will return their love to you. You can render that service that will be a blessing to them and to you for eternity. We offer you the master presence of the ascended master's sacred fire love, to redeem the earth, and raise all into the same great perfection to which the ascended master Jesus attained, and into the great, eternal freedom that the mighty master Saint Germain has said he would bring about. And he would love, and love, and love the world, till all are free. We hope you will love the world, as he has loved it. We hope you will love the world, as beloved Jesus has loved it. And I hope I may be a part of the love that helps you to free the rest of life, till all have become the ascended master's manifestation and the ascended master's octave of perfection for eternity, and love, the only eternal manifestation, forever fills everything with its happiness. An ever-expanding, all-protecting perfection of eternity. We offer you our all. Our all is the love of our life, and may its sacred fire now come and stay around you, until you are raised into our octave forever. Thank you with all my heart. April 25, 1968 Chicago, Illinois Beloved ones of the light, I trust I may bring to your consciousness tonight, an awareness of the mighty divine plan of life's perfection in this world fulfilled, and the full comprehending consciousness of all that it means to all life, everywhere you go, the rest of eternity. Life's almighty divine plan fulfilled as ever-expanding perfection. Now, intellectually, you have heard this, and, intellectually, you agree with it. In your feeling you desire it, or, at least most people do, when they really understand it. But when you realize, that in allowing the perfection of your own, beloved I am presence, to come forth through the outer self, and fill all the conditions that you contact, and go on expanding perfection that your, beloved I am presence, is constantly giving. And that the ascended masters are constantly giving, through this flame of the seven mighty Elohim, then you must realize that your effect upon the rest of life, and the rest of the universe around you, must forever be the expanding of the love, and the peace. And the blessings that have given you, from within the outer self, the good that, 402. Since the life of has kept you happy, the good that has enabled you to manifest perfection in outer world conditions, and the good that has sustained harmony and blessing and happiness for you. Since the life of the whole planet, and the system, all the life in this system of worlds, is continually held within the love of the great central sun, and it is continually giving more of itself, and its perfection, and its love, and its peace, and its purity into outer manifestation always expanding that which is harmonious and perfect, then, the individual must, someday, come to realize that the outer self must, of necessity, because of the cosmic law that governs all systems of worlds, the outer self must learn to let flow through that greater perfection. And that the outer self is obligated to pour that purifying love, and peace and blessing to life, 
It is obligated to pour that back to every bit of life in the universe, because the infinite universe surrounds the finite body of the physical world of the individuals who embody here. Since all that is the perfection of infinity is pouring its blessings to the earth, then, every particle of life in this world must, one day, sometime, somewhere, pour back to that infinite scheme of creation, it must pour back its love. Mankind embodied in this world has not received from the other systems of worlds anything but light. And light is love, and the love is the heart flame from the great central sun. Therefore, since that perfection of life has constantly blessed this world, and all upon it, then the life in the human beings in this world is expected to pour back love, and blessing, and perfection to the greater life of the universe, and, until that is allowed to expand through the outer self. Limitation and discord go on. But when the outer intellectual consciousness of the mind, and the desire in the feeling, understand and realize that the greater life is giving to the individual, all the time, when the full illumination and realization of all that means to the outer self, comes from within. As the all-illumining ascended master consciousness, then there comes the expansion of the unfed flame in the heart. When that comes, happiness that is yours for eternity, begins to fill everything in your beings and worlds, and, then you know, because of that happiness, you know that you are that love from the great central sun. You know that all in the universe loves you, and you, in return, must love the rest of infinite space. Mankind cannot live alone, individuals cannot live alone, no one part of life can be completely cut away from all the rest of the life in the universe, because there is no place where life is not. Therefore, the happiness that people seek, the perfection the feeling in the emotional body desires, and craves, and wants to bring into outer manifestation, and place in the physical world, that perfection must come from the mighty IAM presence, and the ascended host, but it must come within the individual. By the love to the presence, which keeps the way clear for the perfect ideas, and that sacred fire to come into the outer self, which is the power that the outer self uses to produce manifestation out here, that is of perfection, fulfills the divine plan. And it gives its blessings to the rest of life wherever you abide. The individual who does not live to let that greater love and sacred fire's perfection come into the outer self, and then, loves to give it back to the infinite life, and gives it back to all life in the universe, the individual who will not live for that, simply closes the door to the light and the love, and abides in the distress of human discord, and impurity, and imperfection, because it will not let the light of love come through. When it comes to the attainment of the ascension, I assure you, blessed, blessed, blessed hearts of the light, when you come to that moment, you can't feel anything except the love to life that disconnects you from the discord of this world. Now, before the ascension, you can learn to pour that love to life, realizing it is the greater activities of the sacred fire from your beloved IAM presence, and all the ascended host. As you understand that, you can, and you will take time to, for even just a moment ask your, B-E-L-O-V-E-D-I-A-M praise N-C-E, A-N-D-L-T-H-E-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D host, T-O-F-L-O-O-D-E-V-E-R-Y-W-H-E-R-E-G-R-E-A-T oceans of its O-W-N sacred F-I-R-E love. Just send it to all life. To fulfill the great divine plan of this world, and the system to which you belong. You could not give the love of your own, blessed mighty IAM presence, and you could not give the feeling, within yourself, of offering love to the rest of life, without having all the love in infinite space come back and love you. You cannot lose, there is no such thing as not having the greater life flood you with its own love, by which infinite space is filled with perfect manifestation, forever expanding. Beloved ones, when people will not live for the expansion of the sacred fire's love of ever-expanding perfection and protection to all that is in manifestation, when mankind will not let that love go forth, there is no such thing as happiness and peace. It doesn't come from anywhere, except the light of the supreme love of creation. It is that heart flame from your, beloved IAM presence, from the ascended masters and cosmic beings, the heart flame of love that is the focus of terrific power in. The temples of the sacred fire, which are the homes of the ascended host and the cosmic beings, that love in the physical sun, and the great central sun, that gives its life into the use of the people of this world. Certainly the human intellect should understand, it owes something back to infinite life, 
because of the blessings that the life in this world has made possible for the outer self to use. When it comes to the hour of the ascension, I assure you, as you leave this world, you will bless everything with the love that is drawing you into its heart of perfection forever. Then, the places that have seemed dark, and filled with discord and destruction, will be filled with the sacred fire's purity, and love, and illumination. That is why, at every ascension, there is a raising takes place, not only of the immediate locality where the ascension is accomplished, but in the city, and the nation, and then throughout the world. Every ascension raises T-H-E-A-R-T-H, T-O-S-O-M-E-D-E-G-R-E-E, I-N-T-O-G-R-E-A-T-E-R-L-I-G-H-T. If people, the masses of the people, I am speaking of now, would intellectually understand, and realize, and accept the accomplishment of the ascension as the purpose of physical embodiment in this world, there would come such illumination to the intellect of man. That mistakes would not longer be created in outer world experience, and that which the world knows as problems would begin to dissolve and drop away. Until that illumination comes, until that sacred fire love comes into this world, through unascended beings, and that is poured back to the great central sun, the purification of the world does not release enough purity. And enough raising power to keep the illumination going on that prevents more and more creation of discord by mankind, when individuals are bound in the darkness and the destruction of their own hard feeling to life. If I may be of assistance to you, I trust I can convey to you my feeling of love and gratitude to the beloved Godfrey for his assistance to me, because, when you realize what someone's love for the outer world can, at the moment that you attain your freedom, when that love comes, it is light that illumines your pathway, and it surrounds you with the peace that only those know who have attained it. You cannot be grateful enough for that the rest of eternity, because of what it means when you enter into your freedom for eternity. That is why the beloved Saint Germain feels to the Master Jesus his love and devotion, and obedience, even to this hour, because beloved Jesus was the one whose love enfolded him when he attained his ascension. He never fails to pour back the love, and the gratitude, and the devotion to that part of the universe, that life, whose love was the light that opened the door to eternal freedom. So it is with you. So it is with the blessed Godfrey. So it is with every ascended master and cosmic being. You cannot understand just how intense that love is till you begin to contemplate it, but if you ask U-S-T-O-T-E-A-C-H-U-T-H-E-T-R-U-T-H of its law, A-N-D-T-H-E-F-E-E-L-I-N-G-W-H-I-C-H-I-T is T-O life, there will come within you, such light, such illumination, that you won't feel anything else. The very intensity of the light of our love, as it comes within you, to give you the explanation of the law, our radiation coming in and around you, while your attention is on that, you do not feel anything but the love of our life, and the peace of the light. Because in that light is peace for eternity. If mankind would only call this, and fill, individuals would fill themselves with it, or ask USTOFIL LIUL ITHOURHEARTS, flames, CLOTHEU in RHEARTS, flames, AND BLAZE THEILLUMININGPRESENCEOFTHE SACRED FIREINTOEVERYTHING. NOMATTERWHATIT is. If you'll just only let it expand, all that we want it to do for the rest of mankind, there couldn't a limitation remain within you. I stand ready to make that feeling alive within you, whenever you want it, or call TOME, TOMAKEIT live WITHINU, ANDTEACHU all THATIT is, AND CANDIO for life, AND all THATIT contains OFTHEPOWERSOF life. TO bless everybody ANDEVERYTHINGUCONTACT, UNTILEVERYTHING has BECOMETHEASCENDE DEMASTERS of ERFECTIO NO FETERNITY. And, in the light of our love, precious ones, not only discord cannot come, but there cannot come imperfection of any kind into the physical bodies of those who will fill themselves with enough of our sacred fire love of our life. Any time that you seem in distress, any time that problems weigh heavily upon you, any time that there seems to be a mistake, or looking back upon something that was discordant, if you will just master that attention, 
and forbid it to any longer connect with the mistakes of the past. Anyone's. Yours or anyone else's, and if you will only command it to come into the heart flame of our illumining love, and ask us to teach you about ourselves, and what powers of life we can draw in and around you, to enable you to create much more harmonious activities in the outer. Enable you to create the things that fulfill the divine plan, and, wherever you go, your world becomes the divine plan fulfilled, because you live within that which you create. If you are interested in creating, in outer world conditions, the Ascended Master's divine plan fulfilled, our way, that it may bless all life, wherever you call it forth, it can only produce that which is constructive. As it is sustained, it will let the light of our love expand, and that is the raising power of all on this earth, to raise it into the Ascended Master's octave, because as you let our love come into this world, and you call our sacred fires ilmining love into every bit of substance. AND energy, AND consciousness in THISWORLD, it purifies, and illumines, and compels everything to come into perfection, harmoniously, permanently. Then you will know what power really is. When you have attained this, or you have a good strong momentum of it in the atmosphere about you, you will find the powers of nature not only obey you, but they will come to you, they will flood to you their blessings, because your love is a magnet that draws the perfection of their life to you. As you give it to the world around you, I know of nothing, there is nothing in the universe, that pours back such expanding perfection and blessings for eternity, as does the use of the Ascended Master's sacred fire love in the physical octave, while you yet remain unascended, it is this I bring to you tonight, as power unlimited, to fulfill some of the calls you have made tonight. I hope you will feel the peace, and the invincible power, authority and control of everything about you, as you let our feeling come in and around you, and you acknowledge the victory of Ascended Master control, instead of the appearance world of what seems, at the present time. To be controlling outer world conditions, for I tell you, that temporary control by destructive forces of conditions in this physical world, that must be consumed by the sacred fire, and the sacred fire of our life is power unlimited, invincible, eternal purity, and it is victory assured. As you understand that it is invincible protection, I plead with you, use it, use it, use it in anything and everything you do from the smallest to the greatest, because it is the sacred fire from the great central sun. It's the sacred fire everywhere in manifestation, that produces perfection in outer physical conditions, and when physical conditions need purifying and correcting, please, first of all, call F-O-R-T-H-T-H-E-V-I-O-L-E-T-C-O-N-S-U-M-I-N-G-F-L-A-M-E, S-P-U-R-I-F-Y-I-N-G love. A-N-D-P-R-O-T-E-C-T-I-N-G love. THAT is all F R E E D O M F R O M H U M A N distress. When you call F O R T H T H E A S C E N D E D M A S T E R S, sacred F I R E victory of T H E C O N T R O L O F E V E R Y T H I N G in T H E Fizzy. Cal W O R L D, we can clothe you, in an instant, with powers that, as yet, you have not drawn forth, and cannot draw forth from your mighty IAM presence, and higher mental body at the present time, until your momentum reaches a certain point. But, no matter what the crisis might be, if it were suddenly necessary to hold invincible protection around you, if you have this momentum around you, and your attention calls to us for our sacred fire protecting love, it can flash the next instant. Before anything human can act in this physical world. Sometimes, when it's difficult to pour kindness to people, or conditions in the physical world, just stop a moment, and call T.O. your, beloved I-A-M-P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, A-N-D-T-O-U-S, T-O-R-E-L-E-A-S-E-W-H-A-T-E-V-E-R sacred F-I-R-E-P-O-W-E-R of R-P-U-R-I-F-Y-I-N-G love is necessary. T-O-D-O in A-C-O-N-D-I-T-I-O-N-W-H-A-T-U-C-A-N-N-O-T-D-O-Y-E-T-T-H-R-O-U-G-H your O-W-N feeling. Then, there comes the sacred fire from the higher mental body, and from the ascended master's temples of the light, and that sacred fire can go into any physical condition and control it when you, physically, cannot. Now, this is the power we offer. This is the sacred fire mastery over all mankind's human creation. It is sacred fire victory, 
because it is unlimited when it comes from the Ascended Master's octave, because there are no limitations there. We offer you unlimited power of our sacred fire love, to do anything and everything in the physical world that needs to be done, in order to fulfill the Ascended Master's divine plan their way, keep it invincibly protected forever, invincibly free from anything human, and forever expanding its blessings to life. I know of no greater interest on the investment of anything that you can do, any more than the moments that you place your love and attention upon your mighty IAM presence, and the Ascended Host, and C-A-L-L-F-O-R-T-H-O-U-R-C-O-S-M-I-C Sacred F-I-R-E Love I-N-T-O-T-H-I-S-W-O-R-L-D T-O-C-O-N-S-U-M-E-E-V-E-R-Y-T-H-I-N-G-T-H-A-T is N-O-T-T-H-A-T Love, because that love contains only perfection. It is master over all manifestation. It can do anything and everything, and there is no such thing as failure in its use. If you were in physical danger, the danger might have already started to destroy you, and yet, just the moment your attention comes to our sacred fire love, the flash could enfold you, and that which was destructive could not touch you. I think it is worth every effort you will ever make to set this habit, for the habit must be set by conscious command. If you will make call TOSETTHIS habit, we will be very grateful to answer it, and just as quickly as possible. Thank you so much, won't you be seated please, and just remain so. Now, we have all been reminding you of this, in one way or another. Every one of the ascended host has constantly come and reminded you of this action, and are trying to help you establish the habit, because, if you will make effort to set the habit, you will find this will control your attention, and therefore, allow our perfection to come in and around you. Instead of the outer world's discord controlling your attention, and allowing that to come, the outer world's discord, to come and make your problems, and your distress, and sustain lack and limitation. There isn't a thing in the universe that cannot be changed by the ascended master's sacred fire love, for it is power unconquerable, invincible, victorious, overwhelming, and eternally sustained forever expanding. It is the raising power of everything in the universe, to raise the lesser into the greater, and it contains only perfection. I would think that would be a relief from some of the experiments you've made in the physical world with trying other things, most of which did not produce perfection, but only problems. If there are problems that weigh heavily, will you please EXPERIMENTWITH asking your BELOVEDIAMPRESENCE? A N D U S T O dissolve O R solve, which is one and the same thing. A N D T H E N P R E V E N T T H E P R O B L E M S T H A T T O R T U R E U. If you will only ask U S T O F I L L E V E R Y T H I N G W I T H O U R sacred F I R E love, you will find many, many, many powers being released within you and many conditions changed in the world around you as if by magic. This is what is meant by miracles, which are the ascended master's divine way of perfection, uninterfered with, and uninterrupted by mankind's discord. That is eternal security. If you call F-O-R-T-H-T-H-E-A-S-C-E-N-D-E-D-M-A-S-T-E-R-S, sacred F-I-R-E loves E-T-E-R-N-A-L-S-E-C-U-R-I-T-Y in A-N-D-A-R-O-U-N-D-E-V-E-R-Y-T-H-I-N-G in your being's A-N-D worlds, you will give us an opportunity to anchor into the physical structure of earth more of the sacred fire. To help control conditions that need to be purified, and kept from destroying the blessings that are yours this hour. This is protection to all that is constructive, and it is the leashing, and dissolving and consuming of everything that is of human discord. If we may help you, as we release this power in and around you, to enable you to hold constructive activities sustained, and victorious over the hordes of evil. You will give us very great happiness, if you will let us expand the sacred fire that relieves the earth from the hordes of evil that have been generated through the centuries, and this must come. The purity must come, if that which mankind has generated is to be consumed, but in the meantime, you may be the open door through which this sacred fire comes, as you call it into outer physical conditions. Then, through the powers of nature and forces of the elements, we can draw certain other forces to keep destructive conditions from either being sustained, or expanded, and so, it is the victory of the light. It is the mastery of the ascended host's control of this world, and it is the fulfillment of the great divine plan.
for the great divine plan is only the perfection manifested of our sacred fire's divine love, an almighty manifesting perfection, an almighty peace, because, wherever it goes, discord cannot be created again. We enfold you in everything our heart's love can give, and give you the peace, and the encouragement, and the assistance, to keep your attention on that which forever raises you into the ascension, and raises all you contact into that, one day, also. We clothe you in our miracle mantle of the love of the sacred fire, and may it blaze in and around you, our victory in all you ever do, invincible for eternity. Thank you with all my heart.